Get an amazing value on Xfinity Internet with unlimited data included. Switch for $55 a month for two full years with no annual contract required and no equipment fees for 24 months. Go to Xfinity.com slash TMOFAX, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store to learn more. Requires paperless billing and auto pay, ends 10 22 Restrictions apply. New fast internet and XFi complete customers only. XFi gateway required. Taxes and fees extra and subject to change. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. Donate your car today at carsforkids.org. Your car, running or not, can be picked up as soon as the next day. No title, no problem. Call 877-CARS-FOR-KIDS or go online at carsforkids.org to donate today. 1-877-CARS-FOR-KIDS K-A-R-S, cars for kids 1-877-CARS-FOR-KIDS Donate your car today. Now accepting donations of land, homes, buildings, or any kind of real estate. The game is over, but we are just getting started. So this is the thanks I get for working overtime. Overtime! Welcome to Overtime with Kyle Madsen and Alan Stiles on 95.7 The Game. That was pathetic. I'm here with all the injuries and... The whole backup defensive line, and then Traverius Ward goes out. I am I hear it. I'm aware of it. But the effort the 49ers put together today in Atlanta mm-hmm. looked like a team disinterested in playing in Atlanta. From the jump, they got railroaded on the first drive. They go f- fumble, return for a touchdown. They respond. They come back and tie it. But after the Falcons made it, 21-14, the Niners never looked interested in the game again, particularly defensively. And, Alan, that's my biggest issue, is not the lack of talent. It's mm-hmm. not that, yeah, they got beat. They looked like they were sloppy. They had dropped passes. They had missed tackles. They got dominated in the trenches on both sides. Just an ugly, ugly game. I think it was almost as if, obviously, we knew that going into the game there were a ton of injuries and th- things like that. But it's almost as if they were a bit surprised. I mean, we talked about Mariota and how he's turning back the clock with the option. And they kind of got punched in the mouth a little bit. Mm-hmm. It, was, it wasn't the big runs per se. It was four yards here, five yards here. And then all of a sudden, he, he was perfect. Marcus Mariota was perfect throwing the football until 10.52 in the fourth quarter. Yeah. I mean, now he wasn't throwing the ball all around the yard, but that can't happen. Yeah. It just can't happen. It, it feels like, or it felt like, all right, not not necessarily that we're going to roll the ball out, we're better than you, but it, in some type of alternate version of that, we know we don't have our guys, we still think we can beat you, oh, you're actually here to play? I mean, I knew that this Falcons team would be, the word I kept using was pesky, sure. but at the same time... We've seen them do this. I mean, they almost they almost beat the Bucks last week. Now, whether the Bucks are good or not, we're still trying to figure all that out. Sure. <laughs> but they're not a team that's just going to roll over. And I don't know if the Niners expected them to. I don't know what they thought, but they did not come to play. The silver lining for me in this is that it feels like the 49ers every year have one or two games. And I think every team probably does. Mm-hmm. One or two games where you just kind of leave the game and like, what the hell was it's a that? Stinker. And they had a couple of them, especially early last year. But this one's particularly damaging to me because now they fall to 3-3. Three and three. The score is 28-14. Uh, the Falcons just running out the clock. But this is damaging because now the Niners go to 3-3. Three and three. They have the Chiefs next week. Then they go on the road to the Rams. Then they have the bye week. Then they have the Chargers. Like, this doesn't get easier. No. And you keep thinking, hey, they're going to get healthier, right? But they don't. They haven't been getting healthier, and if not, it's gotten worse. Mike McGlinchey went down today. Traverius Ward went down today. Samson Ebukam was in and out of the game. It was just a war of attrition coming in, and it's just gotten worse for San Francisco. Yeah, and, and we can continue to say, all right, look around at the NFC. of The Packers 
I, they're getting blown out by the Jets. The Bucks are struggling too. So we'll we'll find out tonight if the Eagles or the Cowboys, who's the real deal there. So the light at the end of the tunnel is that the NFC is a mess. It's a complete mess. Sure. But at the same time, you look at this three and three, you cannot continue to lose games that you should win. They were plus five and a half today. And I know mm-hmm. the world doesn't revolve around Vegas, but Vegas, most of the time, they have a good idea of right. these things. You, you, you lose to the Bears. That was back with Trey Lance. Mm -hmm. Game you should have won. You lose to the Broncos. Another game you should have won. Now you lose this game as well. We can sit here and say, yeah, the NFC is bad and there's everyone's still trying to figure it out. But you can't keep losing games that you're supposed to win. I'll say this for this game specifically. I don't think the Niners should have won this game. They got dominated. Well, they yeah, got their I, I guess I mean kicked. before the game yeah, no, started. No, 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 totally, yeah. totally. Yeah. It's just like, just thinking back to the Bears game, it's like, man, they, there were opportunities. But it, the, the Broncos game, certainly. Mm-hmm. But this game, there was never a point where I was like, oh, the Niners should win this. Game. Right, right. They got punched in the mouth. And you hope that that's a wake-up call going into the toughest stretch of the season. But when you look at their injury issues, that's going to continue to be a problem. That's mm-hmm. why you can't, it's hard to point at it and say, well, if, just just look at how many players are out. Okay, I will. And I'm going to look at it again next week. That's the And very problem. likely the week after that. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the problem. We can sit here and say, well, they're going to get healthy. But can we say that? But, can we and, even say that? But let's, okay, but, but maybe. But here's the, bit, here's the even larger issue. Mm-hmm. Okay, t- th- so they had some players out. Fred Warner was terrible today. Yeah. Fred Warner was not good. When you have most of your starting defensive line out, you need your star all-pro middle linebacker to step up. He didn't. He was confused, all, going the wrong way, missing tackles, just an uncharacteristically bad Fred Warner game. You have the drop by Ray Ray McLeod on a deep shot from, from Jimmy Garoppolo. You have a drop from Charlie Warner on a deep shot from Jimmy Garoppolo. They connect on one uh, Late in the game, they when they're trying to go down, it's two scores. They have the ball with like they got it with like ten minutes left. And they need to go ninety nine yards. Right. He connects on a deep shot with Ayuk, called back for holding. It was just mistake after mistake after mistake, and then you compound that on top of they're hurt. They needed to play. Here's why. Here's where the injuries matter. They're hurt. They needed to play a perfect football game. They needed to be as good as they've been all year, and they were arguably. As bad as they've been all year, and that's before you get to the injured guys. And let's not forget the Jeff Wilson Jr. fumble to, to kind of kick this thing off right after the Falcons come down, punch him in the mouth. You're thinking, okay, right, opening drive. You're getting used to Mariota. We get all that. Then, all right, Niners, your, your turn now. Mm-hmm. Jeff Wilson fumbles. Right. So, so even just to start out, that got everything moving in the wrong direction, and now you're playing from behind. And one thing that we've always known about this Niner team, they want it, – it wasn't, it wasn't a complete mirror job today, but in some ways you saw what Kyle Shanahan likes to do a lot. Let's control the football. Let's run the football. We don't necessarily need the the big yards, the big electric plays that are going to get you 20, 20, 25 yards. We're just going to chip away, chip away, chip away. Once they got down so early, the Falcons were able to get into that position. And yeah, let's throw it back. 2011 was a gr- great year for a lot of people, specifically Marcus Mariota. He mm-hmm. goes out. I, I think he might have had an Oregon jersey underneath his Falcons jersey because that's how he was playing. And the, and the Niners, they just had no way to stop him. No way to stop him. The Falcons had the ball for 33 minutes. The Niners for 26 the Falcons were 9 for 14 on third downs and 3 for 3 in the red zone. And to your point, they had a 37-yard completion to Alameda Zacchaeus in the first quarter on their first drive. Mm-hmm. That was their longest play of the day. They had a 20-yard catch by Drake London. Other than that, their completions, their longest completion, 7, 8, 2, and 2, were the other longest completions for each of their players. Um, longest rush belonged to Marcus Mariota was 20 yards. Like you said, it was just a just a methodical thumping. Yeah. Play after play, five yards here, six yards there. Oh, there's 20. Three, five, third and two. Oh, here's three on third and two. And they just didn't. And that's where, that's where I think you go, okay, Eric Armstead out, Javon Kinlaw out, Nick Bosa out. That's where that matters. Yes. But all the other stuff, all the other stuff that went wrong for them today, particularly offensively, you talk about... Jimmy Garoppolo, two interceptions. The one was at the end of the half. He forced one into Debo Samuel. But the other one was just not was not good. He tried to force it into Debo, gets tipped in the air and intercepted. They have the fumble by Jeff Wilson. They have the drops we talked about. They had 
some shoddy offensive line play. Yeah. Uh, with a couple of bad penalties down the stretch, especially. And it's like, this is just there. This is, this is what happens. The, the Niners ran it 16 times for 50 yards with a long of nine on a run game. That's built around explosive plays. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not ready to say, Oh, this is who the Niners are now, but you would have felt a lot better about this team and their trajectory, especially since they beat the Rams. They kicked the crap out of the Panthers. It's like, cool. Stayed on the East Coast. They've been really good on the second game of these East Coast games. Go get a dub in Atlanta, even if it might be tough, and you're four and two going into the Chiefs game. Now yeah. you need to split Chiefs and Rams to go five and three into the bye. You have to you have to and I know the the play calling, I, I don't think it was I don't think it was bad per se, right? You the players have to make plays. Kyle Shanahan offensively, I felt like this team was in a position to to hang around and to win this football game. You had just situations where, like you said, the penalties, all right, now the Ayuk one comes back. You had the drops. I mean, I mean, we're calling that one to Ray Ray McLeod. It was a drop. I don't think it touched his hand. It was a whiff. It just went right through his hands. And the problem is, this is not, this has nothing to do. We are not getting on Jimmy Garoppolo in that way. But the problem is this. Those types of deep shots, when Jimmy puts it on the money like yep. that, you cannot whiff on those because it's not like you're going to have 10 more opportunities like that. So when you don't and when you miss, it hurts even more. And every and let's be honest, everybody that's watching that football game, whether you're in the football game or just a fan, everybody knew it. Everybody knew yep. it. Man, so you had two deep shots, of the two deep shots that didn't end up working out. That one where, where McLeod just whiffed on it. Then you have the holding the holding call on the Ayuk one. That that's Jimmy at his that's Jimmy doing what he's supposed to do. So now you take those away and you know at some point you're going to get that Jimmy pick. So now you compound all these things on top of each other. It's just not winning football. Yeah. And, and and I'm starting to get worried. I'm starting to get worried about just the injuries and all these things as well. Let's talk about Kyle Shanahan on the other side. 888-957-9570 that's the Xfinity Mobile text line. You can get in there. You can get in the YouTube chat. Get on the Twitch chat. We're hanging out there. And, of course, you can give us a call. 888-957-9570. Let's talk about Kyle Shanahan, particularly his play calling late in the game. Because I can't decide if this was if this was a good or bad Kyle Shanahan, Dan. I'll explain on the other side. I'm Kyle Madsen. He's Alan Styles. This is Overtime on 95.7 The Game. Listen, could Robert change your life? At the age of 55, I started putting on weight, and I got to the weight of uh, about 210 pounds. Always hungry. The heavier I got, the less energy I had. And uh, about six months ago, I started taking the Andro 400, and uh, I started realizing I had more energy. I felt better, and my mind was clearer, and I started losing weight. I went from my max weight was 215, and now I'm down to 176. My waist size has dropped from a 38 to a 32, and I've lost these big love handles that I had on my side, and uh, I just look a lot slimmer. Since 2004, Andro 400 has helped men lose belly fat, gain energy, and to look and feel their best. Go to andro400.com for more true testimonials, before and after photos, and special discounts. Only available on andro400.com andro400.com this is your time to cash in at cash creek casino resort to rock and to roll over the hills and bluffs go all out or go all in with four stars and rising stars now we do more than ever so you can do as much or as little as you want it's your time to cash in at Cash Creek Casino Resort. California, you deserve more. And with United Healthcare, you'll get more. Annual enrollment is October 15th through December 7th. So call United Healthcare today. With United Healthcare Medicare Advantage Plan, you get more from your Medicare dollar. Now including better than ever dental, vision, over the counter, and prescription drug coverage. Call United Healthcare at 1 888 Call UHC today and speak with a licensed sales agent. Benefits, features, and/or devices vary by plan and area. Limitations 
and exclusions apply. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Protect your vehicle's engine with Syntec and O'Reilly Auto Parts. Syntec Premium Full Synthetic Motor Oil is formulated for today's engines to dissipate heat and reduce friction and wear. Right now, get five quarts of Syntec Full Synthetic and a MicroGuard Select oil filter for just $33.99. Try Syntec today, exclusively at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. This is Staples. So, rumor has it that Staples has everything I need to ship. Mm -hmm. We have all the shipping supplies and services you need. Boxes? Yep. Mailers? Yeah. And we have UPS here in store. Huh. What will Staples think of next? <laughs> Right? No, seriously, I'm asking, what, what, what will they think of next? Staples is your one-stop shipping destination. Now get 50% off shipping boxes, mailers, or tubes when you buy five of the same item in-store or online with one-hour pickup. Staples, the best-kept secret in shipping. Ends 1231. Exclusions apply. Visit staplesconnect.com slash shipping for details. Wendy's new French toast sticks are so delicious, some are saying that they're better than their mom's breakfast. Excuse me. Did you just say Wendy's new French toast sticks are better than my breakfast? Mom, is that you? Answer the question. I said some people are saying that because they're so crispy on the outside and fluffy on the inside and perfect in every way. Uh-huh. And what do you think? I think it's time to tell people to choose wisely. Choose Wendy's new sweet and crispy homestyle French toast sticks. That's still not an answer. At participating U.S. Wendy's during breakfast hours. What's your retirement look like? With Fidelity Income Planning, a dedicated advisor can help you create a flexible income strategy to grow and protect your wealth so you can stop worrying about the future and enjoy whatever comes next. Investment minimum supply. Fidelity Brokerage Services member NYSE SIPC. If you see a student being bullied, be supportive. Ask if they're okay and invite them to join you. You'll be an ally and you can make a friend. Friendship! Visit StopBullyingSpeakUp.com and join Cartoon Network to redraw your world without bullying. Hey, Becky, what about this beat for your next song? Mm, it's cool, but I'm into faster stuff lately, like Xfinity that gives me beyond gig speeds. Got it. What about this then? Mm, it sounds powerful, just like Xfinity. Because its supersonic Wi-Fi has three times the bandwidth, you can connect hundreds of devices at once. <laughs> That's what I call power. Unbeatable internet from Xfinity. Made to do anything so you can do anything. Get the Xfinity Supersonic Bundle with unlimited gig speed internet, Wi-Fi equipment included, and a free 4K streaming box. All for $50 a month with a two-year internet rate guarantee and no annual contract when you add Xfinity Mobile with unlimited data at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash gig, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Limited time offer. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. New gigabit extra internet customers only. Taxes and fees extra and subject to change. Xfinity Mobile requires post-pay Xfinity internet. Reduced speeds after 20 gigabytes wireless usage. After 24 months, regular rates apply. Requires compatible Xfinity Gateway. It's the bottom of the ninth, the game's on the line, and your small business needs a loan fast. What's your move? Go to OnDeck.com, America's largest online small business lender. With OnDeck, you can apply in minutes, and if approved, get your funds as soon as the same day. Go to OnDeck.com. Your loan is on deck. Depending on certain loan attributes, your business loan may be issued by OnDeck or Celtic Bank, a Utah Chartered Industrial Bank member FDIC. Limited eligibility for same-day funding. OnDeck does not lend in every state. All loans subject to lender approval. Fremont Bank. If there's one thing we understand more than anybody, it's that it takes a local bank to really get the needs of local businesses. And more than anything, local businesses need access. Access to a knowledgeable banker and access to a full suite of business services. Can't come to the bank? We'll come to you. Our devotion to our clients ensures your business never misses a beat. That's why Fremont Bank remains the right choice for local and family-owned businesses. Learn more at FremontBank.com. Member FDIC. Now, back to Overtime with Kyle Madsen and Alan Stiles on 95.7 The Game. Check out this stat as we wrap up a 28-14 49ers loss in Atlanta. Connor Jr., I see you on the lines. We will get to you for sure. Check out this stat. Since Kyle Shanahan took over, and this is from Alex Simon, um, who works at the Mercury News. Since Kyle Shanahan took over as head coach in 2017, the 49ers have been trailing by seven or more points entering the fourth quarter 24 times. They have won zero times in those instances. Wow. The largest after three quarters deficit they overcame was four points 
in 2019 against the Rams. It's not good. Yikes. It's not good. So I'm interested when you see that. What people complain about Kyle Shanahan a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think some of it deserved, some of it not. Today, that drive where they got the ball in the one with 10 and a half minutes left and took more than seven minutes just to get into the red zone. Yeah. That's on the coaching staff to me. That's a lack of urgency. I don't want to call it. I don't. There were a couple of questionable play calls for sure, but like they took the shot to Ayuk that was complete, and then the holding call on Jake Brendel, even though he didn't hold, he just got railroaded, <laughs> and the defender tripped on him. But I'm struggling here because like I see that stat, and it's I would have to go through and watch. Like, do they? And it says since he took over in 2017. So there's some of those where they were probably just getting blown out. But games like today, where they're moving the ball early in the fourth quarter. They had the ball when the third quarter ended. And then uh, we had a Jimmy Garoppolo interception. Right. It's like, man. But then they get a stop. Punter Bradley Pinion, Niners legend, lands it at the one. They got to go 99 yards. It's like, this is why you have Kyle Shanahan, right? It is, or it's supposed to be. But again, I, I'm i going to use this term because sometimes I, I do think it fits. That offense and the offensive genius that we talk about with Kyle Shanahan, it's kind of front runner. It's kind of front runner. When everything is rolling and everything is going well, it looks great. But when you have to come from behind in these situations, sometimes it looks a bit limited. And it's almost as if he has too much going on in his brain that he doesn't necessarily know right. which direction to go into. I, I think that's part of it as well. It's extremely hard to call plays and be a head coach. Right. He delegates the entire, and maybe this is where the issue is. He delegates all of the defense to the defensive coordinator. I'm sure he's in. He's involved in some minor way, but it's mostly like, hey, D'Amico, you got this. I'm going to go over here and coach the offense. Well, not today he didn't. Yeah, just tough. But, <laughs> um, but I I think there's something to what you said where he's worrying about setting up play calls and, okay, this play call, what did the defense do with this action? Okay, they did this, so let's get Debo. And there's times they'll go to him on the sideline during games and he's like looking at the iPad and like, there's no way that you can also retain the game scenario in your head. Right. So he's not going to delegate play calling. Okay, we're agreeing in yes. agreement there. Yes. Kyle Shanahan's not going to do that. Yes. And I don't think I want him to do that. But what I want him to do is delegate timeouts and urgency to someone else. Mm -hmm. Pay a coach 80 grand, 100 grand. I don't know. I don't know how much coaches make. Pay a person to sit there on Sundays in your headset and go, hey, uh, re green light, like have an urgency scale. Yeah. Hey, green light. Uh, hey, time out here. Hey, go for it on this fourth down. Like somebody that a game management specialist that's just in his ear that he just listens to. Mm. Like, okay, great. Thanks. Because I don't think he's capable of being a game manager and a play caller. I don't know if anyone is. But with that many people... Uh, that the co the amount of coaches that they already have, I just don't understand. Do you think it's too much of Kyle Shanahan is just it's his world and we're just living in it? And if he's not no he doesn't feel like we need to get get going here, then we just don't feel like it either. You can't tell me that everybody on the sidelines or up in the booth as well. You can't tell me there's nobody already there that wasn't thinking what we're thinking when we're watching it right here. I mean, you might want to put some hustle in your muscle or something. Get going a little bit. And I got it a little bit early in the drive. And I know you need to score twice, so you're just trying to score. But I got it a little bit where, like, you have three timeouts. You know, if you get a stop, you want to give yourself a little time to score. Yeah. But, like I said, it took. they were, at like, 316 when they first got into the red zone. It was, like, more than seven minutes. It, it's... It That's was, too much. It was just too much. And I'll do you one better, Kyle. What have we seen from Jimmy Garoppolo a lot? No, this wasn't a two-minute drill. But Jimmy Garoppolo can be a bad boy in the two-minute drill. Yeah. 
you know why? I, I'm not sure if you can quantify it, but a lot of it is Jimmy is another guy who I know he he lets things roll off his back like a duck and things like that, but he doesn't have to think as much in those two minute drills. So why don't you accelerate that process? Act as if it is a two-minute drill because you do have to score twice and get Jimmy in those quick hitters right here, right here, right here, yeah. and see what happens. That's where he's best. We're not we're not supposed to just be a Sunday stroll up and down. We're good. I mean, we said a joke while we were watching it. It was as if the Niners were up 14 at one point. Yeah. We had to double check the score. Mm-hmm. They 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 didn't play poorly. This was not a game where it's like, man, the offense just wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. But when you factor in, they scored two touchdowns. They went down 14 nothing, and all credit. They go down 14, bang, answer with a score. Get a stop, answer with another score. All right, new game. But then they just never regained control of it offensively. And I want to go back to the miscues. And Cam, if we have that sound ready, it started on their second drive with Jeff Wilson Jr.'s fumble. Hand off, up the middle. It's going to be close for Jeff Wilson. Ball came out. Oh, it's picked up by Terrell. And it is... Touchdown! A scoop and score. A.J. Terrell. And it was poked out by Troy Anderson. It's Noah Eagle on CBS. Sounds exactly like his dad, Ian Eagle. Mm-hmm. Like, exactly. That's weird. <laughs> Anyways... That was the first mistake, and that's the kind of mistake that when that happened, and you talk about it, Falcons going to be scrappy. I thought Falcons plus five and a half was the lock of the century going into this one. Niners might win, but I think it's going to be tight. Jeff Wilson Jr. fumbles that ball. He gets taken back for six, and it's like, how many times have we seen with the 49ers this year, one turnover, that could be it. A good bit. A lot. A good bit. <laughs> We've seen it a lot. The The second miscue, okay, so like I said, they overcome it. They're down 21 to 14. And early in the third quarter, Jimmy Garoppolo takes this shot to Ray Ray McLeod. Garoppolo on play action. Wants to take the shot down the middle of the field looking for McLeod. And he dropped it. He had a little separation. And it's third and ten. Well, he got it. And Jimmy Garoppolo makes a great throw down the middle of the football field. And it's Ray Ray. Just putting on the burners right there, getting beyond the safety. Jimmy Garoppolo puts that in a perfect place. I mean, perfect. You can't run down there and set it in the hands of the receiver any better. And, you know, you look at this game of inches. I mean, that's just off the fingertips of Ray Ray McLeod. And you pointed out earlier, and, and thanks to Mark Schlereth the Noah Eagle again from CBS for that sound. You pointed out earlier, I don't even know if he got fingertips on it. I, I think I, it just went through his hands. Right. It, it looked like he just... <laughs> I don't know if he took his eyes off of it. He just whiffed. It was just a oh, whiff. And and so there's two good things from that play. One, Ray Ray McLeod got open. Mm-hmm. That's part of, in, in training camp especially, that was like, hey, felt like every day there was, hey, two deep completions to Ray Ray McLeod. Ray Ray McLeod impacted the offense. and So he gets open. He runs a good route. He gets inside the corner and behind the safety. And like Shalera said, Garoppolo couldn't have set the ball down there better. Yeah. Like that's a play your receiver has to make. And that's why Garoppolo, two picks today, I thought he was good. 29-41, 296, couple touchdowns, couple picks. The one, like I said, was a heave at the end of a half. I, I, the playmakers have to help a little bit. And it's got to be a non-Debo, non IU non-Kittle playmaker. Right. And then when it, and when it goes to them and they don't make plays, then the fans come out, well, why aren't you going to Debo? You can't throw it to them every single time. These guys are all getting paid. They're all professionals. You got to make plays. McLeod, this is what we've seen in the past with him on other teams. And that's one target for Ray McLeod. That was his only target. Yes. Brandon Ayuk, 11. George Kittle, 10. Debo Samuel, 10. They tried to get the ball to their playmakers, but every once in a while, you got to get those other guys involved. That was a shot play for McLeod. That goes, and and here's the issue. That was on a second and 10. That's maybe a touchdown at best. At worst, if he catches it, you have a huge gain, a 50-plus yard gain, and you're in the red zone. And you're only down a touchdown at that point. Yeah. But instead, now it's third and 10. They're backed up. They end up punting. And then the Falcons go down and score. That's game-changing. But then the Niners come back. And they take another deep shot, this time to Charlie Werner. Not to mention missing six defensive starters, but Garoppolo takes the shot, and he put it perfectly 
It was Charlie Werner who had a little separation but couldn't reel it in. Richie Grant in coverage. Oh, my goodness. I mean, that is, that's two big drops over the middle on two potential big plays, maybe even touchdown-type plays that they have dropped so far in this half alone. I don't know that anybody was going to catch Charlie Werner. And again, Eagle and Schlereth from CBS with the with the audio. I don't know if anybody was going to catch him. And again, even if they don't, that's a huge gain. And that came on a second and six. Yeah. And now you have a third and six. So I talked about it last week. Garoppolo did a great job against Carolina of turning negative plays into positive ones. He was five for nine for 80 yards under pressure with a touchdown. And it was like, man, if they are going to eliminate those negative plays, two or three negative plays a game and turn them into go from sack to 15-yard pickup, like that 25 yards is huge. Yeah. That difference. Well, today, the opposite happened. They took big plays and turned them into negative ones. Mm -hmm. And that's unacceptable. And that's not on the coaching staff. That's not on Jimmy Garoppolo. That is solely on Ray Ray McLeod and Charlie Werner. And you just said it. You can get on them for targeting those guys, but one target for each of those guys is... Totally acceptable. They have to make a play. You you have to be able to make a play. And that's the thing. When we talk about Kyle Shanahan as a genius, that's part of it. That's part of it. Kyle Shanahan, it, it doesn't take a genius to say, get Debo the football. It doesn't take a genius to say, get Brandon Ayuk the football or George Kittle, your main playmakers. Part of being that offensive genius is nobody's looking for Werner right there. So you can... You can Sneak up on some people. Nobody is thinking that Jimmy's going to take that deep shot to Ray McLeod. You can sneak up mm -hmm. and do some things. So that is part of the genius. So we can't get mad when those things don't work out because that's all part of it. You just going to your 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 normal guys over and over again, that's not necessarily any, anybody could do that. Right, So that yeah. all comes with it. You have to trust that your playmakers are going to be able to make plays. I, I mean, I guess one thing that we can get into a little bit later too, Kyle, is how much credit should we give the Falcons? I feel like we should give them a good bit of credit. Yes, they punched the 49ers in the jaw mm -hmm. repeatedly, and the Niners had no answer. This is, they did, the Falcons did to the 49ers what we saw the 49ers do to the Rams twice last year. Yes. Just like, hey, you might be the more, ta the, the quote unquote better team, although I think that's arguable, but I don't want to get into the semantics. You might be a better team, but we're going to punch you in the mouth and play a style of football you can't keep up with. The Falcons beat the Niners at their own game today. They did. It was a mirror game for 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 the Niners. And when it comes to the Falcons, we've seen, I mean, they were a weird holding penalty or, or roughing the passer penalty away from possibly beating the Bucks last last weekend. So maybe the, Pal the Falcons are more of the real deal than we think. Like we've talked about, the NFC is a mess. So it's not, we, we know we were out here last mm -hmm. season, three and five. So the Niners have been here, mm -hmm. but you have a gauntlet coming up. You cannot continue to drop football games where maybe once you got on the field, you weren't the better team, but on paper, I mean, it's not even about the win. As you said in the first segment, where is the effort? You just look like you didn't feel like playing. You look like you wanted to come home early. And maybe you should have because you basically didn't show up. And then you waste a great game from Brandon Ayuk. How many press conferences has Jimmy and Kyle Shanahan had to do talking about, oh, we got to get the ball to Brandon Ayuk more. We know he was a stud coming out of training camp. He has an um, outstanding game, all derailed for no reason. That yeah. first game of the season, Hufunga, great game, derailed. You can't keep wasting these outstanding efforts from players because you can't figure it out in other phases of the game. Yeah, Brandon Ayuk, 8 for 83 and two touchdowns. George Kittle, 8 for 83. And Debo Samuel, 7 for 79. Like, you look at those receiving numbers and you think it's going to be a huge day offensively. Mm -hmm. And it would have been had they not fumbled and those two plays that, that we just we just listened to, the, the two drops, had those not happened. But there's one final miscue late in this game Early fourth quarter, Niners driving, and we're still, like I said, they had the ball at the at the at the end of the third quarter, and we're thinking, okay, early fourth quarter, you get a touchdown here, you get a stop, you're gonna have plenty of time to tie this game. You might get a chance to win this game in regulation, but then uh, Jimmy happened. Now play action, Garoppolo, dangerous throw, intercepted, picked up by Hawkins. Second pick of the day for Garoppolo, and off the tip, it's Hawkins who hauls it in. And that's the interception. Again, this is not a Jimmy Garoppolo bash session. No. He was good today. I want it abundantly clear. Garoppolo is good today. Sometimes mistakes happen. That was a mistake. 
and it the the maddening thing about it and the only reason I even bring it up is because it's the same play every time. Yes. It is big spot that was second and seven. They're driving. They need a big play. He tries to force one into a well covered Debo Samuel. Safety dri- or corner drives on the throw, tips the ball in the air, safety intercepts it, going the other way. I feel like we've seen it time and time again. And again, he was good. He was he was good today. Jimmy Garoppolo is not the reason they lost. No. But when you're stacking up miscues offensively, it's like that was absolutely one in a huge spot. He reverted back to mm, the Jimmy O no throw. And that and it comes when all right now we're down we got to get the ball to Debo because that's essentially the number one way we have to win football games and that's we get it that's the recipe that has worked in the past so we're always gonna go to that I think the problem and while it's not Jimmy's fault at all and we know he put it on on both of those deep throws that were dropped the problem is. Jimmy is not the guy where you can overcome that because yes. you're still going to get that interception. So that is what makes these the, the drop passes hurt even more because you know you're probably going to have a Jimmy O no throw at some mm-hmm. point. We don't know when it's going to happen, and you hope that it happens after the team is already up. But now you're down. You've dropped two plays that could have potentially changed the game. Mm-hmm. And, oh, okay, j- let's just pile on. Here's the Jimmy O no throw. So it's not mm-hmm. that it, it's anything against Jimmy because again mistakes happen mm-hmm. but at the same time you 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 compound that with everything else that's going on and then you have that as well that's what makes this tough he's not going to he's not the guy that's going to help you overcome these things right and that's that's kind of one of the one of the bigger problems overall but today uh, I, I I don't think he was a problem. Let's get to some of these calls. 888-957-9570 if you want to join the show. Want to hear from 49ers fans after a 28-14 loss to the Falcons. Let's get to Connor in Richmond. He wants to bring up some of those injury problems. Connor, what's going on? Hey, Kyle. Hey, Alan. Here's my point. Um, I do think it's time that we push the conversation forward around injuries. The fans have seen this same issue plague us for long enough, but I think it's fair to ask what's going on with our training and medical staff. Like, look... Mm-hmm. I know the team's identity is yards after catch and running the ball and being a tough, tough team. I also know George Kittle is out there as a player advocate, chalking a lot of these injuries up to playing on AstroTurf. But our franchise got a new medical team in early 2019 that was Mm -hmm. supposed to address this issue to some extent. And I think it's been long enough to ask whether the right people are making key decisions to keep us healthy. I don't know who that's a question for, whether it's John Lynch or, you know, going all the way to the top. But I'm really looking forward to seeing some journalism around that just to see if we can get to the bottom of, of why it is that we are supposedly snake bitten. Thanks so much, guys. Cool. Thanks, Connor. So it's kinda it's kinda interesting. This came up last year. Mm-hmm. And Ben Peterson's the guy who oversees because what the 49ers did in 2019 was they took their training staff and they took their um what's the word I'm looking for? Like health and health uh, strength strength and conditioning staff mm-hmm. and combined them. So they married the weightlifting, conditioning aspect with the doctor aspect, the trainer aspect, basically. And they have one guy who oversees this whole thing. And they did this in 2019 after injury problems in 2017 and 2018. And then they had injury problems in 2019 and in 2020 and in 2021. And now maybe worst of all this year. And when Kyle Shanahan got asked about it last year, addressing it with the coaching staff or or, or addressing the training staff, he basically shut that down entirely, which is, I think what he's he's not going to mid season right call out the training staff. Yeah, and it's hard to quantify because right. it is football. That that's the problem. But when you look at what we're seeing. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's normal anymore. I, to the caller's point, I don't think we can continue to say that this is normal, right? It's definitely not. Week one, Mitchell's out. Week two, Trey Lance goes down. Week three, Trent Williams goes down. Week four, Armstead and Kinlaw. Mm-hmm. Week five, Boza and Mosley and Jimmy Ward. And Robbie mm-hmm. Gold, obviously, he came back and played today. I mean, at some point, you got to look in the mirror and say, this is just not normal. I don't even know how to explain what it is. I, I don't know if it's I, I don't know if it's the training staff. I don't know if it's the type of players that they're bringing on to the roster. I have no clue. But what I do know is, yes, it's football, but this is starting to go into the realm of something else. Yes, I agree. And whether and again, I, I don't I'm not in the building. 
I don't talk to doctors. I am right. not a doctor. So I don't, <laughs> but to your point, if somebody said, what's the solution? I don't know. I don't have any solutions to offer. Knows. But like Connor said, like you've said, there's a, there's a problem here, which means there is a solution here. What that solution is, I don't know if they got to change practice habits. I don't know if they got to change their offensive and defensive styles. I don't know if they need a new training staff. I, I couldn't tell you. But like Jimmy Ward breaking his hand, football. Yes. Football injury. Um, Nick Bosa having a groin thing before week five and then playing on it and then getting taken out of the game in week five and then not playing in week six. That to me could be a training staff issue. Mm-hmm. All the setbacks they have from soft tissue injuries. That's where I kind of look at the trainers. But I don't know. I I genuinely don't have a good solution but it, it's the question was how many injuries can the 49ers sustain how many hits can they take and be competitive yeah we found the limit we, we, yeah we're gonna find we found out it. yeah we the are limit, finding the out limit now. is here yes. the limit does exist <laughs> and it's here it's three starting defensive linemen both starting cornerbacks a starting free safety a starting running back um a starting left tackle your quarterback a starting right tackle your, first your starting quarterback, quarterback. Yeah. um it's they're they were lucky to have Jimmy Garoppolo, so it's not as if they lost their starting quarterback, but they did. Like it's an empirical fact. Their QB one got hurt. They just have a good QB two who can Precisely. win games for them. So the 49ers fall to three and three. Junior OG, I see on the line. We'll get to you on the other side. What do you do about the 49ers injury problem? And how big of a deal is it? I'm Kyle Madsen. He's Alan Styles. Let's talk about this 49ers loss on the other side. Are you curious about who offers the best deals on top-rated Samsung, LG, and Sony TVs? The answer is surprising. It's not online. And it's not the warehouse clubs. The best deals on top-rated TVs are at video only. Don't believe it? Then check out the trade-in deals at video only. How about $500 for your old TV? Try doing that online. Before you buy that new TV, drop into video only. If you don't, you'll be sorry. It's the bottom of the ninth, the game's on the line, and your small business needs a loan fast. What's your move? Go to OnDeck.com, America's largest online small business lender. With OnDeck, you can apply in minutes, and if approved, get your funds as soon as the same day. Go to OnDeck.com. Your loan is on deck. Depending on certain loan attributes, your business loan may be issued by OnDeck or Celtic Bank, a Utah Chartered Industrial Bank member FDIC. Limited eligibility for same-day funding. OnDeck does not lend in every state. All loans subject to lender approval. If you see a student being bullied, be supportive. Ask if they're okay and invite them to join you. You'll be an ally and you can make a friend. Friendship! Visit StopBullyingSpeakUp.com and join Cartoon Network to redraw your world without bullying. We are all on this planet together. So join Odyssey and find your one thing. Now that it's autumn, check window and door seals for proper insulation and replace your furnace air filter. Join Odyssey and together each of us doing one thing makes a greener tomorrow. What's your one thing? Fremont Bank. If there's one thing we understand more than anybody, it's that it takes a local bank to really get the needs of local businesses. And more than anything, local businesses need access. Access to a knowledgeable banker and access to a full suite of business services. Can't come to the bank? We'll come to you. Our devotion to our clients ensures your business never misses a beat. That's why Fremont Bank remains the right choice for local and family-owned businesses. Learn more at FremontBank.com. Member FDIC. Score big with Xfinity Internet. It's made to do anything, so you can do anything. Supercharge your home with the game-changing speed of supersonic Wi-Fi. With three times more bandwidth, it covers the field and then some. And blocks billions of threats with advanced security that helps keep you protected at home and on the go. If you're keeping score, that's Internet that does it all. That's unbeatable Internet from Xfinity. Learn more at Xfinity.com. Restrictions apply. Not available in all areas. Locked On Warriors is a daily podcast covering your favorite team, the defending world champion Golden State Warriors. I'm your host, Cyrus Sotsas, and every Monday through Friday, Locked On Warriors brings you all of the biggest Warrior stories. In around 30 minutes, we cover Stephen Curry and the dynasty that is one of the greatest teams in the history of this beautiful game. Listen to the Locked On Warriors podcast every day on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. 
Hey, Becky, what about this beat for your next song? Mm, it's cool, but I'm into faster stuff lately. Like Xfinity, that gives me beyond gig speeds. Got it. What about this, then? Mm, it sounds powerful, just like Xfinity. Because its supersonic Wi-Fi has three times the bandwidth, you can connect hundreds of devices at once. <laughs> That's what I call power. Unbeatable internet from Xfinity. Made to do anything so you can do anything. Get the Xfinity Supersonic Bundle with unlimited gig speed internet, Wi-Fi equipment included, and a free 4K streaming box. All for $50 a month with a two-year internet rate guarantee and no annual contract when you add Xfinity Mobile with unlimited data at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash gig, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Limited time offer. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. New gigabit extra internet customers only. Taxes and fees extra and subject to change. Xfinity Mobile requires post-pay Xfinity internet. Reduced speeds after 20 gigabytes wireless usage. After 24 months, regular rates apply. Requires compatible Xfinity Gateway. When people have a craving to explore new and traditional Asian cuisines, they head to P.F. Chang's, where scratch-made dishes come from the 2,000-year-old tradition of wok cooking. P.F. Chang's wanted to explore new possibilities for their website. They turned to AmericanEagle.com. AmericanEagle.com re-architected P.F. Chang's website, integrating multiple third-party systems to create a unified digital experience. The results? Improved page speed and performance personalized content based on users' location, intuitive online ordering, an increase in organic search visibility, and a 40% increase in new users. For scratch-made Asian cuisine, visit your local P.F. Chang's or go to pfchangs.com for website design, development, digital marketing, and hosting that produce efficiency, revenue, and results. Visit AmericanEagle.com. P.F. Chang's and AmericanEagle.com. Another example of the best businesses in the world. Turning to the best in the business for websites, go to AmericanEagle.com or call 877-WEB-NOW-1. That's 877-WEB-NOW-1. Now, back to Overtime with Kyle Madsen and Alan Stiles on 95.7 The Game. Yeah, hate it or love it, the underdog Falcons did come out on top today, 28-14, against the San Francisco 49ers. And just a, man, just a bad game for San Francisco. All around. Just Is this a burn the taper? Are you doing that? Are we doing that? Hmm. Is this a burn the taper? A lot taper? of injuries. Yeah. You just had to stay on the East yeah, Coast. You know what? No, it's not, because you need to figure <laughs> out what the hell Marcus Mariota was doing to you. Because if you get into the playoffs mm. and you're facing the Giants or the Cowboys or the Eagles, just just the NFC East, yeah. and let's say they get to the Super Bowl, well, you're going to face Kyler twice still. Let's say you get to the Super Bowl, you might see Josh Allen, you might see Patrick Mahomes, you might see Lamar Jackson, and they're going to turn on what the Falcons did today. And they're going to go, let's try that. Yeah, they're going to say barbecue chicken is what they're going to say because we're going to cook you. And I think it looks, and and let it be said, I think this game looks different if the Niners are healthy, specifically on the defensive line. Mm -hmm. Herm Edwards said this to me, said not to me, but said this on, on this show and it's always stuck with me or on this station. He said, when you have your backups in, it's okay for 12 to 15 plays. But when those backups start playing 40, 50, 60 snaps that's when over the course of those snaps they're going to look like backups mm. and i think that's just kind of what we saw today yeah over the course of a full game it wasn't it wasn't like i said it wasn't like the falcons were ripping off huge plays but it's just like man hassan ridgeway getting pushed around a little bit kevin givens getting pushed around a little bit maybe in ways that javon kinlaw and eric armstead aren't and that's not a full game thing, but the difference in 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 these games and football games, and everybody listening knows this, the difference is like five plays, maybe fewer. And if the Niners come up with uh, what was what were Atlanta's third down stats here nine for nine for fourteen, if the Niners get two third down stops there and seven for fourteen instead, maybe this game goes different. Well, you, well, and that's a good point because they were nine for fourteen, but. A lot of those stops that the Niners got, that was after the Falcons were already up mm -hmm. two tutties yep. towards the end of the game. So, it, sure, you needed it, but you really needed it at the beginning because at one point they were 
six for six for seven, six for eight. So you needed those stops earlier in the game. You got them later, but the Falcons are also trying to play a bit safer as well. Overall, I don't feel worse about the 49ers right now from a team standpoint. Like the injuries are obviously bad. Kyle Shanahan uh, talking with the media after the game said there's a chance Trent Williams comes back for the Chiefs game and there's a chance Nick Bosa comes back for the Chiefs game. So that'll be worth monitoring this week. But I, I think outside of the injuries, I still feel mostly good about the 49ers. Yeah. And, and again, you got to give the Falcons some credit. Totally. Maybe maybe everyone thought uh, Mariota's just going there to, I don't know, rejuvenate his career and they can be a... They're really just in a position to get Desmond Ritter ready. But maybe the Falcons, I mean, if you look at all of their games, they've been in every game mm-hmm. that they've played. Right? 11, 11 points combined are... Uh, their three losses were by 11 points combined. So it, it's not as if these guys are... May, maybe we just undersold them because you look at the, the AFC South or the and, and all right, we, we don't really know the NFC South and we, we don't really know or really care what they're going to do. The Niners, they can take care of business. But I, I think when you look at the injuries and when you look at where this team currently is, I might burn the tape. I hear what you're saying in terms of... In terms of... The quarterback play. We already know Kyler Murray. The the Niners don't love playing Kyler Murray. They we sure already don't. know. So they're going to have to figure these things out because uh, you you got Mahomes next. The, this game to next week, two polar opposites because this is another one where the Niners go out and they just get let's say they just get housed by the Chiefs, right? And and, and it's on the table. It's on it's on the <laughs> table. And hopefully you get Bosa back. You you know you get these guys back. What if you don't? Because if you don't, now you have two games where, all right, I don't really know what the Niners are, but I do know that it's a long season and they can continue to improve, continue to get better, continue to get healthy, we hope, and, and move from there. I know before the break, we chatted about this the, this health issue and what that even means. We had the 415 chiming in as well, the 510 chiming in, talking about how Tart spoke about the practices and how he feels that the Niners practice a bit harder than other teams early on in training camp when they were having a lot, a lot of these soft tissue injuries, Kyle Shanahan kind of put it on the, the NFL in terms of, you know, we, we work out two days and we're off and then we're doing it. That, that doesn't help either. So everybody's pointing the finger somewhere. All mm-hmm. I know is this, it has gone long enough to where I think it's to the point where you can say this is not just football. I don't think, I and we you. can't necessarily. I don't have anything to confirm that. All I know is I'm looking at these other teams, and I'm looking at the Niners, and every other year, and we saw on the text line as well, the Xfinity Mobile text line as well, that it yes, a lot of the times it is the same players. Mm-hmm. To be fair, mm-hmm. but at the same time, you can't continue to sit here. Well, once we get healthy. Well, once we get healthy. Well, once we get healthy. Right. When are you gonna get healthy? Right. It's ideal. Ideally, you would. And they're supposed to have some guys coming back off IR. Ty Davis Price is back. I mentioned Shanahan said maybe Trent Williams next week, maybe Nick Bosa next mm-hmm. week. Like, okay, that's gr- that's cool, but like, let's see it. And can they stay healthy? Are they going to be around in January? Uh, we've got some calls here. Eight 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 nine five seven nine five seven zero. Let's get to Junior in Livermore. I want to hear somebody else talk about this. Junior, you're on with Alan and Kyle. What's up, buddy? So yeah, the game was weird. It had ups and downs. The injuries were bad for both teams. But it was more on the Falcon side for the bad injuries. They had uh, some injuries. One had a hamstring injury. Yeah, it was bad. And we lost Mike McGlinchey mm-hmm. and Samson Ibukam. and that's that's bad enough because we already have we already have like Nick Bosa. We already have a, enough good players that are injured, and we're just adding more. And also. Our our defense, Atlanta's a good running team. Don't get me wrong. Marcus Mariota, he's a good quarterback. But I feel like we could have had some, like third and we could have had some more stops. Then I like we should have had more stops. And yeah, and also on the offensive side, Jimmy, um, Jimmy, Jimmy. To be honest, Jimmy's not the best deep throw passer. Sure. But when he did throw some. The good passes. Raymond McLeod dropped it. Mm-hmm. Charlie Warner dropped it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think IU dropped it. It was just yeah. But also, I want to congratulate Brandon Ayuk for the his first two touchdown game in yeah. his whole career. 
Yeah, it was big Pretty time. Pretty much it. Awesome. Junior, thanks for the call. Appreciate you. Mm-hmm. Great call, Junior. I mean, Ayuk would have been an overtime overachiever today, but we can't give that. We can't give him out when the Niners lose. We can't do it. I just, I refuse to do it, Kyle. Refuse to do it. I said on Twitter that Brandon Ayuk, because there were some stats that came out that said that that basically used NFL's tracking data. These are stats from ESPN. They use the NFL's tracking data to basically grade and score wide receivers based mm-hmm. on like what they do without without like the process of the throw and the catch. So how open do they get? How much yak do they create? And Brandon Ayuk was like the sixth highest rated receiver by these tracking metrics, right? Mm-hmm. And so I said, like, man, he's due for like like a nine for one fifty and two game. If that deep ball that he caught does not get called back for holding, he would have been at nine for one twenty three and two touchdowns. Absurd. Absurd. Like, that's a huge game. It's still can we can we still say it's a coming out party a little bit for Brandon Ayuk? Yeah, I would we've say. been waiting for and and this is this is like this is the game people have wanted from Kyle Shanahan and mm-hmm. Jimmy Garoppolo and the Niners offense. They just couldn't punch it in the end zone because of drops, because of a Jeff Wilson Jr. fumble, because of a couple interceptions, because of some odd play calling late in the game. Right. I don't want to absolve Kyle Shanahan of all of all the blame here. And Shanahan even said nobody was good enough. And I, I kind of agree. OG in Seattle, you're on with Alan and Kyle in overtime. What's up, OG? Hey, what's up, guys? Very frustrating loss. You know, the thing is, it turned the corner the last two games. I thought Kyle had done a very good job fixing the offense, giving Jimmy more protection, you know, having some deception in the passing game and in the running game. But then today he defaulted to everything that, the 49ers don't do well. So he put Jimmy in four and five wide receiver sets often, and they gave up on the running game way, way too early. Uh, And, uh, you know, I'm not happy with Jake Brendel at center. I think he's the weakest link there. Mm. But, uh, you know, this is the thing that we're we're seeing. uh, When the 49ers lose, they have a formula for it, and they keep going back to that formula. You know, when they're hitting juice in the flat, when they're using the sideline, the entire field, which they did the last two games, it was a revelation. By the way, Jimmy played outstanding today. I, I won't put all those picks on him. Those were some very tough interceptions. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, I think he is turning the corner. But I feel like, uh, you know, too often he's put in situations that, you know, he can't necessarily be successful. We had the drops to today. Yeah. That was really bad. Uh, but uh, I- I'm watching the Chiefs and the Bills play. You know, I just don't see the Niners at that same class, at that same level. There's so, no sense th- of urgency. Yeah, th- 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 and thanks for the call, OG. So that's what what he brought up there about the, the Chiefs and Bills and the Niners keeping up with them. I actually think they can. Okay. If Garoppolo plays like he did today, where he was efficient for the most part, you take out if you include the two drops into what he did, and you can say this mm-hmm. for any quarterback ever, but sure. I think it's particularly if we're gonna highlight the mistakes that Jimmy makes, I think we have to highlight the mistakes that people make around him. If you tack on two more completions, he's thirty one of forty one. And you can tack on another I was gonna say the hundred yards. You got you could you even add the IUK as well. Yeah, that that didn't but that play didn't count. So, yeah. you know, it's but I mean, yeah, add, I mean, he's missing. He could have gone up near 400 yards today Yeah, with maybe three-plus touchdowns. So, like, that's where, and again, but it just comes back to the margin of error for the 49ers. Yeah. And it's two, three, four plays a game that, mm-hmm. that turn your 31-28 win into a 28-14 loss. And that's the thing, right, when you use the word, well, Jimmy played outstanding. Uh, hey. all, the word, outsta- it's all outstandings are not created equal, sure. right? The quarterback play. There's a as, curve. As Jimmy is concerned, you could use that, mm-hmm. right? So that's another piece of this. You got a, a, a pretty darn good Jimmy game, and you you essentially wasted it. You essentially yeah. wasted it. Now, you hope you get another, but I, I don't know what type of Jimmy you're going to get against the Chiefs next week. But if he, but just to, to I, I lost track of my point there. If Garoppolo plays like he did today, mm-hmm. let me know if you agree. If he plays like he did today with the defensive effort they've been getting, 
like with a healthy defense. Sure. It's like the fact that this Garoppolo is still in there is encouraging to me. Was he awesome? No. He was he was not awesome. Was he very good and they sh- they should win most games where you get a quarterback performance like that? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, 1000%. So that's why I don't want to like this is not on Garoppolo. Did no, it, not today. Did he no. have did he have a mistake? Like yeah, sure, but so did everyone on the team. Yeah. I, I ever I, that's not a that's not where my when I look at the reasons they lost today, Jimmy no, Garoppolo's no. not it, not just, even on the list. It's just he not their fought. identity. Good. Yeah, it's just not their identity right. that Jimmy is going to put on the cape and bring you home. That, that this is not. But who he almost the, did today. He almost did. Like, <laughs> That's just not who the Niners are. Yeah. And, and for everybody, I think, I think less about what Jimmy did or didn't do was the fact that all right, what's the one thing? Oh, Jimmy's not taking deep shots. Well, he took them. He took them today, and they yeah. got and they got dropped, or there was a holding call. I know the one was probably a bit underthrown, so I believe it was Ayuk when it got batted down, uh, and that oh, yeah. and and then going back to just those backups, like you were saying, Herm Edwards said, the DB that made the play on that that was Terrell Junior's backup. Mm-hmm. So again, give some kudos to the Falcons because he just could have got torched. Right. I mean, they came in and and maybe that goes back to some of those early issues. When you go up 14, nothing, you're in Atlanta. Everybody is feeling Mm -hmm. good. And the backup, I'm not going to be the one to 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 ruin this. So now I raise my game up the the way that the the Atlanta Falcons continue to raise their game because of the start of the ball game is the same way the Niners did not raise their game. I could almost say lowered their game as it went on because we just we don't have the sauce today. We don't have the juice. That's what it felt like like they all knew we didn't have it today we yeah. just don't have it yeah they 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 i never want to say a team didn't try because that's not they're putting their bodies on the line they're all trying mm-hmm. but they felt when it when it got to 28 14 it just kind of felt like all right like what are you gonna do you know like let's let's get home yes we've been on the east coast for two weeks let's just get out of here that's the way it looked that's just the vibe i got well that's pure vibes well that's pure vibes i have no empirical data and you know you know i always love a, a conspiracy theory because there was one going around towards the end of the game uh, just as far as all right the niners kind of see the writing on the wall we already have a ton of injuries do we want to Put our guys in these situations because the play calling was a little confusing. Basically packing it in. Basically saying uncle, yes. Yeah. I don't think that's what they were doing. Mm. I just think Kyle Shanahan's not a great game manager. <laughs> I, think <that's, laughs> I think that's what it comes down to. Uh, Jeff is in Rhode Island. Shout out, to, uh, shout out to Jeff listening all the way out on the East Coast. Jeff, what's up, buddy? Hey, guys. How's it going? I, this um, my, my issue with it, I mean, we all know the injuries and I mean, like with this training staff, like what they're doing isn't working. So at some point, somebody has to say, we got to switch this up. But today, my issue with this is the effort. When they went down 14 nothing and they came back, I was like, hey, you know what? They got some life in them. Maybe they're saying, let's get back home with a win. But the drops, all of these, all of these things, my thing is going to be, I mean, the only saving grace is the NFC is flawed more than I thought it was. And if they can get healthy, I think they can get hot, you know, with a playoff run, maybe something like last year. But, I mean, going into next week, if Mariota torched this defense this week and they're not somewhat healthy next week, who knows what Mahomes is going to pull off. But, I mean, it's it's just a, it's frustrating with they seem to play to the other team's level. I mean, I was I was looking forward to this thinking, well, you know, they torched the Rams. They torched Carolina, and then I think they were kind of just like, hey, let's get back home and not get too dinged up again. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. If that was their plan, if that was real, like, that's tough. It can't be. I mean, I mean maybe, no subcon- chance. maybe subconsciously. Yeah. I yeah. Think you could maybe. argue subconsciously. 510 is chiming in as well. Just think if the Falcons had Cordero or Damian Williams. I mean, everybody is missing guys. And that's why it's tough yeah. to have the injury conversation. A different 510. Don't forget, this is a high-speed, full-contact sport where these guys want to play every single down of every single game. It sounds like an excuse to blame the training team for the injuries. So that's what... Okay, let me, let me, let me address that. <laughs> let me address that. They're right. That's correct. But it's not the fact that injuries are happening. It's the 
it's the extraordinary volume that they're happening in again. Yes. In 2020, they were, so Football Outsiders, the football analytics site, does an adjusted games lost metric. So it's just how many, how many games did you lose to mm-hmm. injury? The 49ers in 2020 were 29th in the league, the third most injuries lost, in, games lost to injury in the league. In 2021, they were the most games lost due to injury. And this year, they are at or near the top. They got to be on pace. They, it, they, they're at or near the top again this year, or bottom, depending on which way you want to look. And at. here's the thing. Here, here, I would take that metric even further because when you look at the other teams, right, mm-hmm. I would imagine, I would imagine that it's, it, it, it's probably differing besides the Niners. The Niners are always there, but the other teams is probably fluctuating a bad year here, bad year there. Right. If the Niners are always in the top three or bottom three, however you want to say it, that's a problem. That's so we understand issue. it's a it's a contact sport. We understand. Yeah. I mean, it's, they're gladiators out there. The problem is the numbers are are looking a certain way specifically for the Niners. If if everybody had this many injuries, then fine. What then we're we were not having this conversation. Right. But this isn't bad luck. Right, uh, it doesn't exactly. seem to be. You can't be bad luck for this long. And that's more or less when the 49ers went into 2020. Mm-hmm. They basically said, "Eh, we're due to have a healthy year," and they right. did. They didn't. And then again in 2021, and now again this year. So that's the thing. It's the volume over a four season sample size. Right. This isn't man tough injury luck this year. What's going on? It's oh. Tough injury, quote unquote, luck for four consecutive years. I don't know if it's the training staff. I don't know if it's Kyle Shanahan. I don't know if it's the coaching staff. I don't know if it's the players and the way they scout and what their medical team sees when they're scout. I couldn't tell you, bro. But there's something. There's something. Because this is a pattern now. A pattern that not every team faces. That's the reason it's coming up. Yeah. Lori yeah. in Phoenix. Lori, for my money, has the best 49ers takes of any caller on this station. Lori, let it rip. Hey, guys. Um, this was a rough... I mean, I kind of had a... Didn't, I don't want to say I had a bad feeling going into this game. I mean, obviously, all these kind of games, the track games, the games that, that you're supposed to win, you mm-hmm. know, things like that. But, I mean, yeah, the injury thing is just becoming, for me, just more and more concerning. It's like every week you're losing guys in key positions, you didn't have anybody on the starting defensive line today. Overcoming that is, you know, next man up, you can only go so far. Um, They still should have won this game today, and I still say penalties and uh, mistakes. You cannot make mistakes. If Jimmy puts the ball in a place that these guys can get it, you got to get it, especially if you're a veteran. Um, maybe you can say, okay, well, don't give it to McLeod or don't give it to Warner or whatever. But, you know, these you can't just give it to the veterans either. So they got to figure that part out. I am, I mean, that for me was the positive end of it today was how good Jimmy looked, considering that they shut down the run game. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, a po- that's a positive, and that's something that they can hopefully go forward with. But um, the injury part, I mean, I, I think we'll get Williams back. I, I can't imagine Elijah Mitchell's coming back pretty soon. You're going to get Bosa back. Um, if these guys can get, they're not going to lay down and die at right. this point. They're, they got a lot left in them. So I think this year is going to go more like last season did. We'll probably get to sneak into the playoffs again. But, you know, again, this is a roller coaster ride, and we're just kind of in, you know, not even mid, mid-season here. But a lot of things to take away that are some positive things today. But, yeah, I really would like to see Shanahan do better in the fourth quarter. I still don't know what's going on there. Yeah. Um, because again, once you get behind, they're just they're just not doing enough to get. If they can stay even and they don't go down, they're okay. But as soon as they go down by too much, it seems like they fall apart, and that's yeah. something that they're going to have to figure out a way to do better. Perfect. Thanks, Lori. Yeah, I'm I'm yeah. with her on on the injuries. Like eventually, they're going to get healthier. But can they avoid falling to? Can they avoid losing their next three, where they're now? Three and six. Right. Because they have the Chiefs, they go to the Rams by week and then the Chargers. And then also down the stretch, it's the Bucks, they have the Dolphins. I think they have the Saints who may or may not be good. Like they they have they have some very tough games down the stretch. So it's like, man, can you avoid because last year, over the final six weeks, they were playing like must win games. And they leveled up. Yeah. They leveled up. And they up. did. So can this year, can you hold serve? Can you Bonte Hill's been saying Four and four at the bye. Can you just get to four and four at the bye? My mindset was five and three. It needs to be five and three. 
But after watching today and watching more injuries occur today and just kind of looking at the landscape, it's like, all right, four and four. Can you split against Kansas City and the Rams? And then coming out of the bye, can you beat a beat-up Chargers team? And now all of a sudden you're cooking again. I don't feel differently about the 49ers now. In fact, based on what they looked like on offense today, for the most part, I feel a little better about them overall. Open it up a little bit, yeah. If they get to if they get to the playoffs relatively healthy, and by that I mean Bose is in, Trent Williams is in, you got Elijah Mitchell. If they get if they get to the playoffs relatively healthy, like with those guys, I feel very good about them based on how their offense has looked the last couple mm-hmm. of weeks. Yeah. But if they're beat up, you got to get healthy, <laughs> man. You, look, look, get all the ice baths that you can find in San Francisco and Santa Clara and get them out there. Get all the icy hot, the tiger bomb, get everything you need. This is what I'm thinking, Kyle, because we're talking about the Rams and, and, and the Chiefs coming up, how you have to be able to split these games. I'm not worried about the Rams because in the regular season, the, the Niners, they own the Rams. They just do. Sure. I, I think they need to get in a sports psychologist, right? Something oh. like that, right? Where you can close your eyes and just imagine every team you're playing is the Rams. Because <laughs> the effort that they bring up when they play the Rams is something we don't see sure. against all these other teams. Hypnosis. Just pretend the it's all the Rams. Okay. You know? Yeah, let's get on that. Might as well. They got just, yeah, just like a hypnotist and a... Sports psychologist yeah. and that's not Patrick Mahomes. That's Matthew Bowl. Stafford. That is Matthew Stafford. And they're like, but he just threw a sidearm past <laughs> that is fifty Matthew yards. Stafford. No look. You know, McGlinchy, yeah. that is Aaron Donald. That is Aaron hey. Donald. Ugh. Ugh, <laughs> Maybe not. Thanks. Um all right. Gary, Kevin, Bernard, I see you. We'll get to you on the other side. 888-957-9570. If you want to join the conversation, we're picking up the pieces after a 28-14 49ers loss. To the Falcons. You feel better about the Niners after today? Do you feel worse? Where are we at with with the 49ers? With all these injury issues, they're three and three. No matter what happens, they'll still be tied for first in the NFC West after today. How are we feeling, Niner fans? I'm Kyle Madsen. He's Alan Styles. We're on 95 7 the game. Get what you want and pay over time when you use your Lowe's Advantage card. Now through October 26, 2022. Ask for 0% APR with 36 fixed monthly payments on a product installation or appliance purchase of $1,000 or more. Shop for the appliances you want in store or online. Or go to the store nearest you for installation. Now at Lowe's. Offer subject to credit approval. Minimum monthly payments required. See store Lowe's.com for details. U.S. only. Get what you want and pay over time when you use your Lowe's Advantage card. Now through October 26, 2022. Ask for 0% APR with 36 fixed monthly payments on a product installation or appliance purchase of $1,000 or more. Shop for the appliances you want in store or online. Or go to the store nearest you for installation. Now at Lowe's. Offer subject to credit approval. Minimum monthly payments required. See store Lowe's.com for details. U.S. only. The game has your tickets to see the Who, October 24th at the SAP Center. For your shot to win, head to our contest page at 957thegame.com. Are you curious about who offers the best deals on top-rated Samsung, LG, and Sony TVs? The answer is surprising. It's not online, and it's not the warehouse clubs. The best deals on top-rated TVs are at video only. Don't believe it? Then check out the trade-in deals at video only. How about $500 for your old TV? Try doing that online. Before you buy that new TV, drop into video only. If you don't, you'll be sorry. Hey, Becky, what about this beat for your next song? Mm, It's cool, but I'm into faster stuff lately, like Xfinity that gives me beyond gig speeds. Got it. What about this then? It sounds powerful, just like Xfinity. Because its supersonic Wi-Fi has three times the bandwidth, you can connect hundreds of devices at once. (laughs) That's what I call power. Unbeatable internet from Xfinity. Made to do anything so you can do anything. Get the Xfinity Supersonic Bundle with unlimited gig speed internet, Wi-Fi equipment included, and a free 4K streaming box. All for $50 a month with a two-year internet rate guarantee and no annual contract when you add Xfinity Mobile with unlimited data at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash gig, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Limited time offer. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. New gigabit extra internet customers only. Taxes and fees extra and subject to change. Xfinity Mobile. 
T-Mobile requires post-pay Xfinity Internet. Reduced speeds after 20 gigabytes wireless usage. After 24 months, regular rates apply. Requires compatible Xfinity Gateway. Listen, could Gregory change your life? I went from size 44 pants back to the size 38 pants that I had worn uh, when I was in college. Now, the 38-inch pants fall off of me. I lost the weight. I felt better. I lost 63 pounds and 6 inches of pant size. God bless you for having this product and having it at a reasonable price. Outstanding. Gregory is 70 and lost belly fat and six inches off his waist in five months. Since 2004, Andro 400 has been helping men like you lose belly fat, gain energy, and improve their lifestyle. We guarantee it. Go to andro400.com for more true testimonials, before and after photos, and special discounts. Only available on andro400.com. andro400.com. We're all on this planet together. So join Odyssey and find your one thing. As autumn temperatures get cooler, here are some simple things you can do to help out the environment. Remove any window air conditioners. Check windows and door seals for proper insulation to keep heat in and cold air out. And check your furnace, making sure it's clean. And replace the air filter with a new one to keep it running at peak efficiency all winter long. Join Odyssey. And together, each of us doing one thing makes a greener tomorrow. What's your one thing? California, you deserve more. And with United Healthcare, you'll get more. Annual enrollment is October 15th through December 7th. So call United Healthcare today. With the United Healthcare Medicare Advantage Plan, you get more from your Medicare dollar, now including better than ever dental, vision, over the counter, and prescription drug coverage. Call United Healthcare at 1 888 Call UHC today and speak with a licensed sales agent. Benefits, features, and or devices vary by plan and area. Limitations and exclusions apply. When people People have a craving to explore new and traditional Asian cuisines. They head to P.F. Chang's, where scratch-made dishes come from the 2,000-year-old tradition of wok cooking. P.F. Chang's wanted to explore new possibilities for their website. They turned to AmericanEagle.com. AmericanEagle.com re-architected P.F. Chang's website, integrating multiple third-party systems to create a unified digital experience. The results? Improved page speed and performance, personalized content based on users' location, intuitive online ordering, and increase in organic search visibility and a 40% increase in new users. For scratch-made Asian cuisine, visit your local P.F. Chang's or go to pfchangs.com for website design, development, digital marketing, and hosting that produce efficiency, revenue, and results. Visit AmericanEagle.com. P.F. Chang's and AmericanEagle.com. Another example of the best businesses in the world. Turning to the best in the business for websites, go to AmericanEagle.com or call 877-WEB-NOW-1. That's 877-WEB-NOW-1. What's your retirement look like? With Fidelity Income Planning, a dedicated advisor can help you create a flexible income strategy to grow and protect your wealth so you can stop worrying about the future and enjoy whatever comes next. Investment minimums apply. Fidelity Brokerage Services member NYSE SIPC. You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMC FM at HD1 San Francisco. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Now, back to Overtime with Kyle Madsen and Alan Stiles on 95.7 The Game. 49ers lose 28-14. to Trying to figure out what besides injuries went wrong today because it feels, it feels lame to jump on and go, well, if they were healthy, they would have won. I like maybe. It's too easy. Maybe, but also, I mean, they were, for the most part, outside of Trent Williams and Elijah Mitchell, like they're healthy on offense. They got a good... Good day offensively, except for getting into the end zone. Yeah. Well, and George go- Kittle produced. Yeah. And going back to Vegas, right? Vegas knew they were injured. They mm-hmm. still gave them five and a half points. I think it closed at four. Okay. I got bet down big once once Bosa was out. But yeah, yeah like you said, they were still favored. Even even to win a gritty kind of tough game. And that's the way it, they go down 14 nothing early. They come back and tie it. And at that point, it's like, okay, everything's stabilized. Now it'll be kind of back mm-hmm. and forth. Can they get a couple stops? But it wasn't. They... I went into this game thinking, I think the Niners win. I think they win by three or four in a game where they they are the team that gets a stop. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe they go up twenty to seventeen late 
and they get a stop with th- two minutes left, and that does it. But it was the Falcons that just on on drop passes, on an interception, on k- getting the Niners into third and long, keeping them out of second and short, third and short. And then offensively, we haven't talked enough about what the Falcons did offensively today. What Arthur Smith, their offense, uh, their head coach and offensive coordinator, what they've done with their offense without Cordero Patterson and with Marcus Mariota, who is not a player I've really believed in. I used to cover the Titans or blog about the Titans. Okay. I ran a Titans blog for a while. It's, it was an A and doing it. it, it stop. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> but I had never watched a Titans game before. Right. But Marcus Mariota was their quarterback. So I went through and I watched all the previous year's games to kind of get an idea of where the Titans were. And I was just never that impressed by Marcus Mariota. And I'm still not. But to Arthur Smith's credit, Marcus Mariota was excellent today. He was 13 of 14. His only incompletion. You know, when did his first complete incompletion happen? 10.52 in the fourth quarter. That's crazy. It's almost, absurd. Almost 45 minutes of game time. Yeah. No, more than 45. 50 minutes of game time without an incompletion. That's crazy. So he goes 13 to 14 for a buck 29. Two touchdowns, as long as completion, like I said, came on that first drive, is 37 yards. But it was just, hey, easy throw to the flat. Easy completion here. Hey, play action, turn around. There's one read over the middle. You're going to hit it. Hey, Drake London's matched up on a smaller defensive back with Diomedo Lenore. Throw it up to him. It was just all easy stuff. And made easy by the fact that they were getting four, five yards of carry on the ground. I think they finished at 4.2. But, man, every time they needed... Hey, it's second and five. Oh, now it's third and one. Yeah. And first down. Mm-hmm. And Huntley, I mean, like you said, th- those those four yards, they were hard-earned yards. Mm-hmm. And I think the Niners, right, you've been kicking it on the East Coast. You're injured. The Niners, all right, when we get them at the point of contact, they should be good. I think the Niners aren't used to facing teams that run the way they do. And the Falcons today, they ran the way that the Niners do. Yeah, mm-hmm. you got us at the point of contact, but we're going to keep chugging. We're going to keep moving. And that's what Huntley did. That's what the Falcons did. And I don't think the Niners were prepared for that. Didn't seem like it. It sure didn't. Kevin is in El Cerrito. Kevin, what did you think of the game today? Pretty disappointing. Uh, by the way, first-time caller, super stoked to get in. Uh, I'm in. Fan of the Candlestick Chronicles, Kyle, so great to be uh, talking with you. Um, I have two very quick points. First off, um, about the injuries, I, heard, I remember an interview with Joe Staley recently where he talked about the kind of difference between uh, uh, Harbaugh and Shanahan. And he said with Harbaugh, under Harbaugh, they were working out way more. Like, they were way more in the gym and, you know, focusing on conditioning and everything else. And it seems like I think that's probably why Shanahan continues to have, you know, so many injuries is because his guys aren't working out enough. Uh, My second quick point, um, uh, I think I have a solution for Shanahan, uh, uh, especially for his love of running quarterbacks. I honestly think uh, if he really wants to, to, to get the offense he's been looking for, he needs to put uh, Debo under center more. I think Debo, I don't think the occasional <laughs> wildcat, I think almost like you should just have him take the ball. <laughs> <laughs> just, like have him be the ultimate weapon you know he can throw it he can run and if you put him through you know have him run through the tackles if he gets hit he's not going to break anything so <laughs> but that's just you know a crazy idea right but anyways uh thanks so much and uh yeah um yeah i hope you get to say dot com kyle before i go i'll take my answer off the air <laughs> dot camp it's a thing from the pod uh yeah i i, I assume that so- <laughs> i assume that um yeah I don't. I'm down for any solution that gets the 49ers in the end zone. I mean, I've called I've called Debo Booby Miles before because he can do everything, right? Just from Friday Night Lights, he can do it all. So we saw a little bit of a wrinkle today with him and Ty Davis Price in the backfield, and Ty Davis Price working as the fullback. Yes, that's something kind of interesting because I want to see if they turn that into something mm-hmm. where they can be a little bit less predictable with Debo in the backfield. He hasn't been running it as much. I think that's partly for preservation, but partly because teams are just on it. But today he had a little more success, found a little bit more room. 
I, I'm wondering if that's something they're going to start doing is putting him in the backfield with another running back that's not Kyle Juszczyk. Mm-hmm. Maybe moving Kyle Juszczyk down to kind of that H-back spot and having a second running back as a fullback because that gives you some more options. Yeah. And during the game, you know, while we were watching, we spoke about how a lot of these runs with Jeff Wilson Jr. look their pitches back, but they're still running it up the middle. And you had spoke about how I think Kyle Shanahan knows everybody is looking towards the outside with his runs. So at the very least, he is self-aware that something needs to change, right? They need to switch some things up. They need to do some different things to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers. And they did a pretty decent job of that today. They just have to keep evolving and keep changing. One thing, going back to Debo, though, you don't have to change the idea of just getting Debo the football because mm-hmm. the it, it just never ceases to amaze me what he's able to do. That one play where it was some version of a screen, a quick out towards the yard. end of the game, he ends up getting a yard for and for no apparent reason. There was no reason he shouldn't have been tackled in the backfield. Another catch that he had when he almost went down again, gets through that one, then takes the DB or the linebacker. He was in the air. He just ran him over. He yeah. sunned him. He yeah. said... I, we're talking about going in the weight room. Well, Debo is not missing any time in the weight room. I don't no. know about the rest of the Niners, but Debo, he, he is drinking all his muscle milk, whatever it is, because he said, I'm stronger than you. Uh, you can't hold me. Get out of my way. And now yeah. you're on the ground. How does, it, how does the sky look? How many clouds are up there? Debo does not skip leg day. Never. For sure. Never. And I think, and and I I like I said, I I, I get the notion of, Get the ball to your playmakers. Like mm-hmm. they need to, but they did. They did. They did. Debo touched it ten times they today. Did. Brandon Ayuk eight. George Kittle seven. Like, or I'm sorry, uh, Debo touched it nine times. Ayuk eight. Kittle eight. Mm-hmm. They're like they're getting. They got them the ball today. It just didn't result in touchdowns. Partly because of drops. Partly because of interceptions. Partly because of not even other field issues. goals. Not yeah. even field goals. Yeah. It's really tough. But when you get down, like we, this isn't a team built to play from behind. No. And I thought they, I thought they did an okay job today. But um, of all the teams in the league that you feel good about when they get down twenty eight fourteen, there's a, there's not a lot of them. But b, the 49ers are not on that list. I don't think. Gary and San Ramon, you're on uh, overtime with Kyle and Allen. What's up, Gary? Hey, gentlemen. Uh, good show as always. I always flip off the uh, the game call and listen to you guys. My man. You talk, you talk to the fans and. Uh, and you're always uh, got a lot of good points, and you're not afraid to criticize. So, um, you know, it's easy to criticize what went on today. Uh, but, you know, my problem with what's going on is this was supposed to be the soft part of the schedule. Mm-hmm. And um, who have we beat, you know? Uh, we beat teams with stationary quarterbacks. Yep. Uh, the teams that have more mobile quarterbacks uh, have beaten us. And, and we still got Kyler Murray twice, and we got uh, – Mr. Mahomes next week, um, you know, he's a, he's a pro in what he does as far as eluding the rush. And, uh, yeah. and Russell Wilson uh, still managed to beat us again, you know, with, the, with an offensive challenge Denver team. So that's my concern as we face the tough part of our schedule. Getting to the injuries, uh, unfortunately, this has been a staple in Kyle, Han- uh, Kyle Shanahan's regime along with, you know, wanting to run the ball. We run 30 times. We usually win. And so I don't, I don't have an answer for that, but, but it, it's, it's getting to be more of a concern with the Kyle Shanahan coach teams. And like uh, the last caller said about Staley saying that, you know, Harbaugh teams worked harder and, you know, Harbaugh was a ground and pound team. So, uh, you know, I just, uh, just have those, those concerns and, uh, and then getting back to not being able to coach Trey Lance up to be a, the, the passer that, that Kyle supposedly wants to get the ball downfield. So, yeah. You know, a lot of concerns going forward. Let's, let's see what happens. All right. Thanks, Gary. Yeah. And that's the thing is like concerns for sure, but I'm not, I'm not ready to make hard statements either way, so, particularly about 2023 and beyond with, with Trey Lance. That's a no. conversation for another day. But with this team, it's hard not to, to point to some things that have happened today and point to things that if you said they were going to be three and three after six games, I don't want to say it's, it's a little disappointing, I think, because you figure, okay, they lost to Denver. This is before the year, before we knew that Denver wasn't going to be good. You're probably looking at it and going, okay, they're 3-3, three and three, so they lost to Denver, and they lost to the Rams, and they lost to, I don't know, <laughs> one of their East Coast games, I yeah. guess. 
but Baker maybe. Yeah, yeah. You would. It, so three and three to me is a little bit disappointing because Carolina and Atlanta. While Atlanta wasn't going to be an easy game, is absolutely a game that they should win. They're a better team. Denver is a game that they should have won. Chicago, a game they should have won. Like this is becoming a pattern now. Yeah. And if if this is my concern again, I'm not ready to make a hard definitive statement. But but for me, if you keep losing games that you should win, maybe you shouldn't win those games. Like maybe you're just not that team. Yeah. And that's that's my bigger concern. And when you talk about burning the tape, and you're never going to burn the tape on a W, but to me, last week told me absolutely nothing. Sure. About the Niners. Yeah, I mean, it was the, like, the, great. They can... The Panthers, they're a dumpster fire, mm-hmm. right? They, they completely, the Baker, I don't even know if he's going to be in the league next year. They fire their coach. I mean, it's a mess over there. Their coach definitely won't be in the league they're, next they're, year. Their coach will not be in the league. He'll be at a, a, another college. He'll be fine. I think he got $40 million just to chill, so he'll definitely be fine. So last week told me absolutely nothing about the Niners. Then you go into, this week could have. This week could have because, all right, you, d- you did what you were supposed to do against the Panthers. A lot of people don't think the Falcons are very good, but they're definitely better than the Panthers. The, the Falcons at this point, we, we were talking as far as food and all these other things, underrated, overrated, properly rated. The Falcons at this point, you got to start thinking, are they a bit underrated? You, you sure. have to. Mm-hmm. You have to. So they are a team that maybe some teams have slept on and the Niners go out. And it feels like eons ago, Kyle, mm-hmm. to where Trey Lance goes out. And I know it's a long season. And, I, and I'm, so we're not mailing anything in but Trey Lance goes out now all of a sudden I mean Jimmy Garoppolo Mm -hmm. Jimmy Garoppolo now that he's out the Super Bowl I mean the Niners every time it feels like to me the Niners remind me of some of these schools I know college I was gonna say college played yesterday it almost seems like we got to watch some more today with Marcus Mariota I felt like I was watching college football it was prime Oregon Marcus Mariota for sure we we just got extra where's little Michael James at we got the same thing we got the (laughs) same thing so you go out and every time these schools that every time they get a little bit of pub behind them, I feel like mm-hmm. Tennessee is one of those schools. Anytime anyone starts believing in you, they blow it, right? You can name any Pac-12 school. They do the same thing. Mm-hmm. That, to me, reminds me of... USC the, yesterday. USC yesterday. Sorry, Lucas. USC yesterday. Right the Niners, every time, all right, they're turning around. Let's go. Let's mm-hmm. get rolling. You, you lose a game you're not supposed to lose. And this has been going on for years. Yeah. For years. So they always play their best football going into November and December. Mm-hmm. And that's fine. But it just puts you into a hole going into November and December. Like, they should be 5-1 and one right now. Yes. Like, they, they should be. But they're not because, like I said, maybe they're just not that team. Maybe I have overestimated the 49ers. And, again, the injuries play a role. And I think they played an outsized role today in how Atlanta was able to run the ball. But that was a worry I had going in, and the 49ers didn't do enough. I talked about Fred Warner earlier. Like, that's a player you need to step up, and he didn't today. He just wasn't very good. So, again, not writing them off. They could still go on a deep playoff run, but there are certainly some flaws they have to fix. And I think when you look at their three losses, there are poorly timed penalties or just a volume of penalties and turnovers. Yeah. Like, those are the two big things. And then today you sprinkle in the drops and... And uh, you have a recipe for for a loss against a team that that might be worse. We're going to keep hearing, because I can hear it now. It hasn't even happened yet. Let, let's say the Niners don't take care of business. They go to three and four. They go to three and five again, mm-hmm. like like we saw last On year. On the table. And we're, we're going to hear all the calls. Well, they went to three. There were three and five last year. Guess what? They went to the NFC Championship mm-hmm. game. So, you know, it, we're not done. That's sure. fine. But at the same time, I know, you know, shout out the A's and Billy Bean. If you don't win the last one, it doesn't matter. So the fact that you made it to the playoffs and you put yourself up against the wall, you made it to the playoffs. Now you got to go on a road trip again Mm -hmm. and and win these playoff games on the road. The bottom line is that's not necessarily a recipe for success. Now, if your version (laughs) of success is just getting to the playoffs and having a deep run, then sure. But Mm -hmm. if you're... If your version of success is winning the Super Bowl, it's not a good recipe. Right. It's just not. Getting to three, the goal shouldn't be three and five and then we'll turn it on. Right. Like that meme where the, the guy's playing the PS2 or whatever right. and he and leans, leans forward. forward. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You should be six and two and fighting for the one seed. Like that's where this team should be. Mm-hmm. 
They shouldn't be, hey, three and three. Can they get to four and four? Like, that's where they are. But the expectation, for, for me anyway, was much, much higher. Bernard and Lodi wants to talk about Shanahan. He thinks his play calling was gutless. Bernard, what's up? Hey, guys. So first, uh, real quick, when it comes to play calling, Shanahan is completely gutless. Explain. He plays it safe, running plays, quick slants, no end arounds, no flea flickers, no creativity. Not, okay. not aggressive enough. Uh, he always said over the years, Jimmy can't throw deep. Well, he threw deep, deep several times today, and it would have worked out, and it looked pretty good. He had Trey Lance. He didn't even let Lance throw deep. He's gutless. As far as the injuries go, I lived through the Bill Walsh era. He was well known for having very light practices, lots of walkthroughs and no contact drills. Uh, Shanahan's doing the opposite. And he can't even figure this out. This is not a coincidence. He's overworking these guys and, and, and causing injuries. So I'm just very disappointed in the highly overrated Kyle Shanahan. And okay, all. thanks, Bernard. So, so the practice thing, fine. Mm-hmm. But I don't know, I don't understand his gutless play calling doesn't, isn't aggressive enough. He was aggressive today, but it didn't work. That I, you lost me there. I thought, yeah, I, I did thought, not aggressiveness on Kyle Shanahan's part. Like the difference between a win and loss today was not a flea flicker. Like, right. I, prom- I promise. I, I thought the I thought the deep shots, the passing game today, I thought was the opposite of gutless. I thought we haven't seen these types of throws from Jimmy before, mm-hmm. so I thought they opened it up a bit. I would say the run game to me, it felt a little vanilla, but at the same time, when you go down fourteen zero. From Jump Street, it's hard to establish it. I think that's the issue. It, it, it's when we call Shanahan a genius, and that's why earlier in the show I talked about is this offense just built to front run, right? People say the same thing about the Ravens, and it's all these run heavy offenses mm-hmm. that when you get down, what are you going to do now? You have a quarterback that is not going to save you in those situations, and your offense isn't really built for that. So, I they didn't really have an opportunity. I thought the passing game, again, because they went down earlier, early, I thought the passing game was was a bit better than we've seen in the past. How many deep shots do you want? I mean, I, I think also you can't just watch the Chiefs and the Bills and expect every everyone is not Patrick Mahomes and and, and Josh Allen. That's just that correct. That's not it, right? <laughs> so you can't right. watch this game and say, well, what's Shanahan doing? There's only a couple of those guys running around the planet. Right. right, and yes. they ha- and they're already spoken right. for. Right. So, you look at what they did today. As far as the Niners, I thought it was a a, a well called game. The problem is when you have a fumble after the Falcons just punched you in the mm-hmm. mouth and scored in the opening drive. Now you're down fourteen zero. Now you're just in survival mode. Yeah. Now you're all right. Let's get to the half and let's not get down three tutties at this point. Let, mm-hmm. let let's just survive and advance and try to hang around. So. Today was tough. Now, if you want to get on Kyle Shanahan in terms of in terms of just why are we in that position, right? Why are we in? And I see you on the 415 on the Xfinity mobile text line. The, the urgency wasn't there. I can get on you for that. But as far as the play calling, I thought that the play calling was was good. I mean, I, I, I don't know what you want. I mean, when you watch a lot of these football games front to back, you're not going to see 18 deep shots. You're just not. Now, right. in, in terms of, again, in terms of the uniqueness when it comes to the running game because that's the Kyle Shanahan thing. Mm -hmm. You got down so early, you just had to, hey, we just got to move the ball and go to our go-tos. And it felt felt to me like the Falcons were selling out to stop the run as well. Yes. They know they're not a good run defense going against a well-designed run offense. I think they sold out to stop that and said, hey, let Jimmy Garoppolo beat us. If he's going to beat us, we will take it. And he could have. And I think he would have. Like it, it, we talked about it earlier, three to five plays a game, right? Mm-hmm. And you talk about the IU deep catch that got called back for a holding. Maybe the end of the game goes different if that's complete. Talk about the two drops on deep throws that bring up third downs. Niners don't convert, they punt. And now instead of first down in the red zone, you're punting the ball back. Yeah. Those, are, those are where games swing. Let's fit one more call in here. Robin in San Francisco. Uh, Robin, you're on overtime with Kyle and Alan. What's going on? Hey, so listen, you guys. I'm so glad you just like, this whole show is not about blaming Jimmy G. So I really want to 
thank you guys for that. And uh, and the callers, too, because it really makes for bad radio. Um, but, uh, you know, listen, sometimes you get beat, you just get beat. And, Cal, I know you're disappointed that they lost, but that the results don't lie for themselves. They were flawed from the beginning. Mm-hmm. If you look at the roster, you know, you expect them to win against Denver. The 49ers are what they were last year and the year before. Yeah. You don't know what the hell you're going to get from week <laughs> to week. And I think it starts, <laughs> and I think it starts with, with Shanahan's personnel t- uh, t- uh, uh, decisions. Yeah. And it has nothing. And for me, when people say the play calling this and the reception, and I mean, you know, Football, the basics are easy, but you don't know what the play was meant to be. People kill me trying to be experts at football. <laughs> you don't know if the receiver ran the damn route wrong or whatever. I do want to say that Jimmy G did put the ball in the hands of a couple of mm-hmm. uh, receivers that just dropped the ball. That might have been, you know, you know, who knows, not a connection. Many of things going on here. Right. But I actually do think it starts with Kyle Shanahan's personal charge of his roster building. One of the reasons why from year to year, we don't know what the hell we're going to get. And we and it was shown today that the defense can't carry this team with the injuries. And people say that's an excuse. Well, let me tell you what. Facts are not excuses. Yep. Right, you guys. Thanks, Robin. Electric as always. Always. Yeah, and that's that's where that's where it's tough because yeah, the injuries played a role today. The injuries injuries always play a role. But there were other plays in this game that you're like, man, they could have overcome the injuries. Yes. But I I do think it's a concern going in. Like a caller said earlier, look at what Marcus Mariota did and they have Patrick Mahomes next week. They really need Nick Bosa to play. If Eric Armstead can somehow get right in a week, <laughs> I don't think he will. But, man, it'd be great if he could play. If Traverius Ward's groin injury isn't too bad, it'd be great if he can play. You look at it on the other side, and it's almost as if, well, because the NFC is so bad, maybe, maybe if you, if you can't play, sure, because you want to get out there and get that experience. But, I mean, I, I don't want to rush anybody back either, to be fair. I get that. No, I get that for sure. But if he's if he can go, like, it would... It would be. I would feel a lot better yeah. about about the 49ers. You can't chances. burn two tapes in a row. Going in. All right. Final segment coming up. We'll uh, we'll dive into some of the best players from today. We'll hear from Kyle Shanahan on the other side, and uh, we'll see if we can get Evan and Sterling in here for a little changeover. Uh, they are coming up next. They're going to take you from three to five, uh, leading into Sunday Night Football right here on ninety five seven. The game. I'm Kyle Madsen. He's Alan Styles. This is overtime. So, what are you reading? I'm checking out the ratings on the new TVs, and it looks like Samsung, LG, and Sony got the best scores. Just like last year. What about those new high dynamic range TVs? They got the highest scores of all, but their prices are really high. Did you check online? Yeah, their prices were about the same. Well, there's one place where we can get a hot deal on those top rated models. Where? At video only. Check out the ratings on TV stores. I see video only scored better than the others. So if you want the best deal on the best TVs, then we should take our TV ratings and head over to top rated video only. At video only, you won't find huge stores with refrigerators or dishwashers, but you will find the best deals on the best TVs, sound bars, and home theater systems. Shop around, but then make sure you visit video only, because if you don't, you'll be sorry. In Mountain View, San Mateo, Dublin, and San Rafael, video only. If you own a business, this has been a bumpy ride. From pandemic to inflation, I'm sure you could use a break. If your business has five or more employees and survived COVID, you may be eligible to receive a payroll tax refund of up to $26,000 per employee. The challenge is getting your hands on it. Hi, I'm Howard Mackler, and that's why I founded GetRefunds.com to cut through the red tape and get you the money. The team of tax attorneys we have put together are highly trained in this little-known payroll tax refund program. We do all the work, charge not a dime up front, and simply share a percentage of the cash that we get for you. Businesses of all types can qualify, including those that took PPP, nonprofits, and even those that had increases in sales. We have helped return over a billion dollars to businesses, and we can help you too. 
Just go to GetRefunds.com, click on Qualify Me, and answer a few questions. This payroll tax refund is only available for a limited period of time. Don't lose out on up to $26,000 per employee. Go to GetRefunds.com. That's GetRefunds.com. Diabetes, high blood pressure, anxiety meds, everyone's on them. If you're a 50-year-old male, maybe a bit porky, and you may even have type 2 diabetes, a million dollars of term insurance may only cost you about 200 bucks a month. Call Term Provider. Speak with Big Lou at 800-200-1966. Big Lou will find a term life policy for you even if you have type 2 diabetes, are overweight, or have high blood pressure. Term providers help thousands of people like you who think they can't afford term life insurance. To buy a million dollars of affordable term life for you, all you need to do is call Big Lou at 800-200-1966. Lou will make sure the scales are tipped in your favor. Call 800-200-1966. 66. Big Lou will answer your call and work to fit you into a term life policy that you can afford. Remember, Big Lou's like you. He's on meds, too. Call 800-200-1966. 800-200-1966. Ask Sherwin-Williams during the four-day super sale, October 14th through the 17th, and get 40% off paints and stains with prices starting at $26.69. That means 40% off our most popular color family, Blue. Psychologists have found it to be soothing and relaxing, which makes it especially great for bedrooms and bathrooms. And of course, 40% off all of our other colors. Shop the sale online or visit your neighborhood Sherwin-Williams store. Retail sales only. Some exclusions apply. See store for details. I studied Spanish in college and never got fluent. But then I tried Babbel. Want the most effective way to learn another language? In just 15 minutes a day, Babbel's bite-sized lessons will have you learning another language in as little as three weeks. Babbel gets you speaking quickly about things you actually talk about in the real world. University studies have shown that using Babbel for 15 hours is equivalent to a semester of college Spanish. If you want to learn a new language, there's no better way than Babbel. Go to Babbel.com to try Babbel for free. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. By now, you know that sound. It's the sound of the Home Depot. But what about those sounds? Those are the sounds of a Samsung bespoke laundry set washing and drying a full load in under an hour. Making this the sound of savings on top brand appliances. Final days to save up to $1,052 on the new Samsung bespoke laundry set ends October 19th. At the Home Depot, how doers get more done. Offer valid September 29th through October 19th. U.S. only. See store or online for details. Are you seeing the telomeres here? Come here, look at the scope. Dr. Ocasio's lab startup just discovered a gene therapy breakthrough. The cells have already doubled. He needs a fleet of research assistants before this breakthrough breaks them. We need lab techs, research assistants. Indeed can help him hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. We instantly connect you with quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed match your job description. Visit Indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. The annual Harmony Walk to End Hunger and Homelessness in Richmond is October 22nd. Register at gripcares.org. Hear local music, take your kids to the bounce house, and make a difference together. Register now at gripcares.org. 95.7 The Game has your tickets to see The Who, October 24th at the SAP Center. For your shot to win, head to our contest page at 957thegame.com. Alice at 97.3 is celebrating the return of Alice in Winterland. Friday, December 2nd at the SAP Center in San Jose. Starring Sean Mayer. One Republic. See you at Alice in Winterland. Matt Nathanson. Plus more to be added. Tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster. Get everything Alice in Winterland at RadioAlice.com. Now, back to Overtime with Kyle Madsen and Alan Stiles on 95.7 The Game. Yeah, we'll get to get to Niner football, but a real quick reminder. The Warriors opened their season on Tuesday against the Lakers at the Chase Center. We're going to be out at the Chase Center tomorrow. Willard and Dibbs will be there starting at 9, and then uh, Steiny and Goo will be there starting at noon. So from 9 to 3, we'll be out at Chase Center 
Um, getting you ready for the Warriors regular season opener at home against the Lakers on Tuesday. There'll be interviews. There's going to be players, coaches. There's going to be a ton of stuff to give away. I think each show is going to have an autographed Steph Curry yeah. and Clay Thompson jersey to give away. So really, really cool. Make sure you're locked into 95-7 the game all day tomorrow with uh, Willard and Dibbs and then Steiny and Goo out at the Chase Center to get you ready for the Warriors season opener. Off season feels like it, it went by so quickly. But you know what, Kyle? It does go by quickly when you play until June right. and when you win the whole mm-hmm. thing. Let's yeah. keep this thing rolling. Love Re- the feels. Repeat season. I would love, and this is where, as a, as a fan of the 49ers, have been my whole life, mm-hmm. grew up that way, born like this. I was out at that parade, the Warriors parade. I've been to two now. I was in Arizona for the first couple, moved back in 2018, so I got to go to the 2018 parade. And I want a 49ers parade so bad. Mm. I want red and gold down Market Street so bad. And I think that's why games like today are so frustrating because you watch what they did on offense. And then you, 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 you pair that with what they did defensively the first five weeks. And it's like, man... If they can get the offensive outing they got today with those defensive outings they got, Mm -hmm. they would be so close. But it also feels like as you watch the Chiefs and Bills and even to an extent this year, the Cowboys and the Eagles, less the Cowboys and the Eagles. Well, no more after less tonight. So, yeah. right, less so with those teams. But you watch the other top teams, and it's like, gosh, they feel way further away than they look. It does, and it feels like, all right, we can sit here and say, as I have, oh, the NFC is is trash, this, that, and the third, and, and the Niners, because of that, the Niners still have a shot. We don't know who's, who's good or not in the mm-hmm. NFC so far. Like you said, Cowboys and Eagles will know more tonight. But the goal is not to go to the Super Bowl and get housed. Right? Like, <laughs> right. The goal, right. Like, you want to feel like, all right, we're going to have a good matchup once we get to the Super Bowl. So that's and that's where the injury conversation comes in because there's two schools of thought with the injury. And Robin, Robin, the caller earlier said it eight 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 nine five seven nine five seven zero. If you want to jump in, but the the injury factor is just a fact. They empirically factually were missing key starters mm-hmm. today and it played a role the larger issue with the injury conversation is not sunday okay they lost on sunday they lost today the the bigger issue is can they be healthy by november can they be healthy in december because if they are i think you're right the nfc is wide open and yes they can they can Go make a deep playoff run. And if they're going to Philly or going to Dallas in the NFC Championship game, who knows? If they if they have the defense that they've had, if they're healthy on defense, great. Then you love their chances. But over the course of a full year, if they just keep dealing with this all season, it's like, man, that makes that makes an it's hard to win a Super Bowl. It is even harder when you're dealing with the adversity they're dealing with. Yeah. And that's just that's part of it. That's that's football, I get it. Um, but that's why the injury conversation matters to me. Less about Sunday. Okay, they lost a game Sunday with a bunch of dudes out. Stuff happens. They made other mistakes. What about December? I, I think that the problem I have with the... I understand that this is football injuries happens. I understand that take to some degree. Mm-hmm. But then it's like, okay, so what are we doing? Is it just the healthiest team? What what does that actually mean? Is it just the healthiest team it wins the Super Bowl? Feels like it, right? Is it just <laughs> it luck? Feels like is it, it yeah. honestly just luck of the draw when it comes to help? I just that just seems too basic to me. Well, and you still have to execute. Yes. Let's here. This is this is Kyle Shanahan. He talked specifically after the game. He talked about missing key guys, but they still had their chances. I I think it always can be, but I don't think that was the case today. I think we had our chances to overcome. We made it harder on ourselves, not taking anything away from them. I mean, I think you said it. I mean, yeah, that's a big deal, missing those people, but 
we had every chance to still pull that off and we just have a little bit less room for error. And I thought we made some real big plays too, the way some of those guys were running with the ball. I mean, especially with that lead, they're a pretty soft zone most of the game and to watch our guys break some tackles and do some stuff like that, but it was tough to get the big one. I thought we had a couple opportunities of it with those two drops and then when we finally got a big one, we got called back on a holding. So it's kind of the story all day and it makes it a lot tougher. The other story all day was the Falcons churning out yards and short yardage. Yes. And here's Kyle Shanahan on what happened on some of those short yardage runs. I mean, we just had done a number of short yardages. If you look at the first one of the game, I believe, the third play, the third and one, when we went inside, they were just all tight in there. We were able to get one later with a sneak, and then we thought they were going to have the same looks, and we tried to get outside. I don't know exactly what happened outside, but I think we lost a yard on the play, and then we went to our third down, and they went to zone. We had a zone and a man play on, and it was tight right between those two linebackers, and didn't come up with it. And that's where, when you talk about they abandoned the run early, it's like, yeah, they kind of, they had to. They had to. The Falcons were not going to let them run the ball. And they put the onus on Jimmy Garoppolo to make plays. He made some. His receivers didn't at times. He didn't make a couple plays. And that's how you lose games, man. Sometimes you just lose in the NFL. I don't think there needs to be some, I'm trying to come up with as we go here. I'm trying to come up with this kind of big overarching, like, here's my big takeaway. Sure. But I don't have it. But that's like why, they're banged up yeah. and they got punched in the face. But that's what I'm saying. You you might you might burn the tape. <laughs> you might just burn the tape, right? Maybe. Like you burn the tape in terms of except the Mariota runs. Yes, figure you, out how to stop that. You burn the tape in terms <laughs> of the Mario Mariota runs and, and just the urgency that you didn't have. But in terms of just all right, we know that we didn't have all of our guys, right? So you burn some of the tape. You burn mm-hmm. you burn half the tape. I think another big thing, and you know, D'Amico Ryan's is going to have a, a rough. A rough couple days here as he tries to figure out what went wrong. Another big thing when it comes to being on the road and you've been on the road this whole time and, and trying to get the momentum back in your favor, the, the Niners didn't have any takeaways, right? They didn't have anything to flip yeah. that momentum. So, and and in all the games that we've seen, there there have been those big moments. They didn't have that today. The, yeah. the, the Falcons felt comfortable the whole game. Well, and they even got the big on their second touchdown. They got the so they get the first touchdown, force a punt, and Ray Ray McLeod gets them the big return down to the Atlanta 32. They get a short field, they take advantage, they score in four plays. So they didn't get a turnover. Right. But they got the big special teams point. It's like, okay, here we go. And then they just the engine just wouldn't turn over. Right. They were they 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 felt so close and just couldn't. I mean, they just didn't. The Falcons made plays and the Niners didn't today. That's the bottom line. And, and I, I think the Falcons. I hate, that, I hate to say that, but that's just kind of what Sometimes it's just that simple. Sometimes it's just that simple. I mean, you could leave this game frustrated, but I don't think this is anywhere near the frustration of the Broncos game. Because the Broncos no. game, I mean, that that's number one, right? And, and if we were to rank... The bad losses, well, I guess any of the lot, all three of the losses feel like bad losses because you shouldn't have lost to the Bears. I, I still don't mm-hmm. believe you should have, or the Broncos. If you were to rank the bad losses, I think that you could you could go Bears or Broncos depending on who you ask. Sure. But they are both way, way higher up the list than this Falcons game. Yeah, yeah. And and I and I don't I don't even know if it's it's particularly close. And that's that's the thing about this game Sunday is the Bears game when they were up, what was it 10 nothing or 10 three or whatever? Yeah. It, I guess it was 10 nothing. It was like this, this feels over. This feels like the Niners have it wrapped. And the, the, the Broncos game to an extent too, it's like, man, Russell Wilson just doesn't seem like he has that in his bag anymore. No. So maybe he's just, maybe I, I think they, they for the most part have this. They just need to get a stop and they, and they didn't. Sunday it never felt like I said it felt like they stabilized a little bit at fourteen all, but there was never a point where I'm like, ah, they've got it. Right. And then blew it. They just didn't they didn't play well enough. And they so the injuries are just a fact. Okay, everybody knows it. Make an adjustment. Like that D'Amico Ryans has been very, very good at making adjustments to his personnel, to opposing personnel. 
And that's what this week is going to be about. Yeah, you have to figure out a way to beat the Chiefs, but you, you, it can't be like, oh, we'll beat the Chiefs if Nick Bosa can do this. Like, no, man, you're going to have to blitz or throw different wrinkles and coverage at what at, at Patrick Mahomes. Mm-hmm. And that's the, the the injuries are there. Yeah, you got to figure out how to work around them. Well, and even though you know we have sat here and and talked about the NFC and how we don't know who the cream of the crop is there. The the thing is, we're so we're so early on in this season still that the same way the Niners are talking about, you know, we can get hot and and go on a little run here and we still have time. All these other teams are thinking the same thing. All these other teams are sitting here thinking, "Hey, you know, we can we can we can still get hot and we can still take the division. Take the Rams for instance. They had the Panthers today who like we 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 know straight up how bad they are cuz the Niners just faced them. So you have the Rams who are facing the Panthers. The the Niners who who face already faced the, the Panthers. Now they're facing the Falcons. Okay, so now the Rams, like you said, they're still going to be tied for first place. But now next week, and I don't know off the top of my head who the Rams play next week. All I know is that the Niners play the Chiefs. So uh, this right. idea that the Niners, okay, we have time to figure this out, I guess, but you kind of don't because you don't know if these other teams are going to get hot. What right. if the Cardinals, what if What if Kyler Murray, right, and... and that whole situation they have, and Cliff Kingsbury, what if they just say, you know what, let's go to Benny Hanna, let's squash the beef we have <laughs> and figure it out, and they start rolling again. Like sure. A lot of these things can happen. So to ba- so you you understand that, all right, you lost the Falcons game, you got to move forward, but you cannot continue to do this because any of these other teams can get hot at any moment. The Rams are on a bye next week before playing the 49ers at home. So to your point... Yeah, the Rams might figure it out, but you also need to beat the Rams. Straight like, up. You, you, you have to win that game. Mm-hmm. Whether you win or lose against Kansas City, like winning division games is just so vital. They're 2-0 in the division right now. But the Rams will be coming off their bye week. Right. Which means Sean McVay is going to have a free week to take a deep breath and figure out what the heck's going on with his offense. Mm-hmm. Because whatever they're doing right now is not is not working particularly well. So... That's absolutely when you when when you start to roll down the 49er schedule. It's Chiefs next week. And then it's at the Rams and the bye, then the Chargers. And if they're not getting healthier by then, it becomes very tough, especially after how they played in Atlanta. Right. There's not a lot so you can talk about okay, the fumble and the two drops. You can talk about those for sure, but it's still not like lock and key that they were going to 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 win that game with those plays no. going their way. So that's they lost to Atlanta and it's very tough if they have roll out the same roster that they did against against the Falcons if they do that against the Chiefs, it's really hard to see how that version of the 49ers beats the Chiefs. It's really hard to see how that version of the 49ers beats the Rams coming off a bye. Same thing with the Chargers. So I think they not only have to 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 play well, but they have to get a little healthier because I don't even think their their best game can beat the Chiefs and, and going and a better yeah. version of the Rams. And going back to going back to okay, the Niners compared to these other teams as well. I mean, we're watching this from the Niners standpoint, obviously, but we're watching the national game. We're not watching a Niners specific feed. You know how they'll they'll do those for the national championships and things like that. We're watching the national feed. And we saw a couple guys, right? Like I said, Terrell Jr. goes out for the Falcons, but I mean, it's every single play. Eva comes in, Eva comes out, McGlinchey's in, McGlinchey's out. All these, it was back and forth, back and forth. And I'm thinking it's one thing to, yeah, we need to get the guys that are injured healthy. You also have to keep the guys that are healthy, healthy. Yeah. Throughout that game, we're we're sitting here t- typing up notes. Okay, removing somebody because they're out, then putting them back in. Yeah. So I, it, it's just hard for me to sit there and assume health. And if you're not going to assume health because maybe you can't in football, then I, I don't know what to do with this team. And, and maybe right. it's just a matter of who gets injured, who, who is healthy at the right time. And and it's like that in all sports. But this is this is something else. We you ran the numbers. You talked about the amount of injuries that we've seen from the Niners. They're at the bottom of the barrel when it comes to the amount of injuries. 
every single season for the last couple of years. Yeah, it's um, it's tough, and I, I I I think less than the amount. It's like who's injured. Mm-hmm. Because if Nick Bosa is going to be out against Kansas City and Trent Williams is going to be out and Elijah Mitchell is going to continue to be out, that's where that's where I think they run into into the bigger issues. Let's do a little changeover with uh, Sterling Bennett, Evan Giddings. They're going to be on here from three o'clock uh, right up until five. We're carrying Sunday Night Football tonight. Cowboys Eagles right here on ninety five seven. The game. What's up, boys? What's going on? I know it's uh, it feels a little post mortem in here, but it was tough. It's, it matches the weather. The vibes were the vibes were down today. Well, everything was exciting in the Bay Area yesterday. Today, not so much. Although, hey, if there's one positive, it did sound like a Four Danners home game in Atlanta, right? Yeah, it did. But you know what? But it Shout always out to does, the faithful. right? <laughs> the faithful they travel well. I, I I love it, but I'm not really impressed by it anymore. I I expect it. I expect it now. Well, mm. the story the story the story is always like, look how well they traveled. Like. Cool. Can you win? Yeah. Yeah. Still lost. Yeah. Right. Right. I don't know. Right. right. Felt yeah. like a home game. All right. Cool. You lost a home game, man. That's the case. <laughs> exactly. Like, who, you're three and three. Who cares? Can you use injuries as an excuse? No. Some people will. Uh, we we won't, but some people I'm sure will. I mean, look, it, it's it's a natural part of football, both the injuries and then the excuses built in because of injuries. And look, you, you listed it off earlier in the week, Kyle, the amount of starting players from, if you just look at week one, Mm -hmm. that they're missing currently now in week six. That's definitely a big part of the game, but that's also not an excuse for losing to an inferior team. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess some excuses, right, I've always said some excuses are real, right? I mean, I mean, it doesn't make it any better, and you still have to go out and and do what you got to do, but it's not as if, uh, not all excuses are bad excuses. This is legit. It's legit. You got to find a way to overcome. I, I get it, but I also think the Falcons are a little bit better than people thought, myself included. I agree with that. You know, they're actually not that bad of a team. No, their defense is kind of nice. They're young. They're scrappy. I I do like what Atlanta has going on there. Yeah, I don't. I think they're. I think they're like the middle of the road team. Yeah, I think they are like the lead. Like they are. They'll be nine and eight or eight and nine. Yes. Yes. I think that's probably about right. But. I'm just. I don't know what the Niners do differently next week. Well, if they're like nine, that's, if they're eight or nine or nine and eight, where is San Francisco then? Because they just lost to that. Yeah, team. they're about the same. Okay, so, at least right, right. No, but that's it. So that's that's what. So when you talk about injuries, I can use an excuse, like, n- no, no, not in a game to game basis. But the ceiling for the 49ers is lower now right. than it was three, four, five weeks ago. Right. right? And that's that's kind of the the where I pull injuries into this conversation. Like, could they have still beat Atlanta for sure? But I also don't think Atlanta has as much success as they did on the ground if Nick Bosa, Eric Armstead, and Javon Kinlaw are playing. Definitely. But on the other hand, Fred Warner was terrible. He was really bad today. And so that's where you need Fred Warner to be better against Kansas City. You need Diamador Lenore to step up. You need Talano Hufanga to keep making plays. You need Tayshawn Gibson to make a play. Like it fall, the onus then falls to the other guys, and the other guys just didn't make enough plays today. I think one thing when you talk about who this team is going to be, ultimately the injuries are the injuries. We get all that. The bottom line is today they were not good enough to overcome the injuries. At at some point, or will there be a point? where they are because everyone is someone's going to be injured at any point in time Mm. it's really bad today so they couldn't overcome it today maybe the lip like we said the limit does not exist the limit does and it got met today Mm -hmm. are they a team that can overcome these types of things because like we keep hearing it's football there's going to be injuries that's the question because they're not going no one is ever going to be a hundred percent but are you good enough to overcome it depending on i guess who's missing and, and, and is it based on who's missing? I think it's more annoying that a team that was healthier than this lost to Denver a few weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. And they're banged up sure. now, and it doesn't look like they're getting any healthier. They might get Trent Williams back. They might get Ward back in the secondary, but mm-hmm. you're playing Mahomes next week. Yeah. The Rams off a of bye, and at that point, you could be 3-5 and five in the exact place you were last year. Yeah. And that was a hole to get out of. And it was hard. It took you to the last game, the last quarter of the season, in overtime, mm-hmm. to make the playoffs... And you could be in the exact same spot again with the arguably better team. I don't like that. With a harder schedule this year. Right. And that's where it's like, 
the volume of injuries is is one thing, but if if you told me that Nick Bosa comes back next week and he's going to be healthy, and Trent Williams comes back next week and he's going to be healthy, and they're just going to have those guys, I suddenly feel better. And then you sprinkle in a Elijah Mitchell and an Aziz Alshire. That's where you, it, it's it's the two it's the key guys like a Trent Williams, like a Nick Bosa, game changing guys that you just don't replace them. You're not like, yeah, hey Charles Menehu, go be Nick Bosa. Like a who's been a nice player for them, but he's not going to be Nick Bosa. He's and, not. He's not going to be Charles Menehu that we've seen the last couple of weeks without Nick Bosa. Yes, like that's why that's he fair. is as effective as he is. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and in the run game too, I think that's where Nick Bosa was missed maybe even more than the pass rush. Like they got to to Mariota. Like they had a, they had a few sacks today. Yeah. They got to him, but they could not contain the dual running backs along with the quarterback. It just seemed like Atlanta pretty much pulled a card out of a deck and said, all right, this is the guy that's going to run the ball, and they're going to get at least five yards, and then we're just going to keep moving the ball. And then every once in a while, Mariota's going to pull it, and big game. They were just eating little by little, just taking a little, you know, we're going to take it out on the Niners. I want them, all right, we just beat the Bills. The Niners lost to the sorry Falcons. Let's let's coast a little bit. That's what I'm hoping for at this point. Well, then shouldn't the Niners also be equally as hungry? And they, they just lost to a team they probably should have beat. Well, yeah, the Niners need to be starving. They need to be starving. Yeah, so I, I mean, I, look, wh- whether they lose or not, I don't know if I could root for the Chiefs coming in with a uh, potentially 5-1 and one record to Levi's, but... I'm just, fair. I'm just saying. I don't feel great about next week, boys. I'm going to say it. Looks like an L. <laughs> <laughs> it, see, but that this is also the Niners, though. Right. Like, yeah. the they Niners could easily, easily win. win next week, and we- everything is all if they good. Get, if, they, if they are a little bit healthier, like Maybe I said, if you give me bit. Bosa and Trent Williams healthy... It's a big difference. I feel... I feel much, much different. But if they're rolling out this same team, I don't know, based on what we saw today, how you feel great about them beating him. That game is 42 to 20. Maybe. Yeah. Like, it could be rough. What rough. is the biggest flaw in the KC defense? Great question. They can't They can't stop the run. They, they, they can't. The Niners couldn't run today, though. Yeah, Atlanta couldn't stop the run either. I feel like I feel like teams can stop the run when they know that's the main thing they need to stop, and that's the problem with the Niners, just like the Falcons did today. You also can't run the ball when you're down 14. That's like, another good point. That's yeah, they, were the they, they were doing it in the fourth quarter when it mattered. Yes, Twice. they were. Twice. Yeah, they, they that really, was wild, dude. Draw, well, play, draw like, play on second and one? Gosh. Come on. That was the best uh, first quarter drive in a fourth quarter <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. They did a pitch play on third taking, and two to Tevin Coleman. Taking seven minutes. Taking seven minutes to get to the red zone. It when you're down it took to five minutes to get to the fifty. <laughs> that, that's what we were talking about. That there was there was like three or four minutes into the drive, and we look up, and they're taking a snap from their own twenty. Yeah, they, they're like, on pace to world? get down to the two yard line with the clock expiring. Looking up, saying, "Wow, we really we milked the clock in the yeah. fourth quarter." Blood yeah. the hell Dominated out of the clock. T.O.P. All right, uh, Sterling Bennett, Evan Giddings they are coming up next. They're taking you up to Sunday Night Football uh, for Allen Cam. I'm Kyle Madsen. This has been overtime. We will see you guys next time. Bye. Did you know that most people wait six or seven years before they buy a new TV? That's a lot of time in front of one TV. So why not get one of the best sets for the next seven years? Like one of the top-rated Samsung, LG, or Sony models. Too expensive? What if you could get up to $1,000 trade-in for your old set? Who would do a stupid deal like this? Right now, at video only, you can get big bucks for your old set as a trade-in and a hot price on the new models. Don't be sorry. Check out video only. Gorgeous gaming, stunning streams, unbelievable bandwidth. It's another Lifestyles of Gagillionaires. Meet the AT&T Fiber customers winning at life with hyper gig speeds. Meet Gagillionaire Terry. While his love of streaming horror movies has him constantly on the edge of his seat, his internet bill won't give him a scare. Oh, don't go in there. I'm telling you. Because since Terry upgraded to AT&T Fiber with hyper gig speeds, he doesn't worry about data caps or equipment fees. Come on, man. The door's open for a reason. And best yet, he also doesn't stress about a price increase at 12 months. Because with the amazing Gagillionaire lifestyle comes an exquisite sense of tranquility. <laughs> Most of the time. Live like a Gagillionaire. Get straightforward pricing with AT&T Fiber. Internet that upgrades everything. No data caps, no equipment fees, and no price increase in 12 months. Limited availability in select areas. Visit att.com slash hypergig for details. Alice at 97.3 is celebrating the return of Alice in Winterland. Yeah! Friday, December 2nd at the SAP Center in San Jose. Starring Sean Mayer. 
One Republic. See you at Allison Winterland. Matt Nathanson. Plus more to be added. Tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster. Get everything Alice in Winterland at RadioAlice.com. Attention, guys. By now, you should know that when it comes to male enhancement pills, most of these contain the same ingredients that are repackaged over and over again. Why take the same old, same old when you can perform in the bedroom with confidence at the highest level? That's why Noxatril needs to be on your bedstand. If you thought that the little blue pill works well, wait till you try Noxatril. It's like Viagra on steroids. Thousands of men each week have switched from that prescription blue pill to Noxatril. That's because Noxatril is automatic. No need to worry anymore. When it's time to perform, we've got this explosive results you can count on with no side effects no stuffy nose we want every man to try noxatril so call now and take advantage of our special free bottle offer today oh and as a reminder please use the noxatril dose as directed it's that strong call right now and get your free supply call 800-486-1608 that's 800-486-1608 it's like viagra on steroids improve your sex life with your free supply call 800-486-1608 that's 1-800-486-1608 is there something really absurd that skeeves you out? Getting a paper cut on my eyeball? A fear you can't shake? I'm going to leak ocular fluid down my cheeks. It's going to go into my mouth and I will perish. Whatever scares you, I want to talk about it. Join me, Larry Mullins, on my new podcast, Your Weirdest Fears. Listen and subscribe to Your Weirdest Fears on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcast from. Chest up, engage your core. Dig at deep. Misty's gym, boot camp gets pretty close to the real thing. She wants to spot a personal trainer with a military background. I can cover this week's boot camp, but we need someone staff. Is it your cousin or Marie? Indeed can help her hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. We instantly connect you with quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed match your job description. Visit Indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. When I can't sleep, my mind just races. I think about work, the kids, but I don't think about taking melatonin because I'm afraid I'll feel groggy in the morning. z Pure Z's Gummies has an optimal dose of melatonin for no next day grogginess, so you can fall asleep naturally and wake up feeling refreshed. (sighs) z Pure Z's Gummies, for better sleep like never before. And try Pure Z Sleep plus Next Day Energy with melatonin plus extended release B vitamins. What's your retirement look like? With Fidelity Income Planning, a dedicated advisor can help you create a flexible income strategy to grow and protect your wealth so you can stop worrying about the future and enjoy whatever comes next. Investment minimums apply. Fidelity Brokerage Services member NYSE SIPC. 95.7 The Game has your tickets to see The Who October 24th at the SAP Center. For your shot to win, head to our contest page at 957thegame.com. This view was worth a hike. Right? And it's a good way to stay on top of my health. Yes, I'm Cologuard, a prescription colon cancer screening option for people 45 plus at average risk. Have you screened for colon cancer? Not yet. Don't wait. It's more treatable when caught in early stages. Tell me more. Cologuard is non-invasive and it's used at home. It detects altered DNA in your stool to find 92% of colon cancers. 92%? Yep, even those in early stages. This was seen in a clinical study with patients 50 and older. Any positive results should be followed by a diagnostic colonoscopy. False positive and negative results may occur. Cologuard is not a replacement for colonoscopy in high-risk patients. Do not use if you have had adenomas, have inflammatory bowel disease and certain hereditary syndromes, or a personal or family history of colon cancer. Most insured patients pay zero dollars. Ask your provider or an online prescriber if Cologuard is right for you. Or visit Cologuard.com. I'm in. You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMC FM and HD1 San Francisco. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Live from downtown San Francisco. This is 95.7 The Game. Down. Touchdown! Welcome back, Kyle Pitts! <laughs> well, the play we were trying to come out with was Kyle Pitts, Marcus Mariota, touchdown, touchdown, 
on Samuel Womack III. The 49ers lose today to the Atlanta Falcons 28-14. Sterling Bennett, Evan Giddings with you, taking you up until 5-15. And we'll turn things over to the Sunday night football game. Big exciting game coming up. More exciting than the 49ers-Falcons game, quite honestly. Sterling, what was Samuel Womack doing guarding Kyle Pitts in the red zone? Well, nothing, because he wasn't guarding him at all. It was a touchdown. But my question is, why is a 5'10 corner guarding a 6'6 tight end in the red zone when you know, that was that, 7, 8 inches height advantage? Like, wh- what are we doing? Demeco Ryans, Kyle Shanahan, you got to set your guys up for success. That was the last thing that happened, at least early in that game in the first half. And, Evan, I will let you know, watching this game, I sat there and said, we're down 14 nothing. We eventually come back, being the Niners. We have a chance, right? N- no. <laughs> and it felt like every single play Atlanta run, or ran, excuse me, it was just a slow death for San Francisco today. Oh, they ran the hell out of the ball, that's for sure. 40 attempts, 168 yards on the 49ers defense. The number one overall defense in the NFL. Not today. Not today. I, I still believe that statement stands as number one. But boy, Atlanta made you think twice. They made San Fran... And look, people want to say, well, they were injured and they were hurt. You still have... like People just clap and cheer and applaud at how good the depth is. Well, what do you have depth for? Yeah. To step up when your big boys like Nick Bosa and Armstead and Jimmy Ward and Mosley can't play. You want that depth to step up. What did they not do today? Step up. This is a game they should have won in every facet. Offense, passing it, running it, defense, pass defense, run defense. They didn't do anything well until that second half, and by that time it was far too late. Yeah, look, I mean, the Falcons offense out Shanahan, Shanahan today. Like Marcus Mariota was 13-14, of very efficient, couple of touchdowns, nothing special, but the 40 carries, Caleb Huntley, 16-59, for Tyler Algier, 15 for 51. Mariota, 6 for 50. Like, they just picked apart the Niners piece by piece defensively, and they made plays on third down. They made plays in the red zone. And as much as injuries is certainly a storyline in this game, the four guys that you mentioned, Bosa, Armstead, I mean, Kinlock and certainly thrown there as well, going to IR. Mosley is out. Jimmy Ward. And then you midway through the second quarter, you lose Mooney, don't call me Charvarius Ward. You also, on the offensive side, lose Mike McGlinchey. There are losses sustained before this game, during this game. But I don't know if that can be an excuse when you have the, the, the so-called depth, Sterling. When you have the means to be able to overcome an Atlanta Falcons team and... Look, your defense I mean, technically only gave up 21 points today, but the offense could not pull its weight when the defense, for really the first time this season, looked like it wasn't its number one self. My biggest issue with this game wasn't even exactly the defense. Because yes, they gave up two touchdowns in this game, technically three, one being in the second half. But they were really good in that second half. And I mean, they looked like the number one defense despite having the depth. The issue was the first half. The Falcons came out on the first drive of the game. 11 plays, about 8 minutes, got a touchdown, and put the first touchdown this defense has allowed on the first drive in the first half all season. An offense led by Marcus Mariota that didn't have their number one running back, Coro Patterson, a returning Kyle Pitts, and really an offense that doesn't do much. They won a game against the Browns. Mariota had nine completions. It wasn't like he was or had been this all-pro quarterback. He came in and he dinked and dunked you. Got you on third down. Everything that San Francisco had been dominant, quote-unquote dominant at, was erased in that first half. And again, by that time, when it was 14-14, 21-14, it felt like there wasn't much time because the offense wasn't picking up their end of the bargain. And I thought Jimmy was really good today. Too many drop passes, some penalties in key, in key parts of the game. It just felt like every chance San Francisco had, they bit themselves in the leg. And it was holding themselves back the entirety of the game. And we'll certainly dive into it. 888-957-9570. That's also the number for the Xfinity mobile text line. Evan Giddings and Sterling Bennett with you up until Sunday Night Football at 515. What did you make of the game? 
Did you feel like injuries were the main piece? Did you feel like the 49ers should have been able to overcome that? What did you think of the defense? What did you think of the offense? I felt like Sterling, both sides of the football, could not play cohesively. And I feel like that's kind of what you're pointing to, especially first half to second half. Look, the defense got stops in the second half. But that also happened to be when your offense sputtered. The offense got you back in the ball game, tied us up at 14, midway through the second quarter. And then a late drive at the tail end of the first half, talking about not being able to, you know, to close in some sense. That's to me where the game flipped. It's also ironically where some of those injuries mid game came in and I think came into play, being McGlinchey along with Ward. They go down in the second quarter. I know McGlinchey tried to get back out there, was eventually ruled out in the second half. But the Falcons go on their opening drive. I mean, they take it down 11 plays, 74 yards. And right before the half, another 11 play, 75 yard drive. Both of those drives in the first half, they produce touchdowns, six plus minutes. That's generally what we see the 49ers do. But today, it was the Falcons. And so to me, it just came down to not everyone being on the same page. And that's why I will agree with Shanahan, who we'll hear from later on in the show. To him, it, it seemed very simple. Look, Things were not complicated today. It was, quote-unquote, real obvious what went wrong. They didn't execute on third down. The Falcons did. They didn't run the ball well. The Falcons did. They weren't able to stop the Falcons in the red zone. The Falcons converted. And that combined with the pieces missing on defense, there just wasn't enough on the San Francisco side today for them to overcome all of that. If I would have told you that San Francisco would have had more total yards in this game, More first downs. Okay, they probably won this game handily. But no, no, the Falcons just played keep away. It was, we're going to hold the ball the majority of the game, not let your offense that has been rolling against the Rams and against the Panthers, we're not going to let Debo Samuel and George Kittle and Brandon Ayuk beat us, albeit Ayuk had two touchdowns. We're not going to let your home run hitters touch the football. Made us two or three yards on the ground every single play, get a third down conversion, and look, People want to point to the injuries. San Francisco came into this game against the Falcons with the lowest bus grade. That is, essentially, if you have a higher bus grade, you have better health, better injury, I guess, success, you could say. They had the worst in the league, and you added about nine more names to that now. But that being said, you are still a better team than the Falcons despite the injuries. You want to say no Nick Bosa, no Trent Williams, I get that. You're on your third left tackle. I understand that. But despite all that... There's no excuse as to why you lost today. This was a game you needed to win. Context matters. If you win today, you are at least still in first place in the NFC West. Now you might be tied. You might be tied going into playing the Chiefs. You'd be 4-2 and two going into Week 9, Week 8 against the Chiefs. Feeling pretty good about yourself, right? Well, now you're 3-3. Three and three. You might lose next week against a really good opponent, and you're playing the Rams off a of bye week. You could be 3-5 and five once again. That is the exact opposite place you should be and want to be. Oh, and, and those implications we kind of reference. We'll dive deeper into as this as the show progresses, but we referenced a little bit in the changeover with, with Kyle Madsen and Alan Stiles doing a fantastic job on overtime. The fact that you could be staring 3-5 and five in the face. That's why I felt coming into this game, it was a big game for the 49ers. It was also a big test with some questions that, to me, they left unanswered, which was... How are you going to play against a quarterback that can run the option? That's something you'll probably have to face down the line against better teams that can do that. Also, how are you going to play from behind? Especially immediately. I know that they trailed by double digits against Chicago. That I throw that game out because of the conditions, because it was Trey Lance for start of the year. Many different reasons. This was the first game to me where, look, you shot yourselves in the foot, obviously, with a fumble that turned into a touchdown. You go down 14 nothing early. But what do you have to respond with? And unfortunately... Nothing. 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 Like nothing they, whatsoever. They had no answers. And, and maybe that's... I think we're kind of dancing around the point. That's what's so frustrating is that... You knew what Atlanta wanted to do. Right, and you couldn't stop it. It didn't matter. Nothing. And right. they knew what you wanted to do. And they the stopped Niners it. Did. And they stopped it. <laughs> That's really what it came down to. The Falcons want to run the football. They did so ad nauseum. 5.2 yards per play on the ground today. They were about four yards per carry. But again, second and short, third and short, 
advantageous positions offensively for Atlanta. And whether it was because of, of Mariota's efficiency or whether the, the different looks in the backfield, you know, gave some of the some of the backups on defense a little bit of trouble for the 49ers, there was always seemingly a split second on defense where the 49ers, Fred Warner all the way down, were were caught on their heels. And that from the Atlanta side was then used to churn out four yards of play the entire game. Well, you mentioned a quarterback that can run the read option. San Francisco, even with Robert Sala, has struggled against that. Kyler Murray in 2019 a few times. The Rams tried the bootleg with Goff. While San Francisco had more success against that, they have not been good against mobile quarterbacks while Shanahan and Sala and Ryans have been here. Last year against Jalen Hurts and the Eagles, they were not that good, almost lost that game too. And you're telling me they have Mahomes next week? They're going to have Kyler Murray twice later in the year. Like, this is something that if you're Kyle Shanahan and Demeco Ryans, you have to adjust now. Because if you don't do it now, teams are going to say, hey, what did the Falcons do in week six? Oh, read option, had the linebackers frozen in the second layer of the defense, didn't know what to do, and Kyle Pitts is wide open. Well, hey, guess what? Zach Ertz for the Cardinals? Bing. Right to him. Mahomes to Kelsey, bing, right to him. And guess what? Then you're burnt for 30, 40, 50 yards and three touchdowns later. You're down again, and you just got shown today your team cannot fight back against a really bad team in Atlanta. No, and, and this is this is where I do think the defense gives people pause for the first time this year. Right. The fact that they were missing pieces, but they also were not able to overcome those, those like the lack thereof on the defensive side of the football against an Atlanta team that is is pretty limited offensively. I know that Kyle Pitts was able to take advantage of Womack in the red zone. Drake London is is a great post up option for Mariota, who is efficient spreading the ball around to everyone. Zacchaeus had a big catch in the in the first half. Like they do have bodies and they do have pieces in place that allowed them to implement their offense, but they are by no means a prolific team that's going to run up the scoreboard. I mean, they scored 21 points offensively today, and their goal was to beat the 49ers seemingly, to me, at their own game, and they were able to execute that, which which makes it so frustrating. If I asked you the question, how many completions do you think Marcus Mariota's had in Atlanta's wins this year? What do you think it is? On average? Yeah. In their wins? Yes. Uh, 15. 17 against, or 7 against the Browns, 13 against the Seahawks, and today... 13 against the Niners. San Francisco knew he was not going to be a threat pushing the ball down the field. It's a bunch of dink and dunks, screens, quick passes on third down to Kyle Pitts and Drake London. And can you you explain to me why? Drake London's 6'4". He is. Kyle Pitts is 6'6". So they say. You got a bunch of tiny corners on him. And I get you can only use what you got. But by all means... You know who they're going to want to target in the passing game. If you can't stop them in the passing game, that's fine. Stack the box. Make sure they can't continue to gash you on the ground. How It felt like every single running play, there was he was hit two yards behind the line of scrimmage and drug a guy five yards past it. The, the yards after uh, being hit must have been in the sevens. Because every single play, it felt like Warner and Greenlaw and Amenahieu, didn't matter who it was, they were being dragged for first downs every single attempt. And, and, and maybe that's the part that is is also frustrating, the fact that players that were not hurt, players that are starters, Fred Warner, Drake Greenlaw, they've been fantastic this entire season. The linebacking core has been fantastic. I know the DBs took some hits, obviously, with the Mos- Mosley going out last week. Ward leaving prematurely this week. You're, you're left with Womack, Lenore... Henry Thomas, something like obviously those aren't guys you would want to play the majority of snaps in a game you're trying to win. But the amount of and, and maybe they just stood out because I haven't seen them so far this year. Right. But the amount of missed tackles today. Bad. The amount of times that, like you said, a Falcons running back steamrolls into a linebacker, into a lineman, and falls forward for two yards. They there was none of that each of the past five weeks for this defense. And for whatever reason, Today, the script was flipped because Atlanta was far more physical than the team that I believed before today to be the most physical team in football. Your motto on defense cannot be swarm week by week, and you just not swarm on one day. And I want to ask you this because, look, 
We know why Bosa didn't play the groin injury. Don't want to risk further injuring him and having him be out for five more weeks. Verrett didn't play off IR, ACL. The turf, again, is a bigger question. Maybe it's a looming thing. But it felt, at least to me, that San Francisco came in with the mindset of, we can still beat Atlanta without those guys. And, yeah. well, you got punched in the mouth today. You got humbled. And to me, while I'm not saying they were complacent, I do think San Francisco saw the Rams game and said, wow, we beat the Rams. We just destroyed Carolina. We can beat the Falcons. And it's like, okay, but a hungry team that in, in the Falcons should have beat the Rams, or almost did at least, should have beat the Bucks last week. They knew they were wronged. And they came in with a point to prove, and San Francisco folded like a white piece of paper. No, th- there was a sense in the air early of San Francisco might be overlooking this team especially in the first half, and then blink. You look up, you're down 14. And maybe what we learned offensively is like th- there's going to be a tipping point of what they can and cannot overcome, even against a team like Atlanta. You know, we kind of tossed around the fact like they're, they're about a 500 team. I hate the fact that you can't literally be a 500 team in the NFL anymore, but you're going to be 9-8 and eight or you're going to be 8-9. and nine. That's about where we, you know, we put the Falcons. They're better than you think, but they're not that good. I don't think they're even that good. They're, to me, the Falcons, while having a good young defense that can keep them in games, their offense is not explosive. We saw that they had, to me, one big play today. It was the first drive on third down. I think his name is Zacchaeus. Caught a big yeah. slant round over the middle. Gibson missed the coverage, and it was like, okay, like we'll give it to you. We'll bounce back. They were not explosive. It was just grind after grind. Three yards, two yards, five yards. They were not being explosive offensively. And I don't think if you want to win in this league, you can do that. Now, San Francisco, on the other hand, they had some big plays that just didn't count. Brendel's holding call, quote-unquote holding call, got the Ayuk play call back. Warren McLeod, got to get some stick on their gloves because, by God, you got to catch the ball there, my friends. And it just seems like San Francisco, even when they had a chance, when Garoppolo was putting balls right in the breadbasket, guys who you really wouldn't rely on, like McLeod, to me, that should be Danny Gray or yeah. Warner. That should be Tyler Croft. They couldn't come through. And to me, when you're playing a bad team like Atlanta, you need those guys, the fringe guys, to come through, and they couldn't do it. Yeah, on a day when you're not at your best, you do need guys to step up. That didn't happen. That's probably a good segue here for our first call of the post-post show, post-overtime, whatever we're going with this, post-mortem, basically, for the 49ers and the Falcons here on 95.7 The Game, 888-957-9570. Let's go out to San Jose and talk to Joe, because similar to your point, Sterling, I think Joe might be a little dissatisfied with what happened offensively today for the 49ers. What's up, Joe? You're on with Evan and Sterling on 95.7 The Game. Uh, thank you guys. Thanks for taking the guy. Thank you guys. Hit it right on the money. Uh, it just, they did, um, um, the big plays didn't come through for the Niners and number 65, the center, he made some three critical penalties that, you know, cost the Niners the momentum to, to, to shift the game and the Niners were on the run. But, um, it was a good game. The Atlanta's a good team. They, they're not as bad as I thought they were. Uh, they played a really good game, and the Niners' error for mistakes was, was pretty much uh, low. But uh, the, the offense, uh, Jimmy G played a good game. It's just they missed some very critical passes down the stretch that could have given them momentum and could have switched the game. But overall, it was a good game, but uh, the offense didn't come through. Thanks for taking my call. Appreciate it, Joe. Great call. I think he hit the nail on the head. You know, the offense was was fine today. I thought, thought it was Jimmy good. He definitely certainly he definitely was not Jimmy bad. I thought he was Jimmy good. Um, you know, it, you know, and looking at, you know, the Falcons, I, I think just defensively, like to me, they had 14 third downs. They converted nine of them. But they had eight possessions. That means there is roughly multiple chances in each possession for you to get a stop on third down. And the 49ers just couldn't do it. Those are the plays where it felt like the guys were being dragged three or four or five yards. They would stop them, but like, look, the Falcons do not have the personnel to keep up with San Francisco. And to me, that's that might be my biggest concern is San Francisco is currently playing down to opponents. They lost to the Bears, missed opportunities. The Bears do not have the personnel to keep up with San Francisco. The Broncos, Russ can't cook no more. They don't have the personnel to keep up with San Francisco. The Falcons, 
are not a good team. They do not have the personnel to keep up with San Francisco. And San Francisco, despite beating Carolina and beating the Rams and beating Seattle, they're playing down to bad opponents. And if you want to be called one of the good teams, but one of the top teams in the NFC, a wild card team maybe, you have to stop playing down. Because the issue is, you start playing down, then you get caught up and you can't play up anymore. And that's my concern. I do want to give Atlanta some credit because at the end of the day... They won. They also have the same record as the 49ers. Yeah. Both teams are 3-3. Three and three. But I, I do think a lot of people feel the way you do in the sense that Atlanta was perceived as another Carolina. Right. That's not the case. True. But they are closer to being Carolina, obviously, than Kansas City, who the 49ers are going to see next week. Exactly. And you can't go play down to a team, quote-unquote, like Carolina when you have KC looming, the Rams looming. You had to play the Cardinals twice. You have the Raiders later on in the year, and I get it's week six. You had the same record as the Packers, right? That's you had Aaron Rodgers, and you are the same team. But guess what? The Packers stink. They stink. Right now. I mean, they're going to stink all year probably, unless you're getting <laughs> OBJ and whoever. But look, San Francisco was 1-3 on the road this year. 1-3. and three. Yeah. You got to go to SoFi in two weeks. Should like, be, it should be another home game. I mean, you like to think, but today was a home game too, pretty much. It, it was, was. It was the wideout in Atlanta. And Kyle Shanahan and Demeca Ryans and the Niners couldn't get it done. You are essentially one and three on the road, and you might as well be one and three at home. Well, and, and that's that's the thing. It's like th- this was the first game I felt like the defense the defense was exposed, and you couldn't say that the previous four weeks. Whether you want to peg, you know, this game is their best performance. This game is not. Like they they were on pace for about is like seventy two sacks this year. They still had some sacks today, but what they couldn't do was stop the run, and they could not keep Atlanta from dictating the tempo of the game it looked it to me honestly if i was not a 49ers fan and i'm looking at the 49ers and the way that they've played the past couple of weeks this is what san francisco does to other teams they do muck it up they do drag you down or up to their level they do out physical you at the line of scrimmage and today atlanta did all of that against a team that has been purported so far for the first five weeks to be the best in that fashion that's to me what is it was a little frustrating for a lot of people. All right. You want to let us know how the game went for you, what you saw from the 49ers today, what you think could continue, what hopefully will they be able to uh, be able to correct down the future. Obviously, they got a big game coming up against Kansas City next week, but I want to hear about today. I want to hear about what you thought went wrong against the Falcons, what you thought about that last drive in the fourth quarter of them milking eight minutes off the clock and getting nothing. I want to hear about what you thought about the defense in the first half. I want to hear about what you think about how the injuries could impact this team moving forward. All of that and more on the other side. You're listening to 95-7 The Game. Evan Giddings and Sterling right back after this. So... How's your research going? Surprising. After I figured out the top-rated TVs in our price range, I went shopping for deals. And who's the best? It wasn't the internet, and it wasn't the warehouse club. But? It was video only. They had better deals on the Samsung, LG, and the Sony TVs that got the highest scores. Better than online and at the club? I know. Video only beat them all. And now we can afford an even better model for the same price. My research really paid off. If we buy it video only. Exactly. Otherwise, we'll be sorry. At Video Only, you won't find huge stores with refrigerators or dishwashers, but you will find the best deals on the best TVs, sound bars, and home theater systems. Shop around, but then make sure you visit Video Only, because if you don't, you'll be sorry. In Mountain View, San Mateo, Dublin, and San Rafael, Video Only. California, you deserve more. And with United Healthcare, you'll get more. Annual enrollment is October 15th through December 7th. So call United Healthcare today. With the United Healthcare Medicare Advantage Plan, you get more from your Medicare dollar, now including better than ever dental, vision, over the counter, and prescription drug coverage. Call United Healthcare at 1 888 Call UHC today and speak with a licensed sales agent. Benefits, features, and/or devices vary by plan and area. Limitations and exclusions apply. 
Oh, 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 O'Reilly! It's Super Start Battery Month at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Get up to a $25 gift card after a mail-in rebate with the purchase of select Super Start batteries. For power, performance, and reliability, choose Super Start batteries. We also have battery solutions for many hybrid and electric vehicles. Stop by your local O'Reilly Auto Parts today. Oh, 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 O'Reilly! Auto Parts. Everything, our farm, our stand, our pop-up shop, it really all started when we discovered the benefits of local, raw honey for our family. And then we decided to turn it into a business. We were looking for something to help us get up and running. So we got the Chase Business Complete Banking Account. It's more than a bank account. It comes with Quick Accept, which lets us take card payments anytime, anywhere in the U.S. using the Chase mobile app. Plus, we get same-day deposits at no extra cost. For us, it's more than honey. It's about sharing a little sweetness with the world. Get the Chase Business Complete Banking Account with the essentials you need to help get your business going. Learn more at chase.com backslash business dash complete dash banking. Chase for business. Make more of what's yours. Quick Accept is not available in U.S. territories. Enrollment required. Usage subject to approval. Same day deposits available for payments before 8 p.m. Eastern Time, Sunday to Friday. Fees and rates apply for checking and processing. Limitations and restrictions apply. Participants compensated. Merchant services provided by Payment Tech LLC and WePay Inc. Subsidiaries of J.P. Morgan Chase Bank and a member FDIC. Do you have have three ex-wives and your current trophy wife wants a life insurance policy three times the size of the policies you had to purchase for your previous mistakes? If so, you need to call Big Lou at Term Provider, 800-200-1966. Big Lou is intimately familiar with your problems, and if you're 50 or 60 years old and in reasonably good health, a $1 million policy should only cost about $100 to $200 per month. Big Lou may have a solution for your previous policies as well. You may even save enough money to lighten the load on your new $1 million policy. Remember, call Big Lou. He's like you, except he's only on number two. Call Term Provider at 800-200-1966. That's 800-200-1966. For a million dollars in term life insurance that you can live with, call Big Lou at 800-200-1966. 800-200-1966. Hey, guys. This is Kenan Thompson. I have a problem with you. Yes, you. None of y'all told me that Auto Trader has millions of new and used cars that I can shop from home. I thought we were friends. I put smiles on your face, but I'm not smiling. No one told me that with Auto Trader, a dealer can deliver cars to my home or that I could shop by price on Auto Trader. No one. Consider this friendship that you just learned we had officially over. Finally, it's easy. Auto Trader. Let me guess. Unknown caller. You could reduce the number of unwanted calls and emails with online privacy protection. The latest innovation from Discover will help regularly remove your personal info, like your name and address, from 10 popular people search websites that could sell your data. And we'll do it for free. Activate in the Discover app. See terms and learn more at discover.com slash online privacy protection. Gorgeous gaming, stunning streams, unbelievable bandwidth. It's another Lifestyles of Gagillionaires. Meet the AT&T Fiber customers winning at life with hyper gig speeds. Meet Gagillionaire Terry. While his love of streaming horror movies has him constantly on the edge of his seat, his internet bill won't give him a scare. Oh, don't go in there. I'm telling you. Because since Terry upgraded to AT&T Fiber with hyper gig speeds, he doesn't worry about data caps or equipment fees. Come on, man. The door's open for a reason. And best yet, he also doesn't stress about a price increase at 12 months because with the amazing Gagillionaire lifestyle comes an exquisite sense of tranquility. <coughs> Most of the time. Live like a Gagillionaire. Get straightforward pricing with AT&T Fiber. Internet that upgrades everything. No data caps, no equipment fees, and no price increase in 12 months. Limited availability in select areas. Visit att.com slash hypergig for details. Now back to 95.7 The Game. Ninety-five-seven, The Game. Sterling Bennett and Evan Giddings with you until 5.15. 
Well, a lot did not go right for the 49ers today. Cam, if you could please give me the play that has pretty much encapsulated how a lot of fans feel about today. It's a bit of a great, but oh. Garoppolo on play action. Wants to take the shot down the middle of the field. Looking for McLeod, and he dropped it. He had a little separation, and it's third and ten. And that was... Really, out of the first drive of the second half, Jimmy Garoppolo delivered a dime to Charlie Warner up the middle. And, or pardon me, that was on the um, on the second drive of the second half. There was one to Raven McLeod in the first that he dropped as well. And look, it was a lot offensively of the 49ers were all right, but they weren't good enough to overcome what the defense didn't have on the other side of the football. They didn't play complimentary. First half, offense was good. Defense was bad. Second half, offense wasn't great. Defense was. They couldn't put it together, and they fall 28-14. to 14. Yeah, look, it in that second half to begin for San Francisco, you're thinking, okay, this is your chance to get back in the game. You're down 21-14. You have the ball to begin, and what do you do? McLeod drops a pass, three and out. The next drive, okay, your defense comes up big. Cool, great. What happens? Jimmy throws two dimes on two straight drives, both dropped. The big complaint all year of, over Garoppolo's career has been, Garoppolo can't throw it deep. Well, guess what? He did it twice today, and the boys didn't come down with it. And, and look, you want to talk about how the defense was bad in the first half and the offense was good and vice versa in the second half. San Francisco's offense this season has been atrocious in the second half. This year alone... San Francisco scored 36 total offensive points in the second half. They're averaging six points a game in the second half. They scored zero today. Zero. Well, and really self-inflicted wounds like we heard on that call. By the way, Noah Eagle, Mark Schlereth, Fox Sports. Uh, Self-inflicted wounds were the theme of the day, and Jimmy Garoppolo talked about that after the game. Self-inflicted wounds was a big, that was the story of the day. And, you know, those are correctable, but it's just, you, you can't have them. You can't have as many as we had out there. And when you do have them, you got to overcome it. And, you know, we didn't do that today. So it starts with me, though, and we just got to be better. See, it's interesting you said that because today I actually don't think it started with him. Not even close. Now, now usually it does. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes it can start with Jimmy Garoppolo. But today, despite the two interceptions, one was at the end of the first half, a meaningless pick. It doesn't count. Not going to throw that against him, although he did have... You know, an oh-no throw in the second half that maybe should have been picked regardless. Overall in the game, 29-41, 296 yards, two touchdowns, two picks. But Kyle Shanahan, I think he was spot on in saying in the first half, like Jimmy Garoppolo was on fire. He was 12-15 of for buck 20 and two scores outside of the interception, of course. This is the second game in a row where Jimmy was really, really good on his game. And you know it, I know it. You cannot waste these performances from him because they're not always going to be there. And I get it. He had maybe one, two Jimmy O'No throws. A fumble got called back late or in the second half. But if you're the defense, if you're Charlie Warner and McLeod and Debo and Ayuk and Kittle, who, albeit individually, did not have bad games. Kittle, I think, was good today. Ayuk had a great game today. But this is two games in a row where there's been some drops. Or Jimmy could have had 300 yards last week, maybe even 400 yards this week. He's been really good. Like, like he has been in the zone. He's been Jimmy G. He's been Jimmy GQ, porn star Jimmy, and you wasted it. And you know it might not be there next Sunday, and you have to capitalize on that. Well, and that's another reason that there's frustration, right? Is is Jimmy, I, I won't say he was fantastic today, but... For what Jimmy Garoppolo is, th- this might be his ceiling. Like as far as him throwing the football down the field with accuracy, and his guys not picking him up. I know he found Ayuk on that final drive of the game, which we'll certainly get to, which frustrated a lot of people, myself included. Got called back by a Jake Brenna holding call. I believe our first caller of the of the of the show referenced the center. That's Jake Prendel. Like those are the plays that they they just continue to shoot themselves in the foot with. And I want to hear what fans. Think about the game, what they think that is going to transfer, because that that would be my next biggest question is, well, was this just a fluke? Or are these things that can be corrected? Because we didn't see a ton of them in the first five games of the year. 
But against Atlanta, they were all over the place. So 888-957-9570. That's also the number for the, for the Xfinity mobile text line. Want to hear from you. Sterling, do you, do you think today was just kind of an aberration, sort of a, a mixed pot of the fact that they had injuries coming in and they lost a couple of guys during the game? Or do you feel like th- this is something that, that might continue against potentially better teams, which you got coming up the next two weeks? Yes and no. Because, yeah, there are injuries. Yes, there are things that sometimes you just can't control, right? Ebukam gets hurt. McGlinchey gets hurt. Trent Williams and Nick Bosa aren't playing. But some of the, maybe the drops, the inconsistencies, the turnovers offensively, those have been there in every one of their losses this year. The Bears game, first drive of the game, they're driving. Debo Samuel, fumble. Against the Broncos, they're driving. Interception. It's like, okay. Like, it even happened against Carolina. Right. Didn't but, matter, but it but, happened. But then today, you're, you're down 7 nothing. You got to fight and climb your way back. Wilson fumbles. They get a touchdown, and you're sitting there down 14 nothing. If Jeff Wilson, and I get it, you can play the what if game all you want. If he does not fumble, it's 21 to 14 at halftime. The defense comes up big, and you have essentially two quarters to get seven points. That game is then coached differently. Kyle Shanahan can do more offensively. It opens things up because, look, Jimmy was still good enough in that second half. But Jeff Wilson was not good, and that game had to be on Jimmy Garoppolo's shoulders. And in times where he came up clutch, nobody else did. It was Jimmy, Ayuk, and Kittle, and a sprinkle of Debo. The offensive line was good for the most part, but critical penalties. And again, you cannot waste that when Jimmy actually is in his bag. He hit three guys on the money. None of them counted in pivotal drives to get you back in this game. You can't do that. Well, I'm glad you brought up coaching because we got one on the line here. We got, we got Coach Durant from Union City. I'm curious what Coach. he thinks about this game. Coach Durant, we appreciate you calling in yeah. to the double overtime show here on 95.7 The Game with Evan Giddings and Sterling Bennett. What's up, Coach? Yeah, he's, he's, uh, well, we're going to do a steak set tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sounds like he's already focused on Monday. That I can't really mistakes. blame him. So, uh, yeah, Coach Durant, please call back in. Uh, we'll get you on the line. And he might have been, he might have been at Safeway. Some I'm New not York really sure. Yeah, t- hey, Giants are five and one. So New York stakes sound pretty good right now. Giants are five and one. Uh, Jets, not too bad. Sala, Robert Sala, the not floor. too bad. Miami Dolphins, not too bad. Mike, and, and that's hey, Kyle Shanahan. This was his homecoming, right, to Atlanta. I mean, he was he was coming back home for the first time. <laughs> I, yeah, he was. Welcomed <laughs> unkindly. Right. And it's like, look, t- look, I'm 25 going on 26. I haven't had that 10-year high school back to the, you know, back to the high school reunion. And I probably won't even go to mine. But that being said, if you're Kyle Shanahan, you left with a sour taste in your mouth. And in 2019, you lost to the Falcons late in the year, almost cost you the division. And you took it to him last year. This was kind of the get right game, or essentially the you know get over the hump game. Be two and one against them as a coach in San Francisco, and for two out of three times, you left a little something in your bed, and it's not a good sign, and it kind of stinks because you lost by two touchdowns to a bad team. And if you're Kyle, and you're sitting there saying, "Oh, come back to Atlanta doesn't mean much," well, if going back to Denver meant more to you than going back to Atlanta. Hey, Kyle, you lost both those games in two franchises where your family has a lineage and a history of winning. Guess what? You laid a goose egg twice. It's not a good look. You should have won today by a lot. And, well, the bed's got a little something in it for you. Yeah, the bed right now is 3-3. and The bed is 500. Uh, Let's see what what Coach Duran has to say about the game. Coach Duran, I believe we got him back on the line. Uh, What's going on, Coach? How are you feeling about the uh, the loss, 28-14? Hey, what's up, fellas? Happy Sunday. Uh, I got to give the Falcons credit. They came, they saw, and they conquered the obstacle. The Niners struggled overall. Falcons did what they had to do, and they took care of business. Yeah, I got to give some good words to Atlanta Falcons for today. What kind of stakes you making, Coach? I got to know. I think he's gone. All right, see you. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. I tried. No, no, no. I, I was, I was curious what, what he was cooking up for dinner too. I know what the Atlantic Falcons were cooking up for dinner. One hundred and sixty-eight yards on the ground. The Niners' defensive line. My goodness. 
And, and, okay. And, Dirty and, bird. Well, no, and, but that's actually why I, I'm glad you brought that up because as much as, and look, we don't know how healthy Nick Bosa was or wasn't. I know he practiced Friday, but it was kind of a walkthrough. Kyle Shanahan said that like he was very close to being ready to play. They just, you know, maybe didn't want to push it any more than they had to. There might have been some medical advice involved. But that's why I thought that entering this game, it was pivotal for him to be on the field. Not just because, of course, they're a better football team with him, but specifically against Atlanta. Nick Bosa does so much more in the run game that I think people account for. And he takes so much pressure off of the rest of the dev- defensive line, even if you're missing Armstead, who by his own right is a very good front, you know, front member. Like, Nick Bosa, I think, I don't know if he's worth 14 points, but he certainly changes, like you mentioned, how they coach the game, how they try to defend Marcus Mariota, how the Falcons attack the 49ers' defensive line because when they find out he's not up front, when they find out Armstead's not up front, they already know that Kinlaw's going to be out. They're probably licking their chops back there even though they don't have their own starting running back. Do you think that Kyle Shanahan saw what happened against Carolina with Mosley? Saw Trent Williams go down on kind of a freak play in Denver and said, I can't lose Nick Bosa for four more weeks. I can't afford to put another guy on IR. I can't afford to maybe have a man of you playing two positions at once because we're so thin here. Do you think that went into the conversation of, I have seen too many big-name, pivotal players go down the last two weeks. I can't afford to lose him. I'll take the L if I have to in Atlanta as long as it gives me a better chance to get a W against Kansas City and the Rams. Sure. I, I think that factors into it. But I also, at least from listening to Shanahan Throughout the years, he also doesn't seem like a guy that looks too far ahead. Like he he coaches to win each game. Right. So if you're trying to win this game, your best chance to win the game is with Nick Bosa, not without him. Even if it means, like I'm not I'm not saying if you play him today, he right. gets hurt. But no, I, I I don't think Kyle Shanahan factored that in as much as okay, look. A groin injury. We just saw his brother go down with one. He's out eight to ten weeks. Joy Bosa is. Well, Kittle missed two weeks. Kittle missed two weeks. Uh, Mooney Ward, a groin injury. Like those, that that specific injury, maybe hamstrings you can throw in there too. They're so fickle. You never really know until you test it out. And again, Nick Bosa wasn't really allowed this week to test out how his, you know, how his groin was feeling. So no, I I don't I don't think so. But it absolutely impacted the game. And look, I I do think. The question maybe correlates to a lot of a big concern that a lot of Ford Anders fans have had, and which was the same case in in this game. It's like, are are you coaching scared a little bit, specifically in second halves, for because of the stat that you just laid out at the top of the segment, six points on average. But I think that's kind of what Kyle Shanahan does, right? Where it's we're ahead in a game. I should probably milk the clock and run the clock out and try to get that clock down to two minutes, but I'll pass on first and second down, then run it on third down, and I'll take 30 seconds off the clock, and you're like sitting there like, Shanahan, you gave him six minutes left. Why? And the inverse is, we're down by 14. Let's run a draw play on third and 12. Let's do a quick pitch to Coleman when it's third and one when you're down by 14. Like, that is where Kyle Shanahan, I think, kind of befuddles a lot of fans where it's like, dude, where is your mindset? You know you have to throw. Throw the ball. They know you have to throw. Do what you got to do to win. And sometimes Kyle Shanahan does some things where it's like, if it works, you're the genius, right? You're you're the offensive guru. And if it doesn't work, you got fans saying, I don't know if I can trust you. And I think that's, that's where this fan base has been. With him since 2019, it's been four years now, and nothing has changed. There's been some great wins, but there's been some really, really bad losses, and today was one of them. Oh, the only guru I know, his name's Daryl, he works from 12 to 3 on 95.7 The Game, along with uh, Matt Steinmetz. But I want to go out to Miguel, because you're talking about mindsets, and I want to hear from the fans right now. 888-957-9570, that's also the number for the Xfinity Mobile text line. Miguel from San Francisco, you're next up on 95.7 The Game with Evan Giddings and Sterling Bennett. Sterling Bennett. Where is your mindset now, Miguel, after the game here today? Hey, thank you for the opportunity. Of course. Uh, you know, I feel, all this time I've been feeling that that Kyle is not the coach for the 49ers. Because I feel like he always says a lot of words, but he doesn't say nothing in the press conferences. And then 
You know, I, I don't know if I'm wrong. But I, I, don't, I don't know much about football, but I know that coach got to be on top of the game, man. You know, there was a point today that they did. The coach didn't even know what what down it was, and then and they, they got to tell him what down it was. Well, I think it was Terry Church, and 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 you know that I feel like you know a strong team got to have a strong leadership, and I don't think Kyle Shanahan is a strong leader. Yeah, we appreciate it, Miguel. It, it, the leadership versus coaching question always comes into play, especially with the contrast of you know the, the head coaches that the 49ers have had before kind of this this marred part of, of the recent era. You know, Harbaugh, obviously, more of a leader than you know, a, a technician as a coach. Kyle Shanahan, in a lot of ways, feels like the antithesis to that. But if there's one statistic that I saw today that, that kind of you know, affirms where Miguel feels, along with where where we're talking about specifically that second half and especially in the fourth quarter, Josh Dubow of the Associated Press put this out on Twitter. The 49ers are 0-26 under Kyle Shanahan when trailing by more than four points after three quarters. Only The only other teams without a win in that scenario since Shanahan was head coach of the 49ers in 2017 when he was hired are the Washington former football team and now commandos 0-38, the Detroit Lions were 0-38, and the Cleveland Browns were 0-34 and 1. That's the group that Kyle Shanahan is in right now when it comes to fourth quarter deficits. If you're a Niner fan, that should piss you off. This team, again, has been good for four years. 2019 going into 2022. There's no excuse. Look, 2017, they stunk. 2 and 14, I get it. 2018, not much better. I get it, right? Like, I'm okay with them not being good in those years, and those stats maybe reflect that. But from 2019, and maybe we should look into that, but 2019 and 2022, you're not making comebacks. And I would like to think, because Jimmy was tied for all quarterbacks in 2019 with the most fourth quarter comebacks. So it must be most of those games do not happen in 2019. So what happened? Because when you were down in 2019, the year you went to a freaking Super Bowl, you were making those comebacks. What changed? It wasn't the quarterback, and the defense has gotten better. So what's the excuse? What's the through line? Oh, it's Kyle Shanahan. When you're down, he gets a little tight and makes some decisions you're not supposed to. Again, last year, NFC Championship game, Kyle Juszczyk third and one, on the Rams side of the ball or start side of the field, you get stuffed. What do you do? You punt. Kyle, you got to win the game. And I get it. It's old. It's history, right? But those are the things that fans glean onto and go, I remember that. And you're still doing it. And that's what makes me upset and should make you upset too. Well, I hate to break it to you. If he's 0-24 since 2017, he also hasn't won one of those games since 2019. <laughs> it's numbers, it's numbers, you know. <laughs> but no, I, I, I hear what you're saying. Like that is a big concern because... Look, if we're going to talk about people or groups to place blame at their feet for for the loss today, they got doubled up by the Falcons. Any way you cut it, 28-14, you lost. You are now you now have the same record as, as you put it earlier, a bad team. By the transit of property, that means you're a bad team right now. Right. They can't get better, but, and they got to because they got KC coming up next weekend. But... I do think there is some concern that is valid. And to me, the microcosm for that concern is in the final drive, essentially, of the game for the 49ers. They start at their own one-yard line. 16 plays. 80 yards. And they take 8 minutes and 15 seconds roughly off the clock, and they come away with nothing. That is what their defense has done to opponents and today, somehow, Atlanta did to them. And that in that one drive, granted, Ayuk's catch that gets called back for a holding might change that. But I saw no sense of urgency. I saw a lack of creativity, play calling. I saw a, a, a an apparent need to force feed the run at a time where you already realize he couldn't run the football in that game. And I saw... Just a completely flustered offense for the 49ers against a Falcons team that's not that good. At least defensive. So, like, that's to me where I, I understand where Miguel is coming from. I'm not going to go as far as to say he's not the right man for the job. 
but I do understand where people feel like in the second half, Shanahan kind of shrivels up a bit. Like, that's valid. It feels like he's a turtle. And he goes right back into his shell. Of I don't want to. I don't want to look bad. So what I'm going to do is call it safe. Because if I look bad, then I get called out in the media. And you know Shanahan, he does not like being questioned. And like I'm not saying that's the case. But when you show more urgency in the first half with 27 seconds to play, compared to the last drive or essentially the last drive of the game where you need two touchdowns and you take eight minutes. I have never seen, never seen this Niners team with this core of Jimmy and Ayuk and Debo move that slowly. They say slow and steady wins the race. Not tonight. That was that was the epitome of what not to do if you're an offense with their back against the wall that has to score not once, but twice. If you would have told me they took four minutes and scored a touchdown, cool. That makes sense. Eight minutes and nothing. Four, four minutes, I believe they're at the 40-yard line, own side of the field. It felt like they had moved between their own 25 and their own 15 seven times in, between, in seven plays. Whether it was penalties or dump-offs and running plays, it just felt like there was, again, no urgency. There was, I guess, no fight in them. And that doesn't seem like that's a characteristic this team usually has. But, you know, the, the meme on Twitter of the dog in the heart, <laughs> there was no dog in the heart today. And, and that's concerning. If there was, it was like a chihuahua. I mean, it was it, it, it was it was a small dog with no fight, with no it all bark and no bite. That's what the Fortnite. That's what the Fortnite's were this week. Yeah. I mean, everyone expected them to come. I I didn't expect them to roll, but I feel like that was the consensus entering this game. I mean, five points against a Falcons team that has played in a single digit result each of their first five weeks to me is very pesky. And I was afraid, I was afraid of what happened today, that the Falcons would drag the 49ers into the mud with them and then essentially stranglehold them and drown them in said mud while they wipe themselves off, dirty as they may be, the dirty birds, and then walk to a victory. Like, that is the frustrating part. We got to hit a break, but I see Alex from Atlanta, mind you, on the other side. We're going to get to you, Alex, and hear what you have to say about the 49ers. Maybe maybe Alex was at the game because it essentially was a home game. It was a home loss for the 49ers. 28-14 to today, week six. 49ers fall to 3-3 three and three with the loss to the Falcons. Evan Giddings and Sterling Bennett are with you until 5-15. We'll take you up until Sunday Night Football here on 95-7 The Game. We're back after these messages on 95-7 The Game. Hey guys, this is Keenan Thompson. I have a problem with you. Yes, you. None of y'all told me that Auto Trader has millions of new and used cars that I can shop from home. I thought we were friends. I put smiles on your face, but I'm not smiling. No one told me that with Auto Trader, a dealer can deliver cars to my home or that I could shop by price on Auto Trader. No one. Consider this friendship that you just learned we had officially over. Finally, it's easy. Auto Trader. Let me guess. Unknown caller? You could reduce the number of unwanted calls and emails with online privacy protection. The latest innovation from Discover will help regularly remove your personal info, like your name and address, from 10 popular people search websites that could sell your data. And we'll do it for free. Activate in the Discover app. See terms and learn more at discover.com slash online privacy protection. Are you curious about who offers the best deals on top-rated Samsung, LG, and Sony TVs? The answer is surprising. It's not online. And it's not the warehouse clubs. The best deals on top-rated TVs are at video only. Don't believe it? Then check out the trade-in deals at video only. How about $500 for your old TV? Try doing that online. Before you buy that new TV, drop into video only. If you don't, you'll be sorry. Golfers, tee it up this fall at the Golf Mart for big savings. Save up to $150 off on Ping G425 Woods. Upgrade your gear with discounted Wilson standard cart golf bags and stock up on TaylorMade Distance Plus golf balls. Now two dozen for $35. Don't miss these items and more happening now at the Golf Mart and get a free custom fitting today. The Golf Mart, home of the 90-day satisfaction guarantee. Or shop us online at Worldwide Golf shops.com gorgeous gaming stunning streams unbelievable bandwidth it's another lifestyles of gagillionaires 
Meet the AT&T Fiber customers winning at life with hyper gig speeds. Meet Gagillionaire Terry. While his love of streaming horror movies has him constantly on the edge of his seat, his internet bill won't give him a scare. Oh, don't go in there. I'm telling you. Because since Terry upgraded to AT&T Fiber with hyper gig speeds, he doesn't worry about data caps or equipment fees. Come on, man. The door's open for a reason. And best yet, he also doesn't stress about a price increase at 12 months because with the amazing Gagillionaire lifestyle comes an exquisite sense of tranquility. <laughs> Most of the time. Live like a Gagillionaire. Get straightforward pricing with AT&T Fiber. Internet that upgrades everything. No data caps, no equipment fees, and no price increase in 12 months. Limited availability in select areas. Visit att.com slash hypergig for details. At Harris Ranch, we do beef. Just like we've done for over 50 years. Beef that's raised locally right here in California. Tender steaks, awesome burgers, and California classics like tri-tip roast. The flavor you crave. The quality you trust time after delicious time. Come on, it's time to get out and grill. Harris Ranch, we do beef. Legendary beef, legendary quality. Access to cutting-edge treatment can help make long-term survival possible. Stand Up to Cancer and the Lust Garden Foundation have teamed up to bring pancreatic cancer clinical trials to those who need them. For more information, visit pancreaticcancercollective.org. If you see a student being bullied, be supportive. Ask if they're okay and invite them to join you. You'll be an ally, and you can make a friend. Friendship! Visit StopBullyingSpeakUp.com and join Cartoon Network to redraw your world without bullying. Locked On Warriors is a daily podcast covering your favorite team, the defending world champion Golden State Warriors. I'm your host, Cyrus Sotsas, and every Monday through Friday, Locked On Warriors brings you all of the biggest Warriors stories in around 30 minutes. We cover Stephen Curry and the dynasty that is one of the greatest teams in the history of this beautiful game. Listen to the Locked On Warriors podcast every day on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. You've got advanced prostate cancer, but you're not waiting around. You want straight talk. The facts about a Govix. Or Govix Religolix 120 milligram prescription tablets is a treatment for adults with advanced prostate cancer. Fact. Or Govix is a different kind of androgen deprivation therapy treatment. A pill, not an injection. Or Govix may cause serious side effects including a heart condition called QT prolongation. Tell your doctor right away if you feel dizzy, faint, have a racing or pounding heart or chest pain. Orgovix can cause harm to an unborn baby or miscarriage. Use birth control during treatment and for two weeks after Orgovix treatment. The most common side effects include hot flushes, increased blood sugar and blood fat levels, muscle and joint pain, decreased blood hemoglobin levels, increased liver enzymes, tiredness, constipation, and diarrhea. Other side effects include weight gain, decreased sex drive, and erectile function problems. Orgovix may cause infertility. Talk to your doctor if infertility is a concern for you. Go with a Govix. Ask your doctor. For more facts, visit GoWithTheFacts.com. What's your retirement look like? With Fidelity Income Planning, a dedicated advisor can help you create a flexible income strategy to grow and protect your wealth so you can stop worrying about the future and enjoy whatever comes next. Investment minimum supply. Fidelity Brokerage Services member NYSE SIPC. The annual Harmony Walk to End Hunger and Homelessness in Richmond is October 22nd. Register at gripcares.org. Hear local music, take your kids to the bounce house, and make a difference together. Register now at gripcares.org. Great cars and great customer experience are what define a great dealership. At BMW of Fairfield, we deliver on both counts. BMW of Fairfield is the top-rated BMW dealership in the Bay Area, according to Google Reviews. We love selling the ultimate driving machines, but our success rests on the outstanding experience we provide our customers. It's a better way to buy and own a vehicle. Experience it for yourself at BMW of Fairfield. One price, one person, one hour. You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMC FM at HD1 San Francisco. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Garoppolo on play action, wants to take the shot down the middle of the field, looking for McLeod, and he dropped it. He had a little separation, and it's third and ten. Now back to 95-7, the game. Well, you heard Noah Eagle, Mark Schlereth on the call there for Fox Sports. Ray Ray McLeod drops a deep ball out of the first half. 49ers drop the ball to the Atlanta Falcons here on Sunday, 28-14. You're tuned in to double overtime on 95-7, the game with Evan Giddings and Sterling Bennett. 
That was a common theme. This entire on, on both sides of the ball. I know, unfortunately, we had to pick on Ray Ray McLeod, but an injury puts him in that situation. Danny Gray not being available, he's probably the go route guy. He's probably the guy in that spot. He's unavailable. Ray Ray McLeod is being asked to step up in place of a starting caliber player. He cannot make the play. The 49ers cannot make the plays that they need against the Atlanta Falcons. And they lose by double digits. They fall to 3-3 three and three with potentially falling below 500, looming in front of them with Kansas City next weekend. And then, I know everyone wants to make a big deal about how the dominance against the Rams is still here, but they're going to be hungry. They're going to be coming off a bye. And like you mentioned earlier, Sterling, you could potentially be 3-5 and five going into the bye. That is disastrous. Yeah. If, if you would have told me, and look, I get we can't do the whole, if Lance was playing this game and Garoppolo's playing this game, it's not fair to any quarterback, not fair to any player. But if you would have told me they were 3-3 three and three with Trey Lance, I would go, well, that makes sense. They probably lost to the Rams, maybe the Broncos, maybe. But I'm sitting here saying, no, no, you lost to the Bears? The Broncos and the Falcons. You lost to bad teams. Now I get it, Monsoon. But you've had Jimmy for, what, five weeks now? Four and a half weeks kind of now? And you're in the same spot you might have been. And I get it's a big might. I don't want to play that game. But if you would have told me the defense improves, you got Emmanuel Mosley, you got Mooney Ward, Nick Bosa, and again, some of those guys didn't play today. But you can't be three and five again with the health of your team. Because last year, the big reason you were three and five was because you had Josh Norman and Drake Kirkpatrick playing corner. You lost to the Packers on Sunday Night Football. There was injuries again were a concern. That was the issue. But if you're three and five again, and you're digging yourself out of a hole again, I mean, how many times can you do that to yourself? And it seems like every single game at least every loss, has been they put themselves in a hole and can't get out of it. And because there hasn't been much fight this year, if they put themselves in 3-5, and five, unlike last year, because last year was, this is Jimmy's last year. We got to fight for him. We can do this for him. This year it's, yeah, it's Jimmy's last year again. Okay, that, it seems like there may be some complacency. Yeah, it's going to be difficult, and I don't think it's any coincidence. Now, their three losses have been three games in which they have lost the turnover battle. 2-1 to one against Chicago, 3 nothing against Denver, 3 nothing today. Even though we talked about you can kind of wipe off the, the interception at the end of the first half, that's still 2 to none. The 49ers are not good enough, not explosive enough offensively to overcome the mistakes on offense, the mistakes turning over the football. They were... They were decent. They didn't commit that many penalties, certainly not as many as the one against Chicago, but they were inopportune. There were missed tackles. There were things that were very glaring that as we begin to look at the totality of the season have, as you laid out, Sterling, been kind of sneaky in every single game. We just kind of sweep them under the rug when you throw up 37 against Carolina or you blow out the Rams by 15 at home. I want to go to Alex in Atlanta. Right now on 95.7, the game on double overtime. If you have a call, if you have a comment, anything you want to talk about the game, any concerns you have moving forward for the 49ers, we are all ears, 888-957-9570. But we go to the A, A A-Town down. Alex, what's up? You want to talk about the Niners? Yes, sir. I was at the game today. You know, Niners fan living in Atlanta, you don't get to see them come to town very often. But, you know, I I think you used a great word, complacency. Uh, And I want to apply that to game planning by the coaching staff going into this week. I know you have a lot of injuries, but especially on the defensive side of the ball, but that's not an excuse to make Marcus Mariota at times look like the second coming of Michael Vick in Atlanta uh, with the rushing he was able to do, um, the touchdowns he was able to get with his legs. Um, and then on the other side of the ball, the offense, you, you mentioned it a bunch of times on the show already, but an eight-minute drive in the fourth quarter when you're down by double-digit scores and there's just there's no sense of urgency. There's no hurry up offense. There's no, no huddle. It seems like, and that all goes back to coaching. You know, if there's complacency with your coaching staff, there's going to be complacency with your players. And that's just what it feels like we're at with the 49ers right now, especially on the offensive side of things after today. And I don't really know how you fix that. And it's, it's frustrating as a fan to watch, especially going into the fact that you're getting Kansas city next week, the Rams, the following week, this was a game that should have been one that you were, 
able to walk away with a win and then go four and two going into week seven. But just your guys' thoughts. I'm I'm still at a little bit of a loss for words in terms of frustration, but a lot of it ties back to complacency, like you mentioned. Thanks, Alex. Uh, he was at the game today. So he he was at another home game for the 49ers. He also saw them fall to the Falcons. And I think all of those concerns, look, in, unless they can you know, beat Kansas City next week, which, which as we move forward in the show, I, I'll explain why I believe they can do that. But Ooh. it's not going to be easy, but I believe that they I, can do it. <laughs> if it is easy, then we're having a whole different conversation. Well, but, but that's kind of been the story with the 49ers this year. They, they make things that are difficult look easy, and they make things against the Falcons that should be easy look difficult. And I want to make something very clear. It is not Jimmy G's fault, and it's not Kyle Shanahan's fault that there are penalties. A holding call is not either one of those two guys' fault. Drop passes are not either one of those two guys' fault. Like, that's those big plays, Warner's drop and McLeod's drop and the call on Brendel, that call back by Uke's big play, that is stuff that is kind of out of everyone's hands. It happened. You got to move on. But the issue is, is that when it comes to Kyle Shanahan, it just seems like that when the going gets tough, he just folds, throws in the you know, throws in the towel and goes, okay, we'll just see what happens and move on. And I get that it's okay to kind of wipe things under the rug, but you can't do that against a bad team like Atlanta or a team that maybe isn't as good as Kansas City because you have KC, the Rams, the Chargers, then the Cardinals. There's a chance they lose all of those games. All of them. And then what are you then? Are you three and three and six? And then by that time you're sitting there thinking you may want to start looking towards the future. And I get it's a lot of football left. You got to play the games. But when it comes to Kyle Shanahan, and you kind of hit on it earlier, where he's the type of leader that he's he's not going to show the media. He's not the raw, raw Jim Harbaugh guy who's going to smack his quarterback on the shoulders, hit him on the helmet and say, go get him, Tiger. He's the, yeah, we lost today. It kind of sucks. You know, we're going to move on, coach him better, scheme better. And that doesn't make fans happy because then when they see that and hear that in the press conference and then see what happened today on the field, it makes them say, hey, Kyle, wake up, man. Wake up. You're three and three. You're, you, you could be three and five again. You don't have time to lose to Atlanta when you got the big dogs coming up next. Yeah, no doubt. And I uh, you know, definitely want to hear from Shanahan. Of course, he talked after the game. The first thing that jumped out to me was, like you mentioned, everything was very obvious for him the reasons why we lost today not complicated 40 runs to 16 that's a 40 40 is a number that sticks out i think to a lot of 49ers fans because kyle has mentioned that over and over well today if i told you that one team had 40 runs for 168 yards one team had 16 runs for 50 yards and it was the niners and the falcons You'd probably say it was the Niners that ran for a buck seventy, and it was the Falcons, but instead it was reversed. Kyle Shanahan last year, week ten against the Rams, they ran the ball forty plus times. The media asked him, "Is this something that you would like to continue to do?" He said, "Yes." Hey, Kyle, it hasn't happened all year. Where is that game plan? Where is the game plan that you said you wanted to run with this exact same quarterback, with those exact same receivers, that same tight end? And again, drop passes, not his fault. Big plays called back for penalties, not his fault. But it, to me, and maybe you can help me here, it seems like they're, I'll try. <laughs> it seems like they're pushing the ball or, or throwing the ball more now with Jimmy than they were when the offense was rolling in 2019. It, it, and maybe it's just an illusion of mine because they're behind in a lot of games. But it feels like that, and maybe it's a Jimmy Garoppolo thing, that he wants to do it. But it seems like they have got away from what works for them or what has worked for them. It feels like they've gotten away from running it 20, 30 times a game and Garoppolo throwing 17 to 22 times a game. It feels like it's the inverse now. Yeah, no, no, it does. I mean, look, I know you had to come in for Trey Lance in Seattle. That game in which they did run for 189 yards, which has been their season high thus far, he threw it 21 times. Since then, 29 attempts, 27 attempts, 30 attempts against Carolina. Today, 41 attempts. That's a lot of Jimmy G. That's not Niners football that we've known, and that's why it's so mind-boggling. This is the quarterback, and look, 
Think what you wanted, Jimmy. This is the quarterback you wanted to move off of because he could not beat teams with his arm. He could not push the ball down the field. And I get it, you're three and three. You're still alive. You got what is it? You got eleven weeks left, twelve weeks left. You got plenty of football to play. But now in the year in which the quarterback you wanted to replace him with, he can't play anymore in Trey Lance, you're now throwing the ball more? To me, that would make Kyle Shanahan more conservative of like, eh, I don't trust you because you didn't trust him to keep him, but now you trust him to win your games with the arm? Like that's That doesn't make sense of what you told us last year or have shown us the last three years. Yeah, his actions sometimes have been different than his words. That that's also been kind of a, a consistent thing. The inconsistency between you know, the verbal and the actual implementation of Kyle Shanahan's coaching. Uh, with the other big theme outside of coaching today, of course, was injuries coming into the game. I want to go to Paul next from San Jose on ninety five seven. The game, Paul. What's going on? You're on with Evan Giddings and Sterling Bennett here on Double Overtime. Hey guys, um, watching this game is clear to me that this was not our first team offense out there. It was not our first team defense out there, and of course, that's because of injuries. But what like what makes this game so frustrating? What makes the season so frustrating is the amount of injury we sustain each and every year. It's I'm starting to think it's more than bad luck. I we can't chalk it up to bad luck anymore because I feel like that's statistically unlikely to lose as many starters as we do. I, do we have to start looking inwards and and like ask ourselves what is going on in practice or in the games that like puts our starters liable to injury so much is it the smash mouth football we run what is it what do you, what do you guys think uh, that's a great question. I'm sure Kyle Shanahan and his, his coaching staff are trying to figure that out because they have been hit with injuries throughout the years they have been hit with injuries specifically this season and if you look at you know their projected starters beginning of week one, Kyle Madsen, who is on overtime earlier with Alan Styles, did a fantastic job, put out a tweet earlier this week about how if you look at like 10 different positions, 11, 12, like there are they are missing essentially close to half of their starters that they were expected to have at the beginning of the season. If you include, you know, Jimmy Ward, you include um, you know, Trent Williams, who's gone down. Of course, Trey Lance at the quarterback position was slated to be the starter, is no longer the starter. They have been hit by injuries. And as much as I, I don't want to say that it's it's not just bad luck, like at the same time, that's that's also that's also the name of the game in football. I'm not sure if you remember this, but in 2020, San Francisco, I believe, had joint practices with the Steelers and Chase Claypool. He said that San Francisco was still practicing in pads on Thursday. That's not common in the NFL. And, and maybe they've changed that since then. But, and I don't want to get into speculation, but if that hasn't changed, and you saw it happen in 2020, partially 2021, and now in 2022, and you're still in pads on Thursday, which is not common in the NFL, that may be something to readjust of, hey, Limit the impact on your players' bodies. You need them all year long. Nick, I and mean, look, you can't blame one injury on just playing in pads on Thursday. That's not how it works because a lot of these guys get hurt during the games. But if you can limit wear and tear on your body during the week, you're more fresh for a Sunday, more fresh for a Monday. Maybe your leg isn't as sore. Maybe your arm isn't as sore. Maybe your shoulder doesn't give out. Like there might be something to readjust. Yeah, I, I definitely don't want to speculate. I, I think that, look, I mean, in, injuries are a part of the game, and I know it's tough when, when you're looking at, look, you're missing the majority of your front four. You're missing, and now after Mooney Ward goes down and exits, the, you're missing both your starting corners. You're missing a linebacker. You're missing people on the offensive line. You're missing your starting quarterback. You're starting running back. Um, those are certainly not excuses for the loss, but they absolutely play a role I just feel like, and, and if, if that's the case, you know, maybe it's certainly something they need to take a look at too. But isn't that also to avoid injury? Why Nick Bosa probably didn't play today? I mean, that's also a reason why certain guys have been held out because they don't want them to get injured. Right, but the issue is Sundays matter more than Thursdays during practice. Games matter, not practices. Well, and Nick Bosa didn't practice this week until Friday, and it was a walkthrough, so he didn't he didn't right. go hundred percent. Maybe Nick Bosa isn't the example we use here. But maybe it's somebody else. Maybe it's, again, not going to speculate, not going to put a name to it. But maybe this is still happening. And if that's the case, 
I'm not going to put a you know, claim out there, whatever, but that may be something to readjust because wins and losses matter more than practice reps. And right now, they have a lot of guys banged up. And it seems like that they kind of, quote-unquote, punted on today. They said, Nick Bosa, don't play. Verrett, you're not ready, don't play. And they said, we're going to use what we have and hope it works out. And they could have still won this game with what they had out there. It's a good team. If you trotted this team out there every single week, seven, eight wins, nine wins, and it's what makes Nick Bosa and Williams so important because it makes them a 10, 11, 12 win team. But the guys that were out there in the secondary, in the backfield, in the receiving room, on playing tight end, they couldn't pull it out. They didn't do their job, and it cost the team today. Yeah, I mean, I, I look, I, I don't know why injuries do or don't happen. Right. But I do know why the 49ers lost today. Like, it was very clear. Yeah. They lost the ball because they couldn't stop the run. They lost the ball because they lost the game because they couldn't get off the field on third downs. Turned the ball over. They turned the ball over three times. And they also, and this maybe to me is the most important part of the offense because we've gone through Jimmy Garoppolo and he was he was good today. I, I don't think this game was on Jimmy. If anything, it was it was more on coaching than Jimmy Garoppolo. They couldn't run the ball. Like and and I know they were not in a position down 14 early to run the ball a bunch, but even when they did, even when they tried to run the ball on, on that last drive. <laughs> In, in, in a fashion that I will quite never be able to understand. Never. They couldn't do it effectively. Like, they, they could not find any consistent... And maybe Jeff Wilson Jr. fumbling early and costing them that seven points that, that kind of mentally took him out of the game. Debo Samuel, who hasn't really been much of a factor in the running game to this point, uh, or at least has been a little more predictable. You know, he was, he was the most efficient runner today. But, you know, I'm looking at... Kevin Coleman, four for three. Like, you know, they, they tried to get him involved, but they didn't really have a chance. They just couldn't run the football. And when San Francisco cannot run the football under Kyle Shanahan, when they run the ball since 2017, when they have run the ball for less than 100 yards, they are 8 and 25. They were 3 and 1 in 2019. They were able to overcome it then. Outside of that, they have not demonstrated that without a quality running game, that they're going to beat teams consistently. And guess what? That's not even a knock on Jimmy. Because that means that Shanahan's offense needs the running game to work efficiently. Yeah. And look, that can mean incomplete passes. It can mean drops. It can mean plenty of things that go into the context there. But you're going to tell me you want Jimmy throwing it 41 times, and I get it, the text line saying, well, you're running the run, they're down. I get that. Context matters. When you're down in the fourth quarter, that's when you shouldn't run the ball on the last drive. And guess what? Shanahan still did it. Now, did it change the game? Probably not. It really wasn't going to. But when you run the ball, what was it 13 times a day? 16 times a day? 16, yeah. And Jimmy Garoppolo averages more yards than Jeff Wilson Jr. and Tevin Coleman. You're one and two back? That's a problem. That shouldn't be happening. And when Debo Samuel who has run the ball out of the backfield less and less and less each week, ran it one time in the backfield last week, this week two times. Like, they're not playing cohesive San Francisco 49ers football. They're not playing Shanahan's style of play. And I get it, you won last week, and I think we all overlooked it. They won, they beat Carolina. But against a team like Atlanta that can play keep away, unlike Carolina, they were able to exploit that. Get the big turnover, knock Wilson out of the game, essentially, make him a non-factor. And when Coleman can't get it going, Shanahan didn't want to play Ty Davis Price for whatever reason that was. And Jimmy Garoppolo is averaging more yards than all your running backs. How can you not look at that and say, what are we doing? Like That's not us. Well, let's, let's ask Leroy from Oakland what he thinks the 49ers should be doing, what they did do today. You know, how they can try and correct some of these ills that Sterling has laid out. Leroy is in Oakland, uh, a favor to the station. What's up, Leroy? You're on with Emmy Giddings and Sterling Bennett here on 95.7 The Game. Yeah, man, double OT, man. It's a pleasure to be on, man. Look, real quick, I think Shanahan's style of play gets our players hurt. And I've been saying this for like two or three years. His game plan, his style of play 
You know, it's 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 tough. It's hard nosed. It's why he's running these guys out there on practice on Thursday because he wants this physical physical team in in, in all aspects. And his style of play to me gets the gets our players hurt. Now, let me say this: Shanahan's got to look himself in the mirror and go ask himself one simple question: Why am I and my team? always on the wrong side of momentum. I was looking at the nine games that we played. This is including the preseason games this year. Do you know we have not won one third quarter, guys? We have not won one third quarter out of nine games this season. And do you know how many goose eggs we put up in the third quarter out of those nine games? Hit me. Seven. Seven. You have to have your guys ready to play after halftime. You got to make the adjustments. You got to be the rah rah guy. Oh, come on, let's get out here and get him. And he just does not make adjustments at halftime. He just does not rile his team up and get his team ready to play. And I'm looking specifically at these third quarters where we have come out flat and we never can get the momentum back. So he's got to ask himself. Why am I always, for all these years, on the wrong side of momentum? It's a great question, Leroy. And and I think that, look, it's one that I'm sure if Kyle Shanahan had the answer, <laughs> he'd fix it. We, we, we wouldn't be in this situation. Right. Uh, he, he does seem to me to be a big process guy. Like, when he can figure something out, he will take steps to correct it. This is the question that he has un- been unable, as we've talked about with the statistics in the second half, in the fourth quarter specifically, without a lead, Kyle Shanahan is a different coach than when he has the lead. And that's why th- this was really the only question that I wrote down, and maybe people that are on the Xfinity Mobile text line, everyone calling in, 888-957-9570, can help us out with as we move forward for the last you know hour, thereabouts of this show. Can the 49ers play come from behind football? Like, that's what people are trying to figure out. Because since 2017, really 2019 is the only year they've done it. They did it a little bit last year. And I know that the 17-point comeback was Shanahan's first in that type of situation in the season finale last year. But this year, I, I hate to say it, but... You, you got to prove it again. You you got to continue to do that in order for people to simply to ask people to wipe away the the twenty the zero and twenty four record that you have down four in a fourth quarter. You got you got to be able to prove it. The NFL is very much a what have you done for me lately league. Shanahan unfortunately has never done it. So now it's it's not what have you done for me lately. It's what can you do for the first time? And it's actually control a third quarter, as Leroy said, which they haven't done all year, and win a game from behind against what has been three bad teams you've lost to. Yeah, no, no doubt. And and we're going to try and figure out some sort of winning equation to get the 49ers back on track coming up after the break. Uh, we got to hit a timeout right now. You're listening to Double Overtime here on 95.7 The Game with Evan Giddings and Sterling Bennett. We'll be right back with more of your calls. What does Shan- what can Shanahan do? What can the 49ers do to overcome these injuries? This is what we're going to try and dig into and break down next on 95.7 The Game. Hey, I'm Andy. If you don't know me, it's probably because I'm not famous. But I did start a men's grooming company called Harry's. The idea for Harry's came out of a frustrating experience I had buying razor blades. Most brands were overpriced, overdesigned, and out of touch. At Harry's, our approach is simple. Here's our secret. We make sharp, durable blades and sell them at honest prices for as low as $2 each. We care about quality so much that we do some crazy things, like buy a world-class German blade factory. Obsessing over every detail means we're confident in offering a 100% quality guarantee. Millions of guys have already made the switch to Harry's. So thank you if you're one of them. And if you're not, we hope you give us a try with this special offer. Get a Harry starter set with a five-blade razor, weighted handle, shave gel, and a travel cover. All for just three bucks, plus free shipping. Just go to harrys.com and enter code JOY at checkout. That's harrys.com, code JOY. Enjoy! Great cars and great customer experience are what define a great dealership. 
At BMW of Fairfield, we deliver on both counts. BMW of Fairfield is the top-rated BMW dealership in the Bay Area, according to Google Reviews. We love selling the ultimate driving machines, but our success rests on the outstanding experience we provide our customers. It's a better way to buy and own a vehicle. Experience it for yourself at BMW of Fairfield. One price, one person, one hour. Are you curious about who offers the best deals on top-rated Samsung, LG, and Sony TVs? The answer is surprising. It's not online, and it's not the warehouse clubs. The best deals on top-rated TVs are at Video Only. Don't believe it? Then check out the trade-in deals at Video Only. How about $500 for your old TV? Try doing that online. Before you buy that new TV, drop into Video Only. If you don't, you'll be sorry. Let me guess. Unknown caller? You could reduce the number of unwanted calls and emails with online privacy protection. The latest innovation from Discover will help regularly remove your personal info, like your name and address, from 10 popular people search websites that could sell your data. And we'll do it for free. Activate in the Discover app. See terms and learn more at discover.com slash online privacy protection. Realtors abide by a code of ethics. This is Article 9 in action. Beth, a first-time homebuyer, knew nothing about the home buying process, except that she wanted to buy a home. But her Realtor had the expertise to make sure Beth understood every document, even giving her copies to review with her lawyer so Beth could close on her first home with confidence. Complicated things explained in simple terms. The difference between an agent and a Realtor is real. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. That's who we are. California, you deserve more. And with United Healthcare, you'll get more. Annual enrollment is October 15th through December 7th. So call United Healthcare today. With the United Healthcare Medicare Advantage Plan, you get more from your Medicare dollar, now including better than ever dental, vision, over the counter, and prescription drug coverage. Call United Healthcare at 1 888 Call UHC today and speak with a licensed sales agent. Benefits, features, and or devices vary by plan and area. Limitations and exclusions apply. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Count on the professional parts people at O'Reilly Auto Parts to recommend the best products for your vehicle and budget. Get maximum cooling system performance for 10 years or 300,000 miles with peak long life universal pre-mixed antifreeze and coolant. Now just $3.99 after mail-in rebate. Limit supply. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts today or visit O'ReillyAuto.com. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. What's your retirement look like? With Fidelity Income Planning, a dedicated advisor can help you create a flexible income strategy to grow and protect your wealth so you can stop worrying about the future and enjoy whatever comes next. Investment minimums apply. Fidelity Brokerage Services member NYSE SIPC. One eight seven seven cars for kids. K-A-R-S, cards for kids. One eight seven seven cards for kids. Donate your car today. One eight seven seven cars for kids. K A R S cars for kids. One eight seven seven cars for kids. Donate your car today. Donate your car today at carsforkids.org. That's cars with a K. Your car, running or not, can be picked up as soon as the next day. You'll get a maximum tax deduction and a vacation voucher. One eight seven seven cars for kids. K A R S cars for kids. One eight seven seven cars for kids. Donate your car today. Now accepting donations of land, homes, buildings, or any kind of real estate. Jimmy Garoppolo firing a dart. Deep post Samuel. First down and more. Stays on his feet across the 45. What a play. Missed tackle by Hawkins and Samuel showing off the strength. Uh, Deep post Samuel just punishes people. Just punishes people. Now back to 95-7 the game. Eagle, Mark Schlereth on the call for Fox Sports right there. That was Debo Samuel's big catch. Well, Debo is punishing... The Falcons, much of the way that Atlanta was punishing the 49ers all day yeah. on that one play. Dirty birds. <laughs> um, but I do want to use it to, to transition to to something, you know, a little bit positive for the 49ers today. And that to me was not, not necessarily Debo Samuel, but it was one of his running mates on the outside. It was Brandon Ayuk. And if there's anything that that 
fans out there felt like you know, there's something at least you know, sem- assembling positivity to take away from this game, please let us know. 888-957-9570. It's Evan Giddings and Sterling Bennett up until 515. We take you to Sunday night. I thought Brennan Ayuk was was damn good today. I know he had he had one potential ball that he could have right. caught. That was right before Ray Ray McLeod had an even bigger drop in the second half. But eight for eighty three and two tugs. That ain't a bad day for young Ayuk. Well, it felt like a lot of that was in the first half. But that being said, well, this, both of the touchdowns were right, yeah. <laughs> right. But this was his best game of the year by far, and to me, it was also his best game. Maybe since that Bengals game last year, or maybe even the Bears game that got them started off, where I know they lost today, but it's a good sign when your stars, all of them now, are getting momentum. They look good. Kittle was involved. Debo was still good in the passing game. Brandon Ayuk's finally starting to come into his own, at least what we think so far. And that's going to be big against Kansas City because the Chiefs' defense is not good. It's not good. Like, they can be scored against at will. And if you got three guys who Debo, like Schlera said, he's the punisher. You got Kittle over the middle. And you have the third and youngest Yak bro making A.J. Terrell look like a fool when he had the touchdown in the first half. Like, his route running is crisp. And I mean, like, not not Lay's potato chips, but I mean, like, some ruffles. Some, some, some kettle-cooked potato chips. That's how crisp Ayuk's route running has been thus far. A big game for him. You get the stars going, that can only mean hopefully good things going forward for San Francisco's offense. Well, and up next here on Double Overtime with Devin Giddings and Sterling Bennett, we're going to go to the phone lines, 888-957-9570, also the number for the Xfinity Mobile text line. Craig from San Leandro walks to t- wants to talk about the game today. Craig, what's up, man? How are you feeling after the tough loss? Uh, oh, man, I don't know. It's, it's still a little early, but today... For me, it was like third down, third down, third down on offense, third down on defense. Okay, uh, for this, this number, this that's that number one rated defense comes but to bite you sometimes. You know what I mean? Uh, you know they couldn't get off the field on third down. But I want to make a comment about Shanahan before I let you go, uh, because in my humble opinion, he is slightly overrated when it comes to his play calling. And what I mean by that is when to call a pass and when to call a run. I believe his play calling cost us the championship game last year. So uh, it's not like I want to just get rid of the guy, but if he was gone, it would not hurt my feelings. Wow. Well, there you go. Heard it heard from Craig first. Sterling, he seems to be echoing maybe not exactly how you feel, but – some semblance of the sentiment, which is, look, you kind of know what you're going to get from this guy, and on a day like today, it feels like it's not enough. On a day like today, it feels like I've seen this over and over and over and over again, and look, I don't want to harp on him. This is the same coach that had this team in the Super Bowl in 2019, albeit a loss. The same coach that was on this team, led this team to an NFC Championship game appearance, Last year, it's the same coach that, despite the loss, still has this team at 3-3 three and three and in first place in the NFC West. There are a lot of great things to take away from Kyle Shanahan. Now, that being said, I think Niner fans, they feel as if every single Sunday, they know what the game is going to look like. And that's from an offensive standpoint, from the players and the plays. And I get that's familiarity. But when it comes to the pivotal drives, like my mind goes back to Baltimore in 2019. And I get it. It's been two years since then. But you have the ball with the chance to go and make one final drive before halftime, put some more points on the board, maybe put Baltimore on the corner, and you run and you punt the drive away. And it feels like... When the going gets tough, that's how Shanahan is. And it doesn't mean that earlier in the game he wasn't in his back. Because I think offensively, San Francisco looked pretty good early in this game. Take Wilson's fumble out of the equation. Jimmy looked really good today. Hit two touchdowns in the first half. Almost and should have had 300 plus yards through the air. Like, there's a lot to look at this game and say, 
wow, what could have been? The issue is, we've been saying what could have been for a lot of games, not only this year, but for bad losses the past five seasons. Yeah, that's true. I, and look, I, I'll, I'll meet some of the Jimmy detractors a little bit halfway here because as much as I thought Jimmy Garoppolo was good today. I mean, and he, like you mentioned, he was a couple drop passes away from maybe being around 350, maybe one more touchdown, who knows? But the reason why I think a lot of fans feel like, to me, Shanahan and Garoppolo are kind of joined at the hip because Jimmy Garoppolo is not a quarterback that can make up for the deficiency. Like, he is going to do exactly what your coach wants him to do. That's why Shanahan loves him, because he will operate in his offense. He will execute it. But he's also not the guy that is going to, look, he's not going to be able to overcome a double-digit deficit all the time. Most of the time, as yeah. we've as we've seen over the oh, years, 24, right? Oh, and 24 in the Kyle Shanahan era, the 49ers are when they have trailed by four or more points after three quarters. That's a damning stat because the other three teams that are in that company are the Lions, the now commanders and the Browns. You do not want to be on a list with any three of those teams if it's over a long period of time. So as much as I, I do want to come down Shanahan's road. I also can see where some fans today, and and we've seen a few on the Xfinity Mobile text line. It's like like you do need it. Like sometimes you need a quarterback, right? But Jimmy Garoppolo has never shown you to be that guy. He has shown you to be a guy that can be average to good. And to me, this it like this is a good Jimmy Garoppolo game. And that's why you mentioned it earlier. It feels like you wasted it, and you're not always going to get good Jimmy. But you're at a point in, in your franchise's you know, state where you don't have another option to go to at quarterback. Un- unfortunately or fortunately, this is your guy. And so if you're going to be in a position where Jimmy Garoppolo is throwing for 300 yards and a couple of touchdowns, I don't know if you can ask for him to do much more than that. And I think that's it. That is how you kind of encapsulate today. Jimmy Garoppolo was good enough to win you this game. He was. The defense wasn't early. You got behind, and late, I think big drops and a pivotal penalty hurt you. I don't think Jimmy, coming out of the game, my mindset wasn't, wow, Jimmy was bad today. And it also wasn't Kyle Shimmyham was bad, too. There were some calls I didn't like, but that's every game. There are some players where I'm just like, what was that? Like, Seattle in 2020, Jimmy's wide out left, and McKinnon's taking it with the running back snap. Like, wh- what are we doing? I don't, I don't like that. It haunts me still, and it's been two years. But that being said, Jimmy was good enough to win today. Your defense wasn't early. You got behind late. Your tight ends and your receivers, being two of them, McLeod and Warner, made some pivotal drops. And guess what? Those big plays killed drives. And when you kill a drive, the ball's back in Atlanta's hands, and you couldn't stop them. If you make those big plays, maybe things change. And even if those two plays are caught, let's say they don't score a touchdown. Say it's two field goals. You're down by eight. That's a one-score game, albeit a little harder than seven points. You got eight minutes. You got plenty of time. You can take eight minutes, 80 yards, and you're okay with that. Like, you still have plenty of time on the clock, and maybe you don't run it with Coleman on third and one. Like, there are things to take away from this game saying, wow, that's a positive moving forward, and one of them was Jimmy G. Well, let's hear Kyle Shanahan. He spoke after the game. Uh, Kyle Madsen and Alan Stiles had overtime here. You're on double overtime with Evan Giddings and Sterling Bennett on 95-7 the game. Kyle Shanahan was asked for his overall thoughts after the game. Here's what he had to say. I think pretty easy to talk to him after the game because it was real obvious what happened. We knew going into this game how that team was built. We knew it would have to be a physical game. We knew we'd have to protect the ball. And we didn't want them to get up because of how they're wired to run the ball and things like that. And especially going in a little depleted, we knew we had to come out strong. And them going on that first drive all the way down the field, I thought was rough. And us fumbling, having the return for a touchdown to put us in a 14-0 hole with those situations. Then losing a number of guys after that. I thought we did a good job getting right back but I thought the biggest play in that game was in the second quarter, that third and 13. We finally got him in a long third down, and it was I don't know what happened, but we got free in the middle, and Mariota was allowed to scramble for the first down, and then they ended up getting seven-point lead um, to go in at halftime. Our chances to come out and answer right away, but um, when you put yourself in that hole, 
and you can't you can't overcome some drops that we missed. I thought you know I thought we had a big chance on the second play of the half. The next series up, I thought we had a big chance. I believe that was second and six or second and ten. Same thing happened, and then when we turned that over at the end, there's just there's no room for error, and that's pretty obvious when I talked that way. Why they ended up with 40 runs? We had 16. We had three turnovers. They had zero. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, so I'll, a lot to unpack there from Kyle Shanahan after the game, but you know the first thing that that I kind of took it like first thing I took away from it was how simple the explanation was for him about the loss was, and I think that's what infuriates a lot of people is you knew what you had to do. It was easy to recognize why you lost the game. Well, then why didn't you do those things during the game? Right. Like, okay, it was it was easy, right? You know, they ran the ball a bunch of times. We didn't. Um, didn't stop them. Didn't up the field on third down. And, you know, they were just better than us today. Turn it over next week. Like, like is that what you want to hear? Like, no. Like, I want to hear some accountability. And there was, eh, well, there's usually not a lot of that with Shanahan. But today, I think there was a chance for him to show some of that to fans and say, hey, look, we knew exactly what they wanted to do. We couldn't stop them. That's on me. But that is, that's Shanahan. And we'll hear Demeco Ryan's talk later in the week, but that'll be to preview against Kansas City. So we won't won't even know what, how he feels. And if you're a Niner fan, like you said, so you know what went wrong and you couldn't address it and you couldn't stop it. So was the problem just personnel or was it your scheme? Why couldn't you stop it? If you like the first thing they say is when there's a problem you have to admit there's a problem. And it seems like Kyle Shanahan knew what the problem was. He just didn't know how to attack it. And when you're playing against Marcus Mariota, who I think you and I can agree is not a world beater. He's worse than most quarterbacks in football, albeit has a skill set that hurt San Francisco a lot today. I thought he was playing in the Rose Bowl in 2010. I, I, <laughs> That's I don't know. what it looked like. But you can't stop that? How do you expect the fan base to say, okay, you know what you have to do against Kyler Murray, against Mahomes, maybe eventually against Jalen Hurts, who they're rolling. How do you expect us to think if you can't stop them who are far better quarterbacks than Mariota. If you can't stop him, how, like, where is the faith in the fan base you can stop the bigger name quarterbacks? Yeah, and, and we'll find out if, if the Eagles can continue to roll here on 95 7 the game. We got Sunday night football coming up between Dallas and Philly at 5 15. Evan Getting and Sterling Bennett with you here on double overtime, taking you up until that. Well, then I, I might combat it with I, I think Matthew Stafford's a better quarterback than Marcus Mariota. But they're different. They are. They are stylistically, and this is kind of something that, like you mentioned it, Robert Sala had issues with quarterbacks that can also extend plays. Kyle Shanahan, throughout his time as a coach, has had trouble with dual threat quarterbacks. And today, like it was a clinic, honestly. The way yeah. that Marcus Mariota ran the read option, the occasional RPO, which we saw in the Kyle Pitts touchdown that maybe not put the game away, but certainly gave them some separation. Marcus Mariota was was literally damn near perfect, but also the way he ran the offense showed teams, this is a way you can beat the 49ers. And I think right there, that was my thought in the third quarter of, oh, great, now against the Rams, albeit they have Stafford, not Mariota, against Kansas City, against the Eagles, against the Cardinals, they're going to see what, San Franz- or what the Falcons did today and go, oh, that's the blueprint. And... If you're Sean McVay or Andy Reid or Nick Siriano in, in Philadelphia or whoever the coach might be, who are maybe better minds than Arthur Smith in Atlanta, okay, you have given me the key to success against the Niners' offense and even their defense. Thank you. And when San Francisco plays them, they now have a scheme that can beat them. And granted, personnel is different, but again, it... Atlanta's personnel is not, it's not extraordinarily amazing. It's like, okay, it's a fine team. They're young. But the Rams have Donald and Jalen Ramsey, who San Francisco might still own. We've seen McVay in 2019. What did he do later in the year? 
The first game, San Francisco knocked their lights out. Second game, it took two third and eighteens to beat them because McVay started doing bootlegs, made the adjustments. You think he's not going to do that this year? You think Cliff Kingsbury for the two and four Cardinals team is not going to say, okay, look what Atlanta did. Let's use some of that stuff. And I think if you're Shanahan, who is a very smart coach, Demeca Ryans is the coach of the best defense in football who will hopefully get healthier as the year goes on, I think they're going to be just fine. But there's some lingering concerns. Yeah, like they were they were averaging 12.2 points per game against coming in. They gave up 28. The most all year. By far. To a team that, let's face it, as you mentioned, is is average. Like I, I, I don't think the Falcons are as bad as you do, and we can split hairs on that. But they are not a, a supreme football team right. that you're going to probably have to beat in the playoffs. Yeah. Whereas, and this, this I think takes me to the next point, about what's next. Because look, you got you got Kansas City coming in. I know it was uh, Alan Styles who said earlier he hoped that the Kansas, Kansas City Chiefs <laughs> would lose. Or sorry, they, he, he hoped they win. He hoped they win. win, sorry. Well, they didn't win. They lost to the Buffalo Bills. They lost 24 to, to 20. They are now going to come into Levi Stadium off a loss 4 and 2 and you're going to get Patrick Mahomes. You're going to get I believe the best quarterback in football. I know he lost to Josh Allen today. I would still take Mahomes over Allen. Right. Whatever you think, you're getting one or two of the best quarterbacks in the league. You are getting a team that expects to be in the conference championship, if not the Super Bowl. What are you going to do? I think that the one shining spot for the 49ers right now, unfortunately, it's not with their team. It's the fact that they play in an NFC that is so bad. Yeah. Like, that's really the only thing that I can look at and be like, you know what? Maybe it, maybe if when I wake up tomorrow, I'll take a look around the league. I'll see in my own division, the Cardinals somehow just lost to the Seahawks. I'm going to look at a Rams team that, although took care of business against Carolina, it wasn't as dominating as what the 49ers did. Still feel like they're a better team there. Around the rest of the conference, you know, the Giants are 5-1, and one, but I, I don't really know how good they are. The Steelers just beat the Buccaneers, who are now 3-3 three and three as well. A lot of people believe they are, are the cream of the crop. The Green Bay Packers, like you just mentioned the last hour, lost to the New York Jets at home 27 to 10. You got freaking rolled by Robert Sala. So at least at least there's that, Sterling. Oh, don't get don't get, <laughs> don't get it twisted. The Niners are the best three and three team in the NFC. But that doesn't get you anywhere. You gotta beat. Four and two. You got to be five and three. You got to be somewhere at the end of the road. You got to be a nine win team to make it in the dance. And if you're three and three, they're better than Green Bay. They're better than Atlanta despite the loss today. If you put money on it, and let's say San Francisco is hosting or traveling to Atlanta in the playoffs some way, somehow, no oh boy. My money would still be on San Francisco. <laughs> and that's banking on them being healthier. They were a five point favorite today. Exactly. Yeah. It's like there's a reason, and they're probably going to be, well, probably not next week, but the majority of the year they're going to be favorites because this team has the personnel, the coaching, and the history of winning to make myself, and I'm assuming yourself, and many fans out there confident that they can at least get to the playoffs. And being 3-3, three and three, while it's not pretty, they're the best 3-3 three and three team in the NFC currently. And I think the six five zero on the Xfinity Mobile text line hits it on the on the on the head. Just fine doesn't win Super Bowls, and that's that's really where I think a lot of people are, are jumping to after watching this game. Because in a weird way, I feel like when Jimmy Garoppolo became the starting quarterback for the Forty ers you know where he can get you, or the floor of where he can get you, right? And a lot of the conversation and speculation for fans moves when Jimmy Garoppolo takes over at, at, at quarterback. It moves from, all right, well, the, well, the regular season is, is kind of moot at this point. Because we're not really sure how we're going to get there, right. but we're probably going to be in the, in the dance. Then, what's going to happen in the division game? Potentially a conference championship game. Maybe a Super Bowl. What's going to happen there? And these are the games that make you feel like, oh, the 49 are one and done. Like, like, these are the type of games that make fans feel like that. 
Yes, but w- how many weeks are left? 11? Oh, yeah. No, plenty of weeks. Like, there's... They plenty could, of time. They could beat the Chiefs, beat the Rams, beat the Cardinals twice, beat the Raiders, the, beat the Bucks, beat the Chargers. Like, I know today is a frustrating loss because we were so close, yet so far. There is... There is land beyond the horizon. You just couldn't reach it. The boat started to sink halfway there, and you couldn't paddle your way to land. I get it. It stinks. It sucks. And you got to hope they'll get healthier. Nick Bosa should be back next week. Hopefully, McGlinchey can actually play. Trent Williams might come back next week. There are things to look forward to. And I do believe that when it's all said and done, that San Francisco, in my opinion, truly is, despite the loss today, Still the best team in the NFC. There might be quarterbacks that give them problems. Some way, somehow, two of the last three years, they have found a way to be in it until the end. And I think when it's all said and done this year, despite it being a long ways away, they will somehow, some way, not be one and done. They can beat the Bucs. Tom Brady looks a little washed sometimes. Again, still early in the season. Rodgers has no receivers Who really are the Eagles? Are the Giants just getting lucky? There are plenty of questions about other teams that have been either just as successful or even more so than San Francisco this year. Vikings are 5 1, Sterling. Yeah, it's for Cousins. Who cares? But he he beat Mike McDaniel. That doesn't mean anything to me. (laughs) It's like, who cares? Cool, you beat the Dolphins. So it's like it's. Like no 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 I'm I'm prodding and and right now even with a 14 point loss the 49ers are still they still have the second best point differential in the NFC right and like, entering the entering the week they had they were tied for the second best point differential in the NFL and I think when it comes down to all the nitpicks fans have things we've talked about today third down conversion second half points which they have been atrocious this year those are things that when San Francisco has been successful in winning football games. They've been really good at. Last year, this team was one of the best third down teams in football. I think with the same personnel, they can get back there. Give me Elijah Mitchell healthy, Trent Williams healthy, not on your third offensive tackle on Jimmy's blind side. Like the push is coming. It's just gotten delayed. The question is, is that hopefully it's not delayed two more weeks, because then you're in trouble at that point. Yeah, and and I guess my fear is that look, the defense is was on a historic pace before this game. They likely will regress to the mean in a positive fashion, even if it's against a better offense in Kansas City and then Los Angeles, and then after the bye, you get another Los Angeles team called the Chargers. Then, but the question becomes, if the defense isn't playing at the at the historic rate that they did, can you win the game? And this is a game that gives me pause about answering that question because... Again, we talked about if the 49ers can play comfort behind football. I'm not expecting the defense, if they're bad, to, you know... And look, they really only gave up seven points in that first quarter. The fumble was what put you down 14, which changes the trajectory of the game. Right. So the offense shot itself in the foot. But the offense is not, to me, not explosive or prolific enough to overcome so many mistakes. Like, like, a, like the fumble, like multiple drop passes. There isn't enough, especially with the injuries that they right now have, there's not enough around the playmakers that they do have that are actually healthy to uplift them past apparently even you know a mediocre to average team like Atlanta. And that right there is why losing today hurts even more. Because, and, and even losing to the Bears and the Broncos and Atlanta, this team, on paper... If they have the same wins, should technically be six and zero, and I think that's what has fans frustrated. Of like, you lost three games, you should have won, and that can afford you a loss against Kansas City, a loss against the Cardinals late in the year, a loss where okay, we're still six and three, or we're still five and three, where you can sit there and go, that's fine. Like this loss doesn't kill us in the standings, and today's loss doesn't either. But a win today affords you complete control of the NFC West. That's huge. A win today means if you lose against Kansas City, you're still one game above 500 going against the Rams. And you don't feel too bad. Right now, it just feels like fans are panicking because they were supposed to win today 
extend their lead in the NFC West, and even if you lose against Kansas City, you go, that's a great offense. I get why we lost. Today, it's, why did we lose? Because Atlanta was so good? Partially, but because we didn't play our game. No, and those are the answers that we're searching for. The answers that apparently are very clear to Kyle Shanahan, but evidently could not correct before the game, during the game, and and we'll see if he's able to correct them this week because they absolutely need to if they have a chance to beat Kansas City. Uh, to me, Kansas City is, and, and this is what the 49ers do, right? It seems like they, this, this toy with our emotions, you know, the, the entire season. And look, I, I wasn't necessarily optimistic about the Rams game. They changed my mind. I know the Rams, they've dominated in the regular season. But looking ahead at Kansas City, there's also some areas where I do feel like the Chiefs are vulnerable. And I know that statistically speaking, their their defense right now would be in the bottom half against the pass, would be in the top half against the run. But some of that to me is just the fact that they are usually playing from ahead, which is something that the 49ers have demonstrated, at least today, that they, they can't really do is play from behind. But I think that where San Francisco, similar to a couple of teams that have had success against Kansas City, if they can get back to the run, especially early in, in games, if they can pound the rock against Kansas City, whose defensive line, when they pin their ears back, is lethal, led by Chris Jones. But if they get back on their heels, they can turn into turnstiles. And the 49ers, when they run the football effectively... They can win football games against anyone, including Kansas City. I think San Francisco, and you are right, you're you're very correct, but I do think with San Francisco, the one thing they haven't really done this year, maybe outside of the Panthers game, was be in complete control. Even that Rams game felt like, we're teetering, we're teetering, Hufanga pick six, okay, okay, cool, you know, breath of fresh air, you're feeling pretty good, sigh of relief. But maybe the Panthers game was the only time this year where I said San Francisco's going to go into Carolina, they're going to win big, the defense is going to show out, and the offense is going to put up big points. And that happened. But every other game this year where they were supposed to do that, where they should have done it, it didn't happen. And I think if you're San Francisco, you kind of have to, to hit the reset button and say, what made us successful back then? How can we play our style? And like Jimmy said it, Warner said it, uh, Shanahan said it, we have to get back to playing our style of football. That wasn't us today. The issue is, that's been you all season. That has been who you have been every single game through six weeks. Now, can you become who you are, who you have been when you've been successful? And this next week is the biggest test thus far this year. If you go to three and four and you look like maybe a lost offense, who are you? We were waiting for the offense to get in rhythm. They got in rhythm last week against Carolina. The rhythm was gone. That that metronome was ticking left and right, and the drummer was playing whatever, and the guitar was off. Everything was off. <laughs> and so against Kansas City, can you get back in tempo? Can you find yourself once again? Because you had it for a very small period of time, and you lost it. you got to recapture that magic. You have to. Hopefully Sam from West Oakland can help us try and recapture some of the magic that I I honestly feel has been exuding from the last two hours or so. we got a couple minutes left here, though, on double overtime with Evan Giddings and Sterling Bennett, 95-7 the game. Sam is in West Oakland, wants to talk about the Niners' loss. Sam, what's up? What did you take away from the game? Man, here's what I took away. Like, I go into every game. Why do we consistently lose key players every game? Like, Like, when they said... Because I was a concussion, I was like, good Lord, please, let my, like, we got to keep, you know what I mean? But I'm glad he came back in the game. It's just like, I'm tired of going to every game weekly thinking about who else is going to drop this week. And it's always a key player. Like, we lost Mooney Ward to a groin. You can't take a groin lightly. And I get it. Jimmy Garoppolo had a, had a you know, a better than average game today, right? Like, those are moments that we got to uh, I take advantage of. But to me, it's like if our offense don't pick it up and if our defense got to consistently play uh, uh, like more snaps, then we're going to lose more players like the way that we're rolling right now. You know what I mean? And it ain't no more next man up because the next man up might get hurt too. So 
I'm just, I'm trying to understand and diagnose what is our issues with injury. And I'm trying to understand, is it a systemic problem or is it, uh, I don't know. Cause right now it's it, like, to me, it's looking like a systemic issue with injuries. Yeah, no, I think part of it could be systemic. Ster- you know, Sterling laid out something in practice that the 49ers do that could be different than what other teams do. All Some of it also, you know, I know that people have, have placed blame at the feet of Shanahan for the way that he was using Trey Lance. But also on that play, as a lot of players have described, that's also just a fluke injury. You know, Trent Williams getting rolled up on from behind is a fluke injury. Uh, Nick Bosa injuring his groin. I know that there was... Talk made about the turf in Carolina, but but there's largely nothing you can you can do about that. I think. I don't know, and again, the whole other conversation about turf. Yeah. Right. You know, Nick Bosa, 2020, Solomon Thomas. You can go on and on and on about how many guys got hurt. Even today, I was like, can we please ban the turf? And I don't know what goes into that, and how many teams need that can have that. I'm not, you know, I don't make those decisions. I don't know enough about it, you know, to even make a comment about it. But. When it comes to injuries, some people just have bad luck. Javon Kinlaw, it seems like he's never on the field. He's a great guy. He's so new. He had knee issues in college. They said, hey, replace DeForest Buckner. You're our guy. Here's the 14th overall pick in the 2020 NFL draft. And not to say that this could have been seen coming because you can't predict injuries, but it's kind of like, putting Verrett out there and, and banking on him being your number one corner. And they did the same thing last year. Like, that is exactly what they did. And you can't control it. You just don't know when it's going to happen. But it does feel like that San Francisco has had the worst luck. They're walking under ladders. They're seeing black cats. They're putting salt and dumping it on the ground. It seems like everything they're doing, they got some bad juju. They got some bad whatever it is. They got some, it's Halloween season. They got some black magic working behind the scenes because something just seems to be going wrong. And I don't know how to put a finger on it, and I don't think anyone does. I don't even think Kyle Shanahan does because they fired their strength and conditioning staff in 2019. They tried to fix stuff, and it just really hasn't changed much, so I'm not sure what they can do, and I don't think anyone does. Yeah, and I want to get to the other side of this legal ID as we pause 10 seconds for station identification right here on 95.7 The Game. You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMC FM at HD1 San Francisco. Always live on the free Odyssey app. And injuries were a big storyline coming out of the Carolina win, even one that was as dominating as you laid out, Sterling. Injuries are going to follow this team more so than other teams the entire year because of the positions they're at, the impactful injuries and losses that the 49ers have sustained. But on the on the flip side, I, I could see someone arguing, well, look, I, as much as they're unlucky that guys have gone down, they're also probably lucky that Fred Warner's never missed a snap, knock on wood, has never missed a game. Like, so th- there are, like, to me... Fred Warner playing all 16 games each of his first four NFL seasons is far more unlikely than someone actually going down and getting hurt and missing time in a football season. And I think that's what makes the Eric Armstead injury so maybe surprising. He hadn't missed a game since he got drafted in, what was it, 2016? Like, Armstead's been the the juggernaut, you can call him. So was Lake and Tomlinson. They have not missed games and all the Tomlinson's down in New York, but seeing someone like Warner be able to stay healthy his entire career thus far again, knock on that wood, but you have guys like Armstead where maybe the wear and tear is finally getting to him. He's he's a vet now, been in the league almost 10 years. Like that stuff wears on you. But my concern more so is young guys going down. You got Mitchell who was banged up all last year. And that was one position that I thought San Francisco needed to have five running backs at, whether it was Wilson or Mason or Sermon or Ty Davis Price, and it's been the Jeff Wilson, Tevin Coleman show who was a cast away from the Jets last year, and they were not good today. Despite the injuries and despite showing off against Carolina a week ago, they were bad. They were really bad today. What Wilson had six carries, 25 yards, one fumble, not efficient, and Coleman was non-existent. And so, when guys do go down, people want to say next man up. 
The issue is the next man up wasn't good enough either. And if you're going to applaud the depth, which we have over and over and over again, the defensive line's depth is crazy. It's and it, The defense line really wasn't that bad today. The issue is, is that secondary wasn't that great on pivotal downs. Fred Warner wasn't great either. And if you're going to have injuries, you got to have your big-name guys step up, and they didn't do that. Well, we got a little under a minute left here until we turn things over to Sunday Night Football. Dallas and Eagles coming up right here on 95.7 The Game. I know it's a tough game to, to talk about after Sterling, but I appreciate you doing it with me here. 28-14 to 14, Atlanta Falcons defeat the 49ers in Week 6. 49ers fall to 3-3. Three and three. Falcons are 3-3 three and three as well. Next week, it's the, the daunted Chiefs, Sterling. Can't wait! It's a big one. Patrick Mahomes, that'll be a 125 kick at Levi's Stadium. Certainly looking forward to that one. A big thanks to everyone that has worked on the broadcast here the entire day. Of course, Cam Williams back there on the board. I mean, Craig Valentino right now is going to be taking things over moving forward. Sterling Bennett, as always, a big thank you to Kyle Madsen and Alan Stiles, of course, keeping things going after the game. My name is Evan Giddings saying so long after the 49ers fall in week six, 28-14 again, the final score. We'll talk to you next time. You will listen to Double Overtime on 95.7 The Game. So, what are you reading? I'm checking out the ratings on the new TVs, and it looks like Samsung, LG, and Sony got the best scores. Just like last year. What about those new high dynamic range TVs? They got the highest scores of all, but their prices are really high. Did you check online? Yeah, their prices were about the same. Well, there's one place where we can get a hot deal on those top rated models. Where? At video only. Check out the ratings on TV stores. I see. Video only scored better than the others. So, if you want the best deal on the best TVs... Then we should take our TV ratings and head over to Top Rated Video Only. At Video Only, you won't find huge stores with refrigerators or dishwashers, but you will find the best deals on the best TVs, sound bars, and home theater systems. Shop around, but then make sure you visit Video Only, because if you don't... You'll be sorry. In Mountain View, San Mateo, Dublin, and San Francisco, NFL. Video only. What's your retirement look like? With Fidelity Income Planning, a dedicated advisor can help you create a flexible income strategy to grow and protect your wealth so you can stop worrying about the future and enjoy whatever comes next. Investment minimum supply. Fidelity Brokerage Services member NYSE SIPC. Listen to Kelvin. What he's about to say could change your life. I'm 6'2", and I was about 290. And I lost weight fast. I trimmed down. Now I'm about 235. I'm probably at about, oh, 9, maybe 10% body fat. That's great. I lost probably at least 60 pounds in probably three and a half, four months. The color of my hair is coming back. Skin looks better. Um, obviously gaining muscle. My muscle mass is coming back. Thank you for providing an awesome product. Somebody who actually has and does what they say they will. That's awesome. That's great, Kelvin. Losing that belly fat in less than four months is outstanding. Since 2004, Andro 400 has been changing men's lives, like Kelvin, and can help you lose belly fat, gain energy, and improve your lifestyle. We guarantee it. Go to andro400.com for more true testimonials, before and after photos, and special discounts. Only available on andro400.com andro400.com ad paid for by the sentinel group attention marines military personnel families and contractors who were stationed at camp lejeune were you present at camp lejeune between august 1953 and december of 1987 you may be entitled to significant compensation for nearly 34 years those in the marine corps base camp lejeune were exposed to contaminated drinking water resulting in devastating injuries including several forms of cancer adverse birth outcomes parkinson's disease and more north carolina's procedural laws have prevented victims from getting the justice they deserve. But passage of the Camp Lejeune Justice Act of 2022 would allow you or a loved one to file lawsuits seeking compensation for illnesses and injuries linked to the toxic water. Call today for your free consultation. 800-610-9256. Let our experienced attorneys fight to get you the compensation you deserve. And you pay nothing unless there's a recovery in your favor. Call 800-610-9256. That's 800-610-9256. Again, 800 800- 610-9256 cars for kids K-A-R-S cars for kids 1877 cards for kids Donate your car today 1877 cars for kids 
KARS Cars for Kids 1877 Cars for Kids Donate your car today Donate your car today at carsforkids.org That's cars with a K Your car, running or not, can be picked up as soon as the next day You'll get a maximum tax deduction and a vacation voucher 1877 cars for kids KARS cars for kids 1-877-CARS for kids Donate your car today Now accepting donations of land, homes, buildings, or any kind of real estate Gorgeous gaming, stunning streams, unbelievable bandwidth It's another Lifestyles of Gagillionaires Meet the at t Fiber customers winning at life with hyper gig speeds Meet Gagillionaire Terry. While his love of streaming horror movies has him constantly on the edge of his seat, his internet bill won't give him a scare. Oh, don't go in there. I'm telling you. Because since Terry upgraded to AT&T Fiber with hyper gig speeds, he doesn't worry about data caps or equipment fees. Come on, man. The door's open for a reason. And best yet, he also doesn't stress about a price increase at 12 months. Because with the amazing Gagillionaire lifestyle comes an exquisite sense of tranquility. <laughs> Most of the time. Live like a gagillionaire. Get straightforward pricing with AT&T Fiber. Internet that upgrades everything. No data caps, no equipment fees, and no price increase in 12 months. Limited availability in select areas. Visit att.com slash hypergig for details. You've got advanced prostate cancer, but you're not waiting around. You want straight talk. The facts about a Govix. Orgovix Religolix 120 milligram prescription tablets is a treatment for adults with advanced prostate cancer. Fact, Orgovix is a different kind of androgen deprivation therapy treatment, a pill, not an injection. Orgovix may cause serious side effects, including a heart condition called QT prolongation. Tell your doctor right away if you feel dizzy, faint, have a racing or pounding heart or chest pain. Orgovix can cause harm to an unborn baby or miscarriage. Use birth control during treatment and for two weeks after Orgovix treatment. The most common side effects include hot flushes, increased blood sugar and blood fat levels, muscle and joint pain, decreased blood hemoglobin levels, increased liver enzymes, tiredness, constipation, and diarrhea. Other side effects include weight gain, decreased sex drive, and erectile function problems. Orgovix may cause infertility. Talk to your doctor if infertility is a concern for you. Go with Orgovix. Ask your doctor. For more facts, visit GoWithTheFacts.com. It seems like they're talking about this game, and yet we're still very early in the season, and it's not a, a must-win game for either team. But this this is is becoming the greatest rivalry, at least in the NFC East. And, you know, that's the other thing, is this division has certainly changed its image. At least three of the four teams are doing their best to change the image. I don't know about the uh, team in Washington. And I guess in fitting Philly fashion, Danny, we are 10 minutes away from kickoff, and already a Philly fan has come onto the field. So I'm guessing even <laughs> face value, who paid 175 bucks just to get kicked out before kickoff. So in some ways, sets the tone. But talking about these two teams, and this Philadelphia team in particular, we knew they were going to be a better team, but it really started last year. They began last year at 2-5, and five, and Nick Sirianni was being kind of panned by a lot of the critics for some of his comments, some of the corny comments that he was talking about, some of the cliches. But this guy has turned things around, and he did it by tweaking his offense and just playing bully ball, if you will, rushing an average of 40 times per game, and he hasn't strayed from that this year. And it's one of the things, yeah, it's one of the things that makes this such a great game. You know, all the talk on and off the field and predictions and the whole offseason was full of that. The great thing about the game of football, as opposed to life and politics and regular businesses, is sooner or later you have to step on the field and prove it. And that's what these two teams are going to do tonight, even though they've done it now already now, you know, five times. Tonight is the biggest test for both of these teams. And this is going to be a fun one to be a part of. Indeed. The fans are fired up on their feet. So are we. Glad you can be a part of it. The opening kickoff between the Dallas Cowboys and Philadelphia Eagles is coming your way next. You're listening to Compass Media Networks. This is the NFL. 
Track Phone wants to know, are you an influencer, a big live streamer? No? Then guess what? You don't need an endless data plan. Get just the right amount of data with Track Phone's $40 unlimited talk and text smartphone plan. Now with 8 gigs of high-speed data and unlimited carryover on America's largest, most dependable network, now with 5G. Get the data you need at the price you want. Track Phone Wireless. Now you're in control. Available at major retailers. 5G compatible device required. Actual availability, coverage, and speed may vary. See terms and conditions at trackphone.com. Traveling? Volunteering? Spending time with family? What's your retirement look like? With income planning from Fidelity Wealth Management, a dedicated advisor can help you grow and protect your wealth. They'll look at your full financial picture and help you create a flexible strategy that considers things like market conditions and health care expenses so you can stop worrying about the future and enjoy whatever comes next. Visit fidelity.com slash income planning. Investment minimums apply. Fidelity Brokerage Services member NYSE SIPC. When you bundle your renters and auto insurance with Progressive, you could save money, but it doesn't cover any terrible memories living rent-free in your head. Hey, just wanted to remind you of that time your kicker missed the extra point and lost the game. Even though he literally never missed an extra point, he chose this playoff game to miss. Yeah, I just noticed you hadn't thought about that in a bit. Wouldn't want you to miss, you know, thinking about it. Sorry, we can't save you from that memory, but we could save you money bundling your renters and auto insurance with Progressive. Coverage from Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and third-party insurers. Renters insurance and bundle discount not available in all states or situations. Need to hire? What you need is a scouting partner like Indeed. Their all-in-one hiring solution makes it easy to attract, interview, and hire candidates all from one place. The moment you post a sponsored job, you'll get instantly matched with quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed meet your job description. And you'll only pay for applications that meet your job's must-have requirements. Flag those that don't, and they'll be replaced for free with another candidate on Indeed. Visit Indeed.com slash credit. Cowboys-Eagles. The rivalry renewed. The Cowboys have won seven of the last... Nine meetings between these two teams. As we mentioned, they've got that division-winning streak of eight straight. The Eagles riding a winning streak as well. We were talking about Philadelphia, that 2-5 and five start last year, Danny. Of course, they got bounced in the first round of the playoffs, but it's a team that's been building, and a lot of folks around the NFL have said, even coming into this season, that this is probably the best overall roster top to bottom. But with all that being said, and you mentioned it as we went to break, this will be the Eagles' most difficult test defensively and for the Cowboys many people have talked about Cooper Rush being a game manager they say it like it's a bad thing he's an unbeaten yeah. game manager yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right he's undefeated as a as a game manager and as long as he keeps doing what he's been doing and the Dallas defense continues to do what it's been doing uh, this win streak could go on and on and on but uh, playing great team there's a reason that Philadelphia is undefeated and uh, I'm sure the Cowboys are going to find that out tonight and vice versa I think both these teams are in for a night where they will grow they'll get better win or lose and uh, it's going to be a, just a great learning experience for both teams and we get to run, go along for the ride and and uh, enjoy it with them I'll send you down to the field for tonight's coin toss a referee John Hussey let me introduce you to our honorary captain tonight First Lady, Dr. Jill Biden, and her company guests. We have a coin, heads and tails, heads and tails. You're the visiting team, what is your call? Tails. Tails is a call, tails is a call. It is, Philadelphia has won the toss, elected to defer. So the Eagles winning the toss have deferred to the second half. So Cooper Rush will have an opportunity to get himself acquainted with that Philadelphia defense. And, and so much has been made of this hot start with Philadelphia, Jalen Hurts, and the offensive weapons. But this is a top five defense as well, Danny. Yeah, and both teams really are outstanding defensive teams. And uh, it's, it's easy to highlight all the exploits of the offense it's, that, that's an easy thing to do that's where most of the stats are kept but again like I said earlier this game is going to be played on a field where stats don't really matter stats are ancient history tonight is tonight and the next play 
is all that matters for these guys. And the team that will do that and concentrate on that will probably win this game. This, on paper, is about as even as you can get. The team that goes out and makes the fewest mistakes and makes the most good plays is going to win this game. Eagles, the home team, were in the dark tops tonight. The Hunter Green jerseys with the white numbers. They've got the white pants with the black and white stripes. The Cowboys, the road team, wearing the silver blue pants with the navy blue and white piping down the side. The white jerseys with the blue numbers. The silver helmets with the unmistakable Cowboy star on each side. Cowboys will be operating right to left. Kevontae Turpa, the exciting return man for the Cowboys. He'd love to break one here in the house tonight. We'll see if the Eagles will put the ball in play and allow him to do so. Off we go. Week six, Sunday night football, Cowboys and Eagles. A short kick. Turpin will take it from a yard deep, crossing the 10. Stumbles at the 15, and he'll be dropped there. He's upset with himself. And in a situation like this, biggest game so far in the season for him, we talked about electrifying, but also excitable. Yeah. Well, he was he was a little bit too excitable on that return. Started right up the middle, stuck his right foot in the ground to break around the contain man on his left, and the ground moved underneath his feet, and the turf monster got him right nope. at the 16-yard uh, line. No Dalton Schultz tonight, so they'll go with those two rookie tight ends. C.D. Lamb in motion, jet sweep running to his right, gets a corner turn at the 20 with a stiff arm at the 22, and gets to the boundary where he's knocked out of bounds, forward progress. Looks like they'll mark him just shy of the 24-yard line. Marcus Epps there defensively for the Eagles. And I love the call by Kellen Moore. Not only is it a good play, an effective play, but it gets the ball in the hands of one C.D. Lamb, gets him involved in the game right off the bat. Second and two. Yeah, they want to stay out of those... Long down and distant situations. Cowboys one of the worst in third down conversions. Cooper Rush operating out of the shotgun. Zeke Elliott flank to his left. Shotgun snap, belt high. Rush sets up throws. Pass intended for CeeDee Lamb, but it's going to be batted down immediately there by the weak side linebacker, offseason acquisition, Kaiser White. Yeah, that's just great coverage by White. He, he uh, was right on the hip of C.D. Lamb running a shallow cross from right to left. Cooper Rush throwing the ball right over the center just about. And, um, just a great defensive play. This Philadelphia defense, one of the best at getting teams in three and out. They are number two in opponents three and out with 23 on the season. On third and two, bunch formation near side. Here's a give to Elliott, running straight ahead. Second effort. He's going to be stacked up a yard short. He punched it to the 25. But you had that big body of Fletcher Cox and Josh Sweat who leaned on him. And that is a whole lot of body. Zeke, as strong as he is, unable to muscle through that one. Well, that's really a shame for the Cowboys. After gaining eight yards on first down, they can't pick up two on the next two plays. So credit the Philly, Philadelphia defense and doing what they've done all year, coming up big when it really counts. Rookie out of Utah, Britton Covey is back deep to receive. Brian Anger punting with his feet backed up at his own 10-yard line. It's the kick away, high, booming, tight, spiraling punt, forcing Covey all the way back to the 15 at the numbers. Cuts inside of the 20, stutters up at the 25, spun around and dropped there as he hits the 27-yard line. Good punt. Nice return for the rookie Covey, 60 yards on a punt, 11 on the return. And coming down with the rookie Jake Ferguson, special teams tackle. Yeah, nice punt, good coverage. Now the Dallas defense takes the field. This Dallas defense leads the league with 15 sacks, rushing four or fewer defenders. And that's going to be a huge statistic. If they can continue to get pressure on Jalen Hurst with just four rushers, that means they drop seven. That helps that defensive pass coverage out a lot. Hurst working out of the shotgun. Play action, sets up throws, put it right on his receiver's hands. That's A.J. Brown, who's coming off a quiet week in their win last week on the road against Arizona. Trayvon Diggs had the coverage. And that was a game last week that 
frankly, Philadelphia was fortunate to escape. They ended up winning it 20 to 17. They've had some close games, but they've still managed to come away unscathed. Yeah, it came down to the very end, and they still should have, or very easily could have, lost that game had clock management been better by the Arizona Cardinals. Hurts working out of the shotgun. Sanders flanked to his left. Looks across the middle. Got his receiver wide open. Bobbled after the catch. But Devontae Smith racing ahead for a 12-yard pickup. Anthony Brown trailing and defending. Pulls him down. Yeah, nice. Just a slant pattern coming right from right to left. And well-thrown ball by Jalen Hurts. Hit him right in stride. And first down, Eagles. And you can see just a whole different confidence level with Jalen Hurts here. Former second round pick out of Channel View, Texas. Takes a shotgun snap, numbers high, three step drop. Pressure up the middle, won't escape as he's whipped down back around the 30 yard line. And it was Dorrance Armstrong who was got the party started last week and Armstrong registers his fifth sack of the season. That is a nine-yard loss. How about Dorrance Armstrong? My gosh. Yeah, he, he came out of nowhere last week, had a great game, and is just picking up right where he left off. For the Eagles, that is the 12th sack they have allowed. Now they're backed up second and 19. Their own 33, working left to right. Shotgun snap, number side of Hurst. Sets up throws, got his receiver on a quick slant route. Gets that lost yardage back. It's A.J. Brown. Trayvon Diggs defending on the play, 11 on the pickup. Puts him into a third and more manageable here. Yeah, Trayvon Diggs, at least for now, is traveling with A.J. Brown. He's going whichever side he goes on that time. He's playing out of position, really, for him, playing the left side for the defense, left corner position. Now going to the right side. Following A.J. Brown. It's an Eagles offensive line that's been beat up over the last few weeks. Jordan Mulata, though, got him back this week dealing with a shoulder injury. Hurts calls for it. Shotgun snap, knee high, deep drop. Slides to his left. Has a receiver wide open. It was A.J. Brown, and he just overthrew his open target. And that was one of the knocks coming into this season with Hurts, Danny, with pressure, deep balls still challenged. And he shows you there with an incompletion. And the Dallas defense gets the hold and forcing the punt. Yeah, missed that throw a little bit. Just, but, he, but it was a safe throw. It was high and outside where nobody could get to it. Interesting also to see that Micah Parsons coming mostly from the left side of the defense and uh, over, over Lane Johnson. Here's Sipos in to punt it away, end over end. Cavante Turpin drifting to his right, makes the catch at the 12, at the 20. Spins away from one defender, tripped up as he gets to on the 23, maybe the 24-yard line. 43 yards on a punt, 11 on the return. Time out of the field, you're listening to the NFL on Compass Media Networks. Did you know that most people wait six or seven years before they buy a new TV? That's a lot of time in front of one TV. So why not get one of the best sets for the next seven years? Like one of the top-rated Samsung, LG, or Sony models. Too expensive? What if you could get up to $1,000 trade-in for your old set? Who would do a stupid deal like this? Right now, at Video Only, you can get big bucks for your old set as a trade-in and a hot price on the new models. Don't be sorry. Check out Video Only. Ray Maliazzi here for eBay Motors. So you have to drive 300 miles to your cousin's wedding. Okay, so it's his fourth. But you know what they say, fourth time's the charm. <laughs> well, here's the problem. Your tires are as bald as I am. But lucky for you, eBay Motors has tires for just about every make and model. Plus wheels, lug nuts, jack stands, and more. 122 million parts. Do they have tissues? Oh, good, because I'm definitely a crier. Get the right parts at the right prices. eBay Motors. Let's ride. Diabetes, high blood pressure, anxiety meds, everyone's on them. If you're a 50-year-old male, maybe a bit porky, and you may even have type 2 diabetes, a million dollars of term insurance may only cost you about 200 bucks a month. Call Term Provider. Speak with Big Lou at 800-200-1966. Big Lou will find a term life policy for you even if you have type 2 diabetes or overweight or have high blood pressure. 
Term providers help thousands of people like you who think they can't afford term life insurance. To buy a million dollars of affordable term life for you, all you need to do is call Big Lou at 800-200-1966. Lou will make sure the scales are tipped in your favor. Call 800-200-1966. Big Lou will answer your call and work to fit you into a term life policy that you can afford. Remember, Big Lou's like you. He's on meds, too. Call 800-200-1966. Alongside the quarterback, Danny White, of Kevin Ray, Jerry Recco is back in our Progressive Insurance studios. Looking for a career path with flexibility, great pay, and benefits? Go to Progressive.com slash careers and apply online today. Bundle today at Progressive.com. Well, each team and their defense forcing punts on the opening series for each club. We are scoreless back here at Lincoln Financial Field. 10.46 to go here in the first Cowboys second offensive series. That offensive crew up front, Tyler Schmidt, the starting left tackle. We got McGovern, Tyler Biotis, Shaq Martin, and Terrence Steele. Again, no Dalton Schultz tonight. Toss play going left. Pollard's got it, looking for a block. Cuts back up inside. Three yards and a pickup before the safety, C.J. Gardner, was able to get inside and bring him down. Farniak could come in as that up back we often see with that kind of jumbo formation. Yeah, this offensive line for the Cowboys, as, as young and inexperienced and beat up as they are, done a pretty darn good job. And Cooper Rush has done his part as well, getting rid of the ball very, very quickly. 163 yards rushing last week against the Rams in that victory. Empty set, shotgun snap, Rush rolling to his right, has time, sets, throws, completes to Pollard, and just beyond the line to gain. So first, first down of the night, a completion of Ante Maddox, the nickel corner out there on the coverage for Tony Pollard. That's his eighth reception of the season, picks up nine, and they'll move the chain. Yeah, this was an empty backfield, and Pollard was in the slot to the right, and he just runs a simple little out route, just sits down on the sideline. Rush was a little bit late finding him. If he'd gotten that ball to him a little bit quicker, no telling how far Pollard would have gone. I'll be honest with you, Danny. It looked like the right tackle steal moved early, and I think everybody kind of froze for just a split second. He fakes the toss, bootleg rolling right, completes it to his big tight end. There's a marker down, first down grab, and then another flag comes flying in. At the end of the play, Jake Ferguson on the pickup on the short pass. Rumble.